it's day two for the teams back here at the Alliant Energy Center's North Park in Madison, Wisconsin, the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Test three, heat one, the Olympic lift test. We'll break it all down for you as these teams tackle the best test of strength that they'll have here this week and weekend. Alongside Jeremy Austin, Jamie Hagia, Lauren Smith is our reporter down on the field. My name is Joel Godet. Two tests in the bag for the teams. They started at the North Park yesterday and then went out to the Dog Park yesterday afternoon for a little bit of a bike ride. A test won by CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue, the silver medalist team at the games each of the last two seasons. With that and a 10th place finish in the 2-2-2-2 redux, Oslo Navy Blue is now in second place overall. Invictus comes in second in this bike ride test. That puts the Sea of Green in first overall. Mayhem Independence took first here at North Park yesterday. They are now in seventh after a 17th on that bike ride. But a lot of very familiar names and a lot of very expected names sitting where people expected they may be after one day of competition. All right, so the Olympic total is where we are here to start day two. And Jeremy, it's an Olympic total, but you don't have three lifts. You don't. Yeah, normal lifting competition. You've got three lifts of each for your snatch and your clean and jerk here. Two only, a 20-second lifting window for each individual team member. Three-minute rest between lifts, and each team member will contribute one snatch and one clean and jerk score to the total team in the hopes of getting a very high total. Recipe for success is presented by Trifecta. And Jamie, with only two lifts, how does that change your approach? You have to open up. It's money in the bank. You have to start with a high percentage, but something you absolutely know you can hit so that you have a score on the board for your team. And then go for broke. We're here at the CrossFit Games. Ride the wave of the crowd and go for a one rep max. We do know that there are some people that will be attempting one rep maxes. We know that there will be people attempting some records as we go through. CrossFit Marvel in lane nine will be lifting all by their lonesome in the first window. Lane 10 will be empty here in this first heat. Training think tank legacy team here at the games. Rhino is making their first appearance here at the CrossFit Games. The Rhino Dogs from Vegas, big numbers, Jamie. They won test five with a heavy barbell at semifinals, so we expect big numbers from them, but all eyes will be on Christine Middleton, one of the strongest women in this field, who set the live competition, CrossFit competition record at a 265 pound clean and jerk. And then Tori and Mayhem, Royce Dunn, big time numbers. Big numbers for Royce Dunn coming today, and we're expecting something of the lines of 275, 325, and we're gonna see something pretty large. So 250 to open for Carlos Albaladejo here, the owner of CrossFit Marvel out of South Korea, the first Korean team to compete at the games. And that is a good 250 snatch. Mi Jung Choi opening for their women and successful at 140. Two, one, lift. And Joel, mentioned at the top of the show, the 20 second lifting window. They haven't got much time, so that one attempt possibly to, if they've got enough time to reset, but they are under pressure to get that barbell overhead very quickly. This is going to fly by as a test. Three, Templo lifting two, on the left, one, fly high one. lifting on the right. We now go into Rhino and Rotherham. Rhino lifting on the left side of your screen. And that is a good first snatch for the Rhino Dogs and Brittany Morella. And 225 also successfully up for Raf Durant. Three, two, and Durant one, having to reset lift. for that first lift. Had plenty of time though, but still just the one attempt from the floor. And if the athletes can get the bar moving before the 20 second window is up, they will be able to complete the lift. 275 is going to be the starting number for Royce Dunn and CrossFit Torian. Two, one, lift. He opens snatching on the left side of your screen. Christy Bishop good at 165 for Torian. Beautiful, what a textbook snatch. And Laz Stallwood hits 155. We gotta get one up though for Invictus Sea of Green. Sean early in his CrossFit Games debut. Three, in the two, nick of time, one, good for Invictus. Now we're back into our second round through. So this is the first snatch for the second male and female pair on each team. Joel, we're seeing some of these athletes miss their first lift, but they know they do have 20 seconds. They just have to pick up that barbell before that time is up. 
lift. This is team test number three. It is presented today by Gowad. We are two minutes and nine seconds into this test, and we are flying here. Try Gowad with a 14-day free trial. Use the QR code on your screen or visit gowad.app. Second pair for Rhino CrossFit. Christine Middleton is snatching on the left side of your screen. Ethan Helbig lifting with her, and that's easy money for Middleton. A little bit light, do you think, Joel, coming out? At 185? Three, two, <laughs> one, lift. Relative to what she can lift, I mean, of course. 210 <laughs> would have won you semifinals across the, I mean, easily. 210 was the winning number in Europe. But 200, 205, she's Ten opening seconds. at 185. Brandon Swan's going to go for 205 for Torian. Very efficient screen. Very efficient Two, lifter as well, Brandon one, Swan, but lift. not expecting great numbers. He's not feeling 100%. And Marnie Sykes misses. Does have the time to reset here. Kelsey Schulte is good for Invictus C of Green. And Sykes does connect the best New Zealander crossfitter at 165. And with these missed lifts, you know, you are coming out here at your first test of the day. You just came off of two tests yesterday. The jitters, the nerves are getting it out, so make sure you nail that second attempt. What's it like when you miss? Because then you've got 15 seconds, you've already e exhausted Three, some of the gas tank, and now you have to reset, and probably with one second left, get a good lift up. Your adrenaline is up, you have to be laser focused, you have to make sure that whatever went wrong, that you correct that. 305 is up for Templo. Mato Viscara. Three, two, one, lift. And considering Royce Dunn has only got 295 on the bar, that's a great lift. Or excuse me, Luis Otor for Templo. As we're in this now final 10 seconds in this window for Durand at 240. Three. And 160 is down for Morella, so she misses that second attempt at the snatch. And that's why your first lift is so important. If you don't get this second one, you at least have a score on the board for your team. Jamie did mention it, go for broke, this is it. <laughs> You've got to throw something up, you know it's going to be getting your team into a better position later on in the competition. Ooh, and Marion Johnson missed for nice, trying to hang on to it though on the men's side. 240 pounds is stood up. Oh yeah, Drag V Nielsen. Oh. He won the Open in Norway, he wanted us to make sure we said that. And Royce Dunn, did he just miss at 290? Both Christy Hollard and Royce Dunn missing their second lift for Torian. Are you surprised we're seeing so many misses on the second lift because you only have the one lift to get yourself primed? I was talking to Jamie earlier this morning about the grip fatigue the athletes went through yesterday with the ski erg. With the rope climbs, the leg fatigue from the cycle, the overhead squats yesterday, I think it's a contributing factor, definitely. Templo just had a miss at 190. 175 for CrossFit Fly High, female athlete. Three, two, one, lift. Oof. 175 on the barbell for Rotherham. 275, and Daniel Ty is successful for the UK team. Good lift for Rhinos, Christine Middleton at 200. Oh. Hey, now we're cooking. 15 pound lift. jump. I wonder how many women's 200 pound snatches we'll see and how many men's 300 pound snatches we'll see today. I mean, Ragnold same just put up 165. <laughs> That's more kind of par for the course right now. You're looking at a lot of 165s, 175s. Training Think Tank just missed it, 170 for Hannah Hardy. And she does hit just under the gun. And C of Green, 195, Kelsey Schulte missed forward. Marnie Sykes connects at 175, Brandon Swan at 225. Schulte, another attempt, Invictus sits down under it at 195. Which fatigue? <laughs> and you see how she was patient there in the bottom, right? She made sure she stabilized that to make sure she stood up that last, that overhead squat out of that bottom of the bo bottom position of the snatch. So we are now on to the clean and jerk. Three, two, one, 
left. Now, Joel, the benefit of being in the lanes closer to camera at the moment is you can turn around and you can see exactly what's happening with the athletes oh, behind you and what you need to hit. 395 for the Kolesnikov team out of CrossFit Fly High. I don't know where you go from there. <laughs> Unless that placard is not correct, but yay. The only because way is 305 up, just went up easy for Raph Duran. Brittany Morella just south of 200 for the Rhino Dogs. Three, two, one, lift. These 20 second windows fly. Oslo Nice. And Nilsson successful over 280. 191 was on the bar there for Marion Johnson. And Nielsen, power clean and jerk that. So he's maybe strategizing, saving a little bit of legs. Maybe his legs are a little under fatigue, or he's better at power cleans than a full squat clean. A couple of squat cleans for Torian, almost in sync. Christy Bishop, good. Royce Dunn, good at 325. Surprise you. No. There's more in the tank there for Royce. Three, two, one. Lift. Second pairing now for the clean and jerk. CrossFit Marvel, the only team lifting in this window. Their second male is Min Sun Kim, along with Huang Bit Yul. A couple of individual athletes at various times in their careers. Out of the Far East. Kolesnikov now with 325 and 205 on the bar. Templo at 325 and 215. And we just had a power jerk. <laughs> Did he, he push jerk that? Yeah. That's impressive. I was looking for a split and it didn't happen. And Ethan Helbig just missed forward on the front squat trying to get underneath the clean. Christine Middleton, 250. Uh-huh. All right, so she hits 250. What's a good jump for Christine Middleton? She told us her eyes are on 270. I think she's going to go for a 265 the next time around. 15 pounds is, is Tie good. that record? Yes. Well, Jamie, if you think about a 15-pound snatch, uh, jump in the snatch, 20 is not too bad in clean and jerk. Absolutely. In a, in a clean and jerk, you can make bigger jumps. A snatch, you're going to have a smaller margin to play with Three, when the weights go up. Two, one, lift. lift. Brandon Swan at 275, 205 for Sykes. Kelsey Schulte just threw around 215 like it was her homework. And 317 is good for Lalo Torres for Invictus on the right side of your screen. Lalo making his first appearance at the games. That entire Invictus team, a set of rookies at the team or elite level. It was a card error earlier for Kolesnikov, so we said 385. It was 315. Which makes more sense. Abeladejo missed it 340 Three, for Marvel. Two, and throw back to one, 2015, 16, yeah. and 17 in the Pacific Regional. Carlos was out there coming out of that Asia region, now back at the CrossFit Games as a 35 year old, so he's still got it. And bringing his team, his affiliate, in Korea and, and bringing a Korean team to the games, which has never happened before. Three, Growing the sport. Two, one, 365 lift. for Templo. Ooh. And that bar winning the fight. Brittany Morella is over 200 pounds. And with a very wide split jerk is underneath on the left side. What you'll see sometimes is that their clean might be better than their jerk. So some of these athletes might be better on their squat clean but have trouble with their jerk and vice versa. Trag V. Nilsson at an even 300 pounds for Oslo Nice on the left. Still power cleaning that. Oh, training think tank. Michael Needleman at 340. Three, two, Here's Royce one, Dunn, 350 left. on the left. This would be big for Christy Bishop at three. That, that can't be 320. 320, wow. <laughs> Christy, she's going for it. <laughs> long time under the bar. Back to Marvel. Got 305 on the bar here for Huang. 205 on the female platform. Three, two, one, 
lift. Fly high at 315. 345 for Templo. Got some real big numbers. Now Christine Middleton. Does it say 260 or 270? 270. 270. All right, Christine Middleton, left side of screen. This would be a new live CrossFit competition, female clean and jerk record. Middleton, under the clean. She holds the record at 265. She does not get under 270. 271. Eyes got a little big for Christine Middleton. One, one it was too many. nearly there. Now Nice at 300 pounds. The clean was easy. The jerk was even easier. Nice. And going back to our recipe for success, you go big or go home, go for broke. She did it. Sometimes it pays off and sometimes it doesn't. Morton Arneson. Underneath that 300 pound clean and jerk, Brandon Swan trying it as well. And it looks like they're gonna try to take some weight off for Marnie Sykes. She has 10 seconds to get back to this barbell. Marnie Sykes has gotta go. Bar just has to move and, ooh, they'll give it to her if she can get under. And she drops. That was a cyclone. <laughs> that 20 second lifting window just goes by so fast. The athletes haven't got a lot of time to think. Now, I think they got better in their lifting once they did start to warm up a little bit because they would have been out the back warming up. They have a little bit of break while they do corral, come onto the field, then start lifting again, getting comfortable, getting rid of the nerves as well. That's correct. It, it is a tough challenge. You have those 20 seconds, only two 20 second windows. So it's really get a score up on the board and then it's go for broke there. All right, so you're adding up the clean and the jerk for all of these athletes. So it's eight total scores. So Templo right now with 2,020 pounds is our unofficial leader. They're the only team that eclipsed 2,000 pounds. The next closest is Training Think Tank at 1990. And credit Michael Needleman for the job that he did with, I believe, the 340 clean and jerk. So 900 and nearly 20 kilos comparison to the 2020 pounds we see. Are we going to see any of these teams hit that 1,000 kilo mark, which is going to be something special, I think. Still officially tabulating those totals here as we change out the field. Getting set for our third, or excuse me, our second of four heats. Here are your results from that first grouping of nine teams, and there's that Templo 2020. We expected big numbers from Torian 1915. The Australian group gonna be happy there? Not at all. No, they won't be happy with that at all. I think they're expecting a lot heavier. Brandon Swan obviously not feeling great and not getting the loads that I was expecting him to get and only getting a 225 snatch, very low for him. And this is where the risk reward can help you or hurt you, right? Christine Middleton probably had 265 in the bag, went for 270. If she had hit the 265, that Rhino number is, what, 20 pounds heavier? So, I mean, actually in this case, they would have still been in third for the heat, but we'll see how that shakes out over time. What risk will you take versus what reward you get for playing it more conservative? Set for heat two of test three, the Olympic total out here at North Park, the Alliant Energy Center. Team competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games alongside Jeremy Austin and the holder of the biggest snatch in CrossFit <laughs> competition, Jamie Hagia. Lauren Smith is down on the field, our eyes and ears around the lifting platforms. My name is Joel Godet. CrossFit Invictus is your overall leader through two tests and one day of competition. We will see them coming up in a couple of heats, but first, let's take a look at our second heat at this Olympic total. Olympic lifting, one of the hierarchy of development for CrossFit and two attempts at a snatch and a clean and jerk for max total for your entire team. 20 seconds to lift in and three minute break between and everyone is going to contribute to the team score in 2020. Our score to beat, 
from heat number one. The recipe for success here, Jamie. Money in the bank? Absolutely. You have to make a deposit, so you have to open up with something that you absolutely know you can hit, get a score on the board for your team, and your second attempt, go for broke. Ride the wave of this crowd. It is amazing. The adrenaline will help you out, but absolutely use that. Help your team out. Go for a big number. There are 10 teams in this heat. We had nine in the first heat. 2,020 pounds is the number to beat CrossFit CLT. Kevin Steinhaus' team in lane one out of Charlotte, North Carolina. PSC, the lone Canadian team in this year's field, is in lane five. In lane seven is Coda CrossFit Redemption out of Norman, Oklahoma. Kevin shoots his squad, and Jamie, the ladies in particular, can put up big weight. They were one of, Randall DeRose was a collegiate catcher, so she has strong legs, bank on that. But Casey McAllister just became a dad last week, so hopefully he has some of that dad strength to help him out here. Taylor Sanders' tremendous deadlift strength, so she can pull that bar off the ground. Cape CrossFit, the team from Africa, they're in a pretty good position for what they expected. Big time, and let's hope some of that Southern Hemisphere strength comes to the fore here. And the Finkel sisters, Hopefully getting something really Brady, with Brady and Regan, two sisters on that team. Let's go down to Lauren Smith before we get underway. So I have found Jason Garrett, who is the chief medical officer for Arossi. Yeah, what most people don't realize is the best way to recover from a really high intensity workout where you're blowing up your quads, blowing up your whole body, is to lift really heavy. And the best lifts to do are the two Olympic lifts. So the clean and jerk and the snatch, it ramps up your immune system. As long as you're just doing a really heavy one time, it's gonna get them prepared for the 5K coming up next. How much of a benefit is it for CrossFit Iron On having an expert like Sierra right there in amongst the team with them? One, they have unlimited access to all of our services to keep them mobile, keep the shoulders, their hips healthy. And then Sierra herself is a recovery specialist, so she can actually help her team get mobile afterwards, show them the appropriate self myofascial release, all the ways to get better to recover faster. It's a huge Three, advantage for them. One, it was so great to find you here. Well, enjoy the rest. Thank you. Sierra Cole will lift in the next window. She does work full time for Erosti and is one of the stronger athletes we'll see. Actually, at a 235 pound power clean at semifinals, surprised herself. These are 20 second lifting windows Three, and they go fast. Two, one, lift. Well, if you think about the lifting window, you've only got really one opportunity to set yourself and take that deep breath, calm the nerves a little bit. You mentioned it earlier, Jamie, just about that adrenaline rush and get out here and the crowd's roaring at you and you want to lift something big, but you need to settle yourself and 20 seconds is not a lot of time to do it. And, and how about 180 pounds from Julie Simon to open for PSC just there? And that's the thing, your nerves, right? You're nervous, you have to all your adrenaline, you could, that can either help you or hurt you and hopefully help you in these big lifts. 145 up in the air for PFC. Now we've got plus 6-4 lifting and CrossFit CLT as well. And Kevin Steinhaus, the former tight end at Ball State, good at 225 for the team on the right. Kendall and Pieta from uh, plus 6-4. Partners off the field to play, but partners on the field as well. Now here is Sierra Cole at 155. Almost in sync for the team from Texas. We'll get Cape CrossFit next. And 155 pounds is on the bar for the sisters Finkel. We've got Brady and Regan on this team. Their other sister, Ashton, was on Cape's second team. Three, two, this test three one, is presented man. by Gowad, as PSC will now go for 180 pounds out of Erica Folo as well. 14-day free trial from Gowad. Visit gowad.app or scan the QR code on your screen. A lot of times with these missed lifts, you, can, you will recognize that right away from their first pull from the ground. The tempo, the timing, if they can keep it close to their body. But as soon as they drive that bar up, they have to drop, pull themselves underneath, get in a great position. Jimmy, you, 
you said drive the bar up, and I think that's critical for people at home when you talk about a snatch. You're lifting this with your legs. Absolutely. A lot of people think they're pulling it from the ground with their arms and their back, but it is absolutely a leg drive away from the ground with your legs from the floor. What's difficult about training that part of it? I feel like a lot of people don't understand that you'll see, notice some of the technique. A lot of these athletes are keeping their chest nice and upright, so their shoulders and their hips will rise up at the same time, which will keep it in a good position for the snatch. Back to Einhorn here. Second snatch attempt for these athletes. 290 is on the bar. And a good lift at 290 pounds for Zach Carroll Ramirez. PSC has 190 on the bar to come up in the next lifting window for Julie Simon. Three, two, one. Here comes Simon. She was elated to add to this team after an injury to Nicholas Anapolsky's wife, who was on this squad last year. Simon came in at the right time, and she stands up 190 in Madison. Patience, you'll hear a lot of your coaches say, be patient, stay over that bar. Use all that leg drive to get underneath that. Well, and it's not just patience to stay over the bar, Jamie, but patience to stay under it too, right? Don't stand it up too fast. Absolutely, you'll see some of these athletes stand up, their legs are a little shaky, it's not in a stable position. So if you really take the time at the bottom, take a second, focus, look straight ahead, you'll stand Three, that barbell up. Two, one, and that is three. not what happens for PFC. Plus 64, missing at 265, and at 180. CrossFit CLT, 245. And that misses out in front. We do have a good lift from plus 6-4. And Jamie, talk about lifting from the floor. It's not just lifting from the floor through the snatch movement. It's actually been able to stabilize that above your body weight in a good position that's going to be well balanced. And you've got to have that shoulder Three, mobility two, as well as the strength one, to pull it from the floor. Lift. And you'll notice in a snatch versus a clean injury, this is a wider grip on that barbell so that it is going to be making contact in your hip crease more than your uh, upper third of your thigh in the clean injury. We're going to miss at 285. And Van Tonder attempting 260. Finkel Three, misses at 165 two, for Kane. Lift. And 285 again missing for Coda. And then Kevin shoots. 241, PSC, Sean Clark stands that up. How about Erica Folo? Jamie, there's that patience in the squad. That's textbook right there. That's what coaches love to see. Both women 190 pounds for CrossFit PSC. PFC at 180 and 265, good respectively. AB good at 165. And 275 is behind for Mario. Jeremy, we're looking at a lot of 180s, 280s. If you have no idea what pounds are, what, what are we lifting in kilos here? But if you think about it, Clint Cole, great lift at 280. So we're looking at well, sort of that 125 to 135 uh, for the men, and something anywhere between 85 and 105 kilos for the ladies. But it's going to be so close, those missed lifts that the athletes are now starting to get, and the pressure's starting to mount because they need to get a better total on the board. These missed lifts, as you mentioned in heat number one, it's going to be crucial for those extra pounds climbing up the leaderboard. 325, good for CrossFit Einhorn on the men's side, 195 on the ladies' side that first time through. Here's 285 going up for Callum Diebel for Cape. Games veteran. Three, two, one, limit. 255 for Q21, 215 on the female side. Opening at 270 for Anna Polsky and 200 to start things off for Julie Simon. Three, two, one, lift. Got a 315 on the bar for PFC. It was a cruel trick to put them and PSC next to each other. 
and see LT. The alphabet heat. <laughs> While both of these dip lifts are very difficult, I feel like the snatch is a little more technical here. So, so with these clean and jerks, they are going to stop at their shoulders and then go overhead. It's a matter of being able to put the two together, standing up, those up strong with your legs, and then finishing that split jerk. 305 pounds is up overhead for Kendall Peterson at a plus 6-4. And on that note, Jamie, how do you feel about opening with the snatch? versus the clean and jerk because of it being a more technical lift. I think that's the best way to go. You want to get that snatch. It, it is so technical and so crucial. Timing, tempo, the positioning all make a huge difference, literally, by millimeters. And of course, it is the lighter weight, so you continue to build up. That's correct. Two, one, 225 for Coda on the women's side. Now we've got a 310 lift, good for Coda. That redemption team, Casey McAllister, the new father, Kevin Schutz, who as an individual Three, two, just missed out one. on qualification. Back in 2016. And is his individual redemption the team's individual redemption after being DQ'd following semifinals a year ago? So Jamie, with the snatch movement, the final position you're getting to Obviously very similar to an overhead squat, one of the foundational movements of not just CrossFit, but the level one seminar. And when you're going through that overhead squat, one of the sort of benchmarks early on was 15 reps at body weight, which is very difficult to do. You obviously found that very easy to do with one of the heavy snatches in the female field of all time. But I'm a heavy girl as well. <laughs> That's a lot of pounds and a lot of weight for me. Oh, that was a great round for Maria Santaya. 315 pounds and 222 for Lara Sanchez. AB CrossFit needing to make some moves. They came in in 22nd overall. Back to the last time through here. We've got 345 on the bar for Einhorn. Oh, stick it! That was a good jerk. Getting it into position. And you mentioned it before, Jamie, with that patience. Can't rush it, got to wait just a little bit until it is in position before you stand it up, otherwise that thing is on coming the, down quick. On those jerks, you want to stay Ten nice seconds. and upright in a good position to drive that bar in a straight line over your head, push your se yourself underneath, lock out your arms, and trust your legs to stand that jerk up. Diebel and Regan Finkel, both good for Cape on the left side of your screen. Now you've got Simon going for 215 and Anna Polsky at 300 for the PSC squad on the right side of your screen. That is a gym with an individual male, individual female, and team all here at the games. Jack Farlow and, of course, Emma Lawson. And a community that's rallied around all six of those athletes in a huge way. Oh, Yvonne Verdun! <laughs> Get that front foot down! 310 on the right side of your screen from AB. A good save for PFC, nearly off the platform, walking the tightrope, using every inch of that platform. Plus 6-4, Peterson. This is 325, three blues. Oh, Pieta, 225, what a lift. This is where that strategy comes into play. You make sure you get a number on the board in your first 20-second window, and now you have a little bit more room to play around with. Ten seconds. Einhorn right now at 1935. Templo is your overall leader from Heat 1 at 2020. See if Einhorn can add to that right here. 340 on the bar still. Oh, too uh, and it too many Antor. dips out of that one. Sometimes that squat clean will take the, all of the strength out of your legs, out of it, the jerk, you feel like you have nothing left. And look how long Van Tondel is under this bar here for Cape CrossFit. 330 pounds, and this is not getting any easier the longer he waits. So but he still <laughs> nails it! <laughs> there, you, there you go, Joel, have that. <laughs> but you got to think about the overhead squat fatigue from yesterday. They've done a lot of cycling for an hour yesterday as well. Their legs have got to be fatigued. 240 for the young Erica Folo at a PSC. That's a massive lift for the Canadian. This placard is wrong on the left side of your screen because this is not 535 pounds, but let's pretend for a moment. 
the win. Oh. <laughs> uh, 235 dropping for PFC. AB missing at 231. Three, two, one, left. Plus 6-4 going for a 325 lift. Clint Cole, easy clean. Clint Cole, James Veteran, like he's been here before at 325. And that is a wrap for our second heat of competition. Plus 64 wins that round at 1965 unofficially. Templo from Heat 1 still stands tall with 2,020 pounds. And that's where we say, we see, did you play the game correctly? Were you able to maximize lifting and getting your a high percentage close enough to your one-run max without, if you miss that second lift of actually getting a score up on the board, the highest score you can get on the board for your team? Well, it's walking that tightrope based upon what you know you can get, what you think you can get, and only two lifts instead of the normal three in Olympic lifting competition, the pressure's just on a whole lot more, and you probably got to jump up a little bit more than you think you're going to do on that first initial lift to not only nail something, but also put your team in a good position. Oh, and the, and the confidence. You have to all support one another. Einhorn, we expected to have a big round. And they did have a big round. And a number of blue plates that just keep getting loaded on these barbells the deeper we get into competition. 6-4, very impressive. As you mentioned, Joel, the Clint Cole's lifting earlier on. Getting under that bar and that press out was very, very easy. Three forty-five, looking like absolute nothing for that Just Texan team. Adding, a, adding another set of blue plates from snatch to clean and jerk. I mean, listen, Einhorn trains as a unit every day at 5 a.m. They had nothing to come out and lift heavy first thing in the morning. They're like two cups of coffee in at the normal workday. <laughs> Impressive from Pieter at 225. Kendall as well, nailing that last lift. All right, so 1975 is the official for plus 6-4. Clint Cole's obviously got the flag for plus 6-4. The other three New got, Zealanders. Well, well, I have something well, to say Ke about Kelly, that. Kelly Benfey. Oh, yes. She's, as, as she's yes. from Wisconsin. I say, yeah, Milwaukee <laughs> resident. She only traveled 45 minutes to get here, so it's OK. She can stay in her own bed. CLT 1935 <laughs> shouts to Patrick Crossman. Uh, AB with a good round as well, and they needed to um, coming in in 22nd place. Cape trying to make the cut. That was one of their big things. They have a good round here in test number three as well. We will cut down to 30 teams at the end of competition today. So people trying to make some moves as we get set for Heat 3. It is the Olympic total here at North Park. Test 3, Heat 3. The Alliant Energy Center here in Madison, Wisconsin, home to the Noble CrossFit Games for the final time here in 2023. One of the most exciting things in the sport of fitness putting big weights up on the board alongside someone who knows how to do that. Jamie Hagia and somebody who tries, Jeremy Austin. <laughs> Lauren Smith is down on the field. My name is Joel Gadet. Glad to have you along with us here. CrossFit Invictus is your overall leader. They called their shot after podium teaming last year. They came in third, wanted to return all four of their teammates and win here in 2023. They are up by three on CrossFit Oslo Navy Blue. The Olympic total is an Olympic-ish total, Jeremy. And a great test to start things off for day two of competition with one snatch, one clean and jerk required. All team members are going to be contributing to that overall team score, but a 20-second window is going to put a heap of pressure on them. And we've seen some heavy lifting already. I think we're going to see some even bigger lifts coming up in the next two heats. And Jamie, we say Olympic-ish total because at an Olympic lifting meet, you had three attempts. Here, you have to figure it out in two. With only two attempts, you need money in the bank. You need to open up with a high percentage, but a number that you absolutely know you can hit to add to your team's total. After that, it's time to go for broke. You're here at the CrossFit Games. Look at this crowd. Use that adrenaline. Go for that one or max, and hopefully it rewards you in the end. Nine teams competing in this heat. CrossFit Milford, a team that has finished second at the CrossFit Games back in 2015. They are in lane nine. Invictus Unconquerable 
One of the three Invictus teams in this field is in lane six. CrossFit Francos was a big favorite after finishing near the top of the leaderboard at the North American West semifinal. Let's head on down and introduce you to the fourth member of our crew, Lauren Smith. If we're talking about ones to watch in this field, you've got to keep an eye on Mia Hesketh in CrossFit Walleye. I was with them on Tuesday in their final weightlifting session before the games, and Mia Hesketh was talking about that balance between keeping your body primed but not overdoing it. She has a total of 484 pounds back through history and a familiarity with the pounds conversion from her time in Dubai. That helps when you're European, I can tell you that. Lauren, thank you. I, I mean, I can attest going back to the European semifinal, Jeremy. There were people in Berlin that had no idea what they were lifting because they don't work in pounds. Same thing we've got at the uh, Torian Pro in the Oceania region. We come down, we've got to lift with pounds down there, and athletes have got no idea what's going on. They've just got colors of plates to go by. And sometimes you, you kind of walk into a PR <laughs> because of that. Exactly, and sometimes you go way under as well. Something I do regularly. <laughs> CrossFit Milford will lift alone here with Platform 10 empty. This is a return team from last year at the games, but only Tony Ficini is back from that squad, and he opens up with a clean snatch. Is that 275 to start? <laughs> okay. Welcome. How hard is that? Because he's been corralled for 10, 15 minutes since he warmed up. Maybe even longer at the back, and you've got to come out and be able to do something without actually touching the barbell before you get into competition. 15, 20 minutes ago. Jacob Schmidt, 225 is good. 175 is good for Kelly Stone, the newest member of CrossFit Omnia. An individual competitor, last chance qualifier, Three, competitor last two, year. One lift. Jamie, you think about that corral situation, you've been in it, you know exactly what that is like. How do you go from warming up to cooling down to getting out there and performing at your peak? when you've just been sitting idle for a little bit. You definitely want to, in the warm-up area, hit a higher percentage, something closer to what you think you're going to hit out there, or get close to that, just to see how your body is one, feeling. Then you're corralled for a little bit, but then you really use the adrenaline and the focus from this crowd. It really helps you out. Oh, big open by the Lady Misfit, Alexis Johnson. 185 to start things off. CrossFit Franco's. Shaylin Lori. Oh, it's Jimmy Lauren, excuse me. Two, Still one, huge. Huge lift. We'll see what Johnson puts on the platform next. We've got a 185 for CrossFit Kilo as well. And Franson missed behind her. Good at 240 for Alex Smith out of CrossFit Krypton and 185. And back to Milford with Jay Adams. And 225, he misses in front, 175. And when you miss in front, you need to make an adjustment. So you see how he's going to take that little bit of time to throw it a little bit Three, more behind him. Two, and it ends up right in that right one, spot where he can stand up nicely. Let's hope not it's too far back. <laughs> Sometimes you can't overcorrect and throw That's it too right. far back. So it's got to be precise. Absolutely. But with these heavier weights, you think you're going to throw it behind you, it actually will sit hopefully in that right correct spot. 175. Good for Mary Kay Drysilker for Omnia. Three, two, one, lift. Portee with a 275 and a 155 on the bar. What are the calculations you guys make as a team in understanding what I can lift, what you can lift, and how the math all can add together with where you take your shots and where you play conservative? As a team, you only can lift as much. Everyone is limited to their own best, right? You can only lift as much as you can. So we need everybody to hit as close to their one rep max as possible. But it's not like, you know, your strength. It, it comes. It takes a long time to build that. So definitely sticking to your own game plan for each one of these teams. There was Johnson hitting 165. 190 for Walleye. That was good. We've got Ben Smith on the right side of your screen. 2015 fittest man on earth. 255. Oh, oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> it's not even a challenge. <laughs> but if you go back to your basic sort of movement, you grab a broomstick at home, put that over your head and try and squat with it if you haven't tried this movement before. It is very difficult. Oh, absolutely. This overhead positioning, mobility, your shoulders, everything to be able to hold this and stabilize a weight overhead. How about 290 from Tony Ficini just there? That's everyone's now sweeping their floors and picking up the broom and overhead <laughs> squatting it. Give this a try at home. One Everyone can do this. Lift. Even a mop. 
Omni is going for 185 from Kelly Stone, 240 from Jacob Schmidt. We got a 160 and a 270 for Preston Da. And Victor Langsford with 10 seconds will approach the bar. Three, two, and he one, missed a 270. Lift. And those are the calculated risks you have to take. Now that reverts back to that first safe score. And Jesse Smith bringing the flare. How about the neon blue knee sleeves, the neon orange hair, and a good lift at 195. Not missing out the show. Three, two, one ninety-five on the bar for CrossFit Walleye. And Antonia Falt Kolinsky is successful. That is a strong pair of women. We talked about that patience in the bottom of her overhead squat, in the bottom of the snatch before you stand that up. Ooh. Missed behind there. 175 is good for Deirdre Franzen. Maybe the under the radar strongest woman in the field from CrossFit Kilo 2 at 195 that just was. And we're seeing now in the second round, this is what we talked about in the recipe for success. This is where you go for broke, and this is why we're seeing some missed lifts because these athletes are putting up bigger numbers, taking risks, going for it, trying to add to their team total. Design for athletes trusted by the best. Start today at GoWad with your mobility journey, a 14 day free trial. Scan that QR code or visit GoWad.app. Taking the weather into consideration, but if you are watching along at home, that wind is causing a little bit of havoc with those flip cards. So the numbers that you will see on the screen probably not reflecting what is actually being lifted at present. Judges are doing a great job trying to keep that under control. One seventy-five for Rethwell for Invictus. Two forty-five, also good. We've got two oh five on the bar here for Mia Hesketh, and this is twenty-five pounds under what she's capable of, and it darn looks like it. Boy, put some weight on the bar, Mia Hesketh. CrossFit Walleye is putting up big numbers. And that's where the risk to reward. Could she gone heavier? Absolutely. With that lift, it looks so clean, so easy. But did she want to risk that if she did miss that lift? But what's her mindset there? You go into that knowing you can lift so much heavier, but it, you've got to like, walk that line. Right. So she's going to walk off the field and be like, darn it, I should have gone for 210 <laughs> or 215 or even 225. 280 for one Ben Smith. And I think he'll probably have the same feeling. You're going to feel real good with the 280, but boy, it looked like he was Ben Smith lifting. Risk to reward. But, but some days you come out, and that barbell feels really light. Some days it feels really heavy. So you just got to work out what actually is happening on the field when you get out there. It's how your body's feeling. It's how your technique. If you have technique, it feels amazing, light as a feather, right position. Halfway through this window, first time through on the clean and jerks. Jesse Smith will open at 210, 275, and Eric Carmody just pulls and didn't like it. So Jesse Smith power cleaned that. The difference of that is she was able to pull that bar high enough where she didn't have to drop underneath and pull herself under into a full squat. Saves your legs. Oh, you need to be very strong. That's interesting. Carmody pulled and didn't like it again for Invictus on the left side of your screen. So he puts up a zero. And I don't know what that does for his next round through. I spoke to Eric in registration the other day and he said his lower back was causing him a few issues. So maybe just pulling from the floor and not feeling good enough for it. And you definitely, your first pull from the ground and all the way throughout your lift, you are using your back muscles throughout that lift. We saw Sam Stewart from Walleye good at 320. CrossFit Krypton gets a 230 push jerk from Aaron O'Donnell and a 305 from Alex Smith. That's the beauty of CrossFit. Yesterday we saw Alex Smith with those legless rope climbs. But the beauty of CrossFit, you need to be well-rounded in CrossFit and gymnastics. So here he is with the heavy barbell today. Gymnastics yesterday, we'll be seeing a lot of that from all these athletes. Jay Adams, successful at 295 on his clean and jerks. 
Making his first trip to the games in what he says is his last year after a long journey to make it. <laughs> Who says that though? There's always one more. <laughs> Dry Silker, 225 is successful on the left of screen for Omnia. Prestanda going for 235 on the women's side. Three, two, one. Left of screen, unconquerable with Emily Rethwell. 275 going up real easy for the second team from Invictus. And as a former track athlete for her, you see that that explosiveness. A lot of what, what people don't know is these Olympic lifts are so great for your dynamic or power speed explosiveness. It was 275 from Tyler Soderbeck, 16th place for Unconquerable. Mayor 225, easy does it. And Alexis Johnson at 195. Brandon Luckett just hit 305. A couple of games veterans right there. Another guy who said he was retired at one point. <laughs> well, he's got two more. <laughs> and good for Ali Zerke. Colt Mertens, better half. Across the kilo on the left side of your screen. 365 is on the bar here for Tony Ficini. Patience under the bar there, Jamie. You've talked about it all day. Woo! I can't finish the jerk. It's a great clean. So that one just jumping out in front of him, probably about an inch and a half too much. He just couldn't pull it back in. Yeah. What you're looking at in that jerk, if their weight stays over their ankle, ankles or midfoot, you don't want it to roll to your toes. That's where your bar is going to go forward in front of you. Kelly Stone has 235 on the left side of your screen for Omnia. Oh, that's why they put her on the team. That was easy. And Schmidt misses behind on 295. Big number at 295 for Souderbeck. One of the newest members of the Invictus crew. Showed up during the open and Jesse Smith was like, who is this guy? You're with us. He made an impression. CrossFit Franco's 245 for Shaylin Laurie. And she missed out front. She's got 10 seconds here. 325 was good for Logan Collins, and Laurie's going to miss again. Walleye had 240 on the bar. Made it look easy at that, too. Oh, 240's on the bar for Kilo. Oh, Deirdre oh, Franzen goodness. is the most under the radar <laughs> strongest woman in this field. Alex Smith with oh, a power clean and jerk at 325. And Erin O'Donnell pulled on her attempt for Krypton, but did not attempt to clean. So the last time through now here for Jay Adams at 315. Uh-huh. You know, the only, I mean, the 20 seconds seems fast to us because everybody's lifting. It's only about two minutes in between each lift, if, if that, for all of these athletes. How quickly is this going in their eyes? I think the three minutes rest is plenty of time for you to refocus and really go for a bigger number. I, I feel like three minutes in CrossFit is a long time for us to rest. <laughs> I think exertion, though, you're exerting probably for about five or six seconds during the lift, so that three-minute recovery is probably going to be adequate. Nervous system comes into it as well, getting taxed. How much effort are you putting out? 340 good for poor T. Right of screen, you're going to see Mia Hesketh pop up here with 255. This would be the biggest number for a woman today. Chasing Christine Middleton. Oh, oh yeah! Wow. Yeah. Beautiful. Mia Hesketh at 255. She's gonna walk off kicking herself with a snatch <laughs> and the clean and jerk. <laughs> Walleye making some moves on the leaderboard here to start day two. The Swedish super team. They began in oh. 13th. Oh. Uh -oh. And Ben Smith. Just came up lame on the 3.30 attempt for CrossFit Krypton. He attempted a jerk, he brought it back down to his shoulders and tried to re-attempt that jerk again. I think something in his knee must have. Oh boy. I hate to see that. Ugh. 
2015 fittest man on earth. Ben has had injuries before in his career. He has fought through them. You never want to see that happen to any athlete. And the question for Krypton will be, what impacted Ben Smith and how he's able, or if he's able to recover. But it was all eyes on Walleye. Ben third Smith place team out of Europe. Getting a great start with that first snatch. And his position, his mobility, his experience coming to the fore. Milford, we knew they were going to go big as well. And coming out of that squat with less fatigue, less time under tension, but all eyes were going to be on Walleye. Exactly what not just their ladies can do, because we know how strong they are, but their entire team, what they can put up for a total. Milford for the clean and jerk. 235 and 315. Some good numbers. And position. Picture perfect and exactly what you want to be seeing. And Mia Hesketh going for that lift. And as we mentioned, Jamie, it was just enough of the tank, but you probably wanted a little bit more, but what a great result. 2,005 pounds, the unofficial number for CrossFit Walleye. It puts them in second place behind the South American team Templo from Heat 1. That's a number that's held up. We have one more heat to go. We're going to watch some silly things fly up into the air when we come on back. The Olympic total here at North Park to start day two of competitions for our teams. Our final 10 teams to go here in heat number four at the North Park inside Alliant Energy Center. Jamie Hagia, one of the best snatch performances in CrossFit Games history on the women's side. Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith, our eyes and ears down on the field. My name is Joel Godet. CrossFit Invictus, 176 points out of a possible 200 after day one. They lead Oslo Navy Blue, who was second at the games last year and the year before. East Nashville, the proven squad, is in third right now. A lot of hype for that squad prior to this competition. Our test is an Olympic total. And Jeremy, with that being said, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward, but a little bit shorter than a normal Olympic lifting total, where you get three chances for your snatch and clean and jerk. Only two here at competition at the CrossFit Games. And they have got a 20-second window per athlete and they will just rotate through their snatch and their clean and jerk and their scores for both will be added and give the team a total and the team total we're looking for is about 20 20 pounds right now let's go down and introduce you to the fourth member of our crew hey lauren smith Cheers, Joel. So this is the first time that we've seen an Olympic weightlifting total at the CrossFit Games. Now, it does bear many similarities from what we'd expect in weightlifting, only we are going to be able to see press outs. And as Jeremy already mentioned, there's only two attempts. I've been chatting to the athletes backstage. And if we were to take a vague subsection of those I've been speaking to, you're going to get your banker and then you're either going to go for broke, give absolutely everything and hope it sticks, or you're going to be more calculated because there's a lot of points up for grabs in the middle. You don't necessarily need to win. Lauren, thank you. And Jamie, as we take a look at our recipe for success, 
what Lauren said has played out in both directions. You've seen people go for broken miss, and you've seen people play it conservative and maybe kick themselves a bit. She said exactly it. Money in the bank. You need to make sure that you open up with a high percentage to give your team the best chance possible. But also, you're going to go for broken that second attempt. You're at the CrossFit Games. Use the adrenaline. Use this crowd. Go for that one rep max. We'll lift from the back to the front going in sets of two. So move fast, lift heavy, and Oslo Blackout will lift first. And Tron Time and Mayhem, Janas, no shortcuts, OBA East Nashville, Navy Blue, and Invictus. But East Nashville, the group from Proven, gonna throw up some silly weights here today. At least that's the expectation. Expectation, I think that's gonna be absolute reality as well. Time to do some moving for the Proven team, and I think today is going to be that day. Open up with move fast, lift heavy. They typically do, as their name implies. They are on the left side of your screen. Right side of your screen is Oslo Blackout. We think about Olympic lifting, you want to do both. You want to move fast and lift heavy at the same time. The speed under the bar, one of those essential components to getting an efficient lift. <laughs> Angelo DeChico successful at 255. Zoe Jones at 140 for Mayhem. Three, two. G-Shock is the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games and is giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar and over $400 in CrossFit swag. Make sure you visit gshock.com slash CrossFit. And East Nashville proven. Tim Paulson opens at 265. Andrea Nistler at 170. OBA, we also expect to see some big lifts from. Nick Hecht starting with a 245-pound snatch. Three, two, one, now we'll get Navy three, Blue on the left three, side four, of your screen. Angry to Hodenmir and Aben Dalringard, good at 235. Jorge, no issue with that hamstring either, bouncing straight out of the bottom of that squat. Jorge Fernandez's hamstring limiting him at semifinals. That's a big save at the bottom of the squad for Devin Kim. She missed behind her in that first attempt. She came back, hit it in the right correct spot, sat it right down in the bottom, stood that up. First snatch for the second pair here. Christian Harris hits 265 for move fast, lift heavy. We'll see Kyra Milligan opening at 170 for Mayhem Independence. As you would expect, big numbers and an easy snatch from Milligan. Sam Demeester, a clean 255. Independence with that first place. Then they took a 17th yesterday, so seventh overall for the Mayhem team. Think about the weight difference between all of these lifters. Teams at the front that are currently leading Oslo Navy Blue and Invictus, the opportunity to turn around and see exactly what the other teams are lifting. Just to add a few more pounds to that barbell each lift. Tola Marakinio is about to open with 275, as we all do. <laughs> with our deadlifts. Right side of your screen in the pink knee sleeves. And uh -huh, yeah. Joey Tortora at 245, good for OBA on the left. Does that impact what you do, Jeremy? If you can turn around and see what everybody else is lifting, or do you have a plan and stick to it? Oh, big time. We saw it at the Torian Pro last year with uh, Kara Saunders and Tia Claire Toomey. And Tia saw what Kara lifted and just added a few more pounds to the barbell just to make sure she got ahead and made sure she got the, the win in that test at the Torian Pro. 175 for Richter for Oslo, 160 for Weiss. That first round through, you saw a lot of these athletes make their first attempt, and what that does for your confidence going into that second round. You feel so secure, you're gonna go for that next one. Oh, simultaneous hits for Oslo Blackout. <laughs> Little dance back there for the, for the ladies. It was Ingrid Tondal with that 180 connection. Zoe Jones only going to jump up to 150. 270 is good for Angelo DeChico. And these athletes know their limits. They know what they're capable of. They know what jumps they need to make. And again, this is where we talk strategy a little bit as a team. If you know you have somebody who is not as great an Olympic lifter, 
maybe I push my boundaries if I know I am, right? If you do not, your your weakest person on your team needs to hit as close to their one rep max as possible. And then your big heavy hitters, they can take a risk and go for a little bit of higher number. All right, 285 on the bar here for Tim Paulson and the proven crew from East Nashville. Andrea Nistler just destroyed 180. And Paulson made 285 look easier. Heck's good at 265, but it's less impressive when Paulson just did that. <laughs> If you look at the position of the barbell for both Paulson and Maracanio, both great shoulder mobility and getting the barbell into position. Stabilization is so important in this lift. Big lift for Ingrid Hodenmere at 185. Top end strength is not the strength of Oslo Navy Blue. I don't want to say this is a damage control event for them, but this is one where they, they're not going to win. That's a huge number for Hodenmere. And speaking to a lot of these teams, they know that every placement matters, every rep counts, every second counts, so that making sure that every pound on this barbell does make a big difference. And we've got a 190 miss for Blackout. So back to Trondheim. And Milligan only makes a 10-pound jump. And good patience, Jamie, under the bar on the right side for Mayhem Independence. Great first pull. She was patient throughout that second drive. Pulled herself under, stabilized, stood that barbell up strong. Andre Houdé on the right side for no shortcuts, 275. Easy as pie. I mean, that's a good run for no shortcuts. Joey Tortora gets a little pat on the back from Nicholas Hecht. Tola going for 305 now. 270 for Tortora, Tola Maracchio only 305. Oh, he's gonna kick himself, that was easy. 305 pounds overhead for the strongest man out there. And 192 is successful for Taylor Williamson. Kelsey Keel just hit 205 for OBA. 185, big number for Richter. 170 for Brittany Weiss out of Invictus. And 260, Billadell hung on to the platform. And for this level, technique, technique, technique. What is going to get you that lift is a successful positioning, your timing, your tempo. Absolutely beautiful and textbook from all these athletes. We're now on to the clean and jerk. Each athlete will have two attempts here as we move through. Your total score is everybody's snatch and clean and jerk added together. There is nowhere to hide in this test. Well, you think about proficiency of movement, Jamie, you just mentioned that technique is everything. Olympic weightlifters, they go through this and they go to the Commonwealth Games, the Olympic Games, just to do this test. These athletes have got to be proficient at this and they're going to go ride a bike for an hour. Then they're going to do some gymnastics as well. So they're going to have a great balance right across each of the three components that make up CrossFit. That's the beauty of CrossFit. And then do it fast. <laughs> We've got a 300 opener and a successful lift from Janas. I don't want to say they've flown under the radar because they've been on the podium before, but Elliot Janine just throwing down the gauntlet there with that opener. Andrea Nistler, easy under the bar at 215 and easy under the jerk as well. Paulson's going to start at 335. Hecht at 315. That's successful. It's going to be 320 for Ringard. Odemir opens at 245. On the right side, Kim at 225. Jorge, oh, a push jerk at 315. Work to your strength, Joel. Should have strict pressed it. You know, it's funny. Invictus said they struggled at semifinals, and they had a tie for the most points. But Josh Alshama said if Jorge Fernandez's hamstring was healthy, they win running away. And he might have been right. And I believe it. First place team overall right now. Now going back to OBA, Hecht, I thought he had a lot more in the tank on that first lift as well. So I expect a bigger jump this time around. And like our recipes for success, you start with something that you know you can get on the board and get your team a score in there. And then from there, we've seen 20 pound jumps on here. So interesting to see what we see in the second round. So nice form lift, three blues for Demeester. Right side of your screen for Mayhem Independence. You've got to think about 
when you do get that lift and you feel good biting off too much more than you can chew hey and you're in the lead as well hey we're doing okay on the leaderboard do i just push it a little bit more or do you stay conservative strategy strategy comes into all of this lucas hughes at 315 for Genas. Now here's Taylor Williamson on the right side for East Nashville. He's going to open at 2.15. Tolomore Akinyo at 3.36 to start. Kelsey Keel starting with some big numbers. <laughs> oh, we've got successful lifts across the board. Tor Tor uh, Tortora makes it four for four in that round. Big hits, big numbers. And this is where your stronger athletes really get to shine. We love to see them with the heavy barbell in their hands. Keel hit 250. This is 245 from Richter. 320, good for Billadel. 195 from Invictus's Weiss. 245 <laughs> for Richter. Tell you what, Navy Blue has had one hell of a test to start their day. So not only can they run fast, they can lift very heavy as well. They can cycle okay as well. They won the bike event yesterday, the bike test yesterday to vault them back into silver medal contention or silver medal position. And Blackout doesn't get an attempt off on the men's side in that window. Zoe Jones at 210 for Mayhem. 245 up for Trondheim. And we talked about this before, a clean and jerk are two separate movements, so they're gonna have to clean it to their shoulders first, take a second if their feet are wide from that squat, walk their feet in, dip straight up and straight down, drive that bar up overhead, stand up strong. Julian Kromashvitz, right side from no shortcuts. Ooh. Oh, we just couldn't get under the bar. Well, Jamie, you make it sound so easy. <laughs> you just gotta do it with a heavy barbell, that's all. Just drive yourself under 325. It's easy. No big deal. 230 for Lundberg. 225 here for Nistler, 350 for Paulson. Paulson, yes. Heck, Terobie wants 335, oh, oh, oh. and he didn't have a chance to regroup. And that's what we saw from Ben Smith in that earlier heat. Instead of dropping it, bringing it down to your shoulders. Now 245 for Hodemir, 335 for Ringard. I mean, it's just easy across the board in these front platforms. Fernandez at 345 was easy. Ringard, been here before. And good lift from Devin Kim, too, at 240. When I competed, uh, my teammate Andrew Kong and I, we had a 100-pound rule, so he had to lift 100 more pounds than whatever. <laughs> Snatched or clean the dirt. I don't like that rule. <laughs> like total or per round? <laughs> Christian Harris with that big clean and jerk in that back. For Thurman Moe, gets underneath a 290 pound clean and jerk for Trump time on the left side. And Janas now left, no shortcuts right. Their Pat first pull from the ground will tell you a big difference if they will hit this lift or not. If they can pull that from the ground, keep that barbell close, catch in a good position in the bottom, that'll make a big difference. Power your performance with Momentus. Enter to win the ultimate prize pack at livemomentus.com. Maracanyo just hit 350. Taylor Williamson. 230, Keel at 265. Racking your left a lot out on that platform on both lifts. Brittany Weiss, right side for Victus, fighting to clean the 205. Alshama crushing 350. Weiss, a good lift. 250 as well. Leona Richter. Oh, Navy Blues having a great start to the day. Love that. When you hit a big lift, you know how good that feels. Her teammates are pumped for her. Gee, they're on a mission, aren't they? They're gunning for that top oh. spot. They know even though they're not in those white leader jerseys, they are chasing after that. You know, Tim Paulson was pretty vocal coming into this that he wanted a third lift because of the way it sets you up to take some more shots with two lifts. Give Warren shot. 
And absolutely, in that clean and jerk, you don't have enough time, if, especially if you're at a one rep max, that clean, squat clean is going to take everything out of you. So it, we saw that most of these athletes only had one attempt at that clean and jerk. We expected some big numbers to fly here in our fourth and final heat. It did not disappoint. Our number to beat was 2020 from Templo back in heat one. I think we had a bunch of teams, a bunch of teams, scream past that. Well, you've got to score to beat, haven't you? So you, no doubt all these teams into the final heat looking after that Paulson, that 285. To start things off for the snatch component, of test number three and that overhead mobility experience. If you think about the technique Jamie McGee are hampered on for the last hour or so, the better your technique, the easier things are going to get. And Paulson is just looking very comfortable. Victor's coming home. Strong leaders after one day of competition and the push jerk. Jorge, OBA thereabouts as well. And just, I was like Navy Blue, second on the leaderboard and wanting to come out with some big lifts to finish things off. And Jamie, the, you mentioned it so many times about the patience. Great lift to finish. 285 from Walleyes, the unofficial number one, but 2025 from Oslo Navy Blue, unofficially in second place. They're with Lauren. Guys, an unofficial second at the stage in this event, but at the end of yesterday, also a test win. Ivan, from where you were at semi-finals, which was a little bit broken on the first day, how proud are you of this team's performance at the CrossFit Games so far? Uh, super proud. Uh, we had a little uh, incident on the first uh, workout yesterday, so we had a little flashback from the semi-finals, but uh, we knew that we can dig ourselves out of a hole, so we did that on the second event with the bike. We loved the bikes and we were ready to push, and we did and perform exactly how we were supposed to. Now, at the start of the year, this team went away and you worked on your individual weaknesses. Lena, how much of that came down to your strength numbers today? Oh, uh, a lot. I think we still, or we've always been semi-strong, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a team that this time last year did well in the run event, won the bike event. Obviously, the 5K is coming up next, Ivan. What's the plan? We're ready. We're going to put Nico in the back, and he's going to run with two straight arms, pushing the girls, and I'm just trying to take the lead. So that's the plan. But we also know that we have some other Norwegian teams that are good runners, so I think there's going to be a lot of Norwegians in front, hopefully. We look forward to seeing it. Shout out to Sheboygan! Woo! I'm going to pretend like I know what that means. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. Is a town in the US. <laughs> yeah, Sheboygan is indeed a town in the US. That is, that is true. So. Shout out to Sheboygan from Oslo, Norway. That's a second place test performance from the team that was in second place overall. They should be sitting pretty after three tests here at the Noble CrossFit Games. Games.crossfit.com for full standing stats, leaderboards, and schedules. Individuals coming up next back here at North Park. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. GoWad, the mobility app designed for athletes. G-Shock, challenge your limits, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. For more information, visit GoArmy.com. And Trifecta. Eat like you train.
we're just gonna wrap up this warm up. But before we do that, let's welcome Christian to our class. Yeah. <laughs> you can do it. We talk a lot about community with CrossFit. I think for a lot of people, their first introduction to the community is inside their affiliate, where they build relationships with people, they sweat together, they suffer together, and they build, in many cases, lifelong friendships. The community exists uh, in events like this, um, and coming together, I think, is really important, where you get all of these different essential and important parts of the community. What makes CrossFit so special come together and uh, create this incredibly magical experience. So you walk in a, around an event like the semis, and obviously we see these incredible athletes on the floor um, showing us what's possible, um, uh, inspiring so many people to, to get involved with CrossFit to give it a chance. You see uh, the coaches who are there, who, you know, without whom uh, these life-changing results for these great athletes, but also members of the community wouldn't be possible. There's the affiliate owners, how many of our athletes, members of our community, their journey starts in their local affiliate with that owner and their coaches who are willing to invest the time and the energy uh, to help change people's lives. Uh, it's the volunteers, you know, men and women behind the scenes who are coming together to put on this extraordinarily complicated and incredible event um, that is so inspiring for so many people. Uh, and there's us at CrossFit at headquarters, um, hopefully playing a role in, in bringing all those amazing parts of the community together uh, in a celebration of CrossFit. And without all of those individual parts working in harmony, sometimes with a little tension, that's part of what makes it interesting, none of this happens. And so these events are such an amazing reminder of uh, a manifestation of the community that exists outside the affiliate that brings those 14,000 gyms that we have changing lives all around the world together in a moment of celebration.
It's not a test. It's a state of mind. Three tests are down. One day in the books. It's day number two here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and we kick off individual action inside the North Park. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland alongside Chase Ingram, and Mike Arsenault is down on the field. We were supposed to do this in its entirety last year. We're going to do it this year. And this is the guy who thought he would hammer that event. Roman Krennikov has been dominant so far. Fourth, first, fifth, in three unique tests of fitness yesterday. Standing atop the podium, going into an event or test that he dominated last year. Roman Krennikov comes in as the overall leader with 279 out of a possible 300 points. And he was nearly perfect on day number one. Jay Crouch sits in second place, the Prince of the Pacific. And Spencer Panchik is in third. But it is tight in spots three through eight. Test number four, the alpaca. And we're going to get to see it the way Boz intended. The event that never was, we wondered what could have been. But wondered no more, the alpaca is back again. We're doing it back with the legless rope climbs. No missed climbs. We saw this happen in semifinals. It's the same standard and a little higher. And push the clean and jerks. Time under tension. Get done with those kettlebells as fast as you can. Save that grip. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Mike Arsenault is delivered by Canada. Thank you very much, Sean. <laughs> Mother Nature didn't want to see the legless rope climbs last year, so the alpaca, of course, had to be modified. This year, there's not a cloud to be seen. Beautiful blue sky, the sun is out, so we're doing the alpaca redux, as Chase mentioned. The athletes have seen these legless rope climbs in semifinals. It is a little bit higher this year, and Roman said he, well, Roman won it last year, basically called the shot. We'll see adding the rope climbs if that makes a difference here in test number four. Thank you, Mike. 20 men will be out on the field. And in lane number 10 is your two-time defending champion, Justin Medeiros. While Roman Krennikov had a near-perfect day number one, Justin Medeiros had the two worst finishes of his career, rebounded in test number three, but currently sits in 23rd place. Sean, the true test of a champion lies not on whether he can triumph, but whether he can overcome obstacles. And that is the next three days of competition for Justin Medeiros. Sam Quant, meanwhile, sits in 35th place overall. He has three tests to get himself inside the top 30, because remember, we are cutting 10 athletes at the end of the day. And the alpaca is underway. We start with the sled push, and right now it is loaded with 544 pounds, six kettlebells weighing 70 pounds, about 31 kilograms, and the to total on that sled in kilos is 246. They'll ditch two kettlebells at each line. But Jason Hopper in the back mid left part of your screen is getting pinned by this sled. Now, fortunately, the sled gets lighter as you go down, but look at the struggle from one of the more powerful athletes in the field. Sean, as you said, every 42-foot section, they'll drop off two kettlebells of the six that they have, weighing 70 pounds apiece. So you're just knocking off 140 pounds each time through. It should get easier, but the fatigue level that starts this test is going to blow these athletes up before we even get to the most technical aspect, which is these seated legless climbs. The bottom of the screen, it Looks like Jack Farlow, now in the middle of your screen, who's your leader. Will Morad is right behind him in second place. 18 minute time cap here. The timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. And Jake Douglas also towards the front here. And Kaike Cervani is done with his sled push and he will move to the ropes. Now this was the thing last year, Sean, is that we had to get rid of the legless climbs. One other thing to note, this isn't the exact alpaca test that was programmed last year. The kettlebell clean and jerks went 20, 
15-10 for a total of 45. This year, it's even rounds across the board of 12, 12, and 12, which is nine less. So not only are we adding these seated legless climbs that should help the gymnastic skilled athletes, but we also removed nine heavy clean and jerks as well. There are 49 total scored repetitions in this test. At the six rep mark, that is when the athletes will return to their first set of kettlebells for those 12 clean and jerks. For the standard on these legless, you have a mark at the bottom. Both hands must be clearly below, show control, and come down to a seated position. Once the hands drop below, do what you want. And Justin Medeiros is one of the first men off along with Taike Cerveni. Sean, we were talking last night, is how this could be a great bounce back event for Medeiros. He got fifth last year in the Alpaca version that we had in 2022. But if you think back to semifinals last year, not having a clean run that we're used to for Justin, well, what did he do when we came out and we had these seated legless rope climbs in the test? He set the test record worldwide. So this is a good bounce back test for Justin Medeiros. Let's go down to Mike Arsenal with more on the two-time champ. I had a chance to speak to Justin's coach uh, before test number four here, and of course we saw the damage on his chest from falling off his bike in test number one. His chest feels much better this morning, and through those first two tests outside, he just didn't feel like himself. So his coach, uh, Adam Neifer, said they're a little bit, not necessarily concerned, but unsure of how Justin's body would react to being on the floor with the heat, the humidity, and that sunshine. Feel, felt much more comfortable in test three inside the Coliseum. Him. So we'll see how he fares here outside at the North Park before we head indoors for the rest of the day. Justin Medeiros and Sam Quant, two men who we expected to be much higher in the standings at this point, are your leaders right now. They had two different starts to the day. Quant got seventh to start test one for Medeiros is 29th, 37th, but 35th and 30 for Quant on the end of the day. Kaike Cervani, Justin Medeiros, Sam Quant, and now Will Morad, the four men moving their sleds now loaded with 270 pound, 31 kilo kettlebells. That sled weighs about 124 pounds, 56 kilos. So when you look at the added element that we have here, Sean, of the seated legless rope climbs coming back, that goes into play of how some athletes decide to push the sled. Do I hook my shoulders underneath to save my hands versus straight out in front? The kettlebell clean and jerks, smoking the grip, the pushing the sled, having your hands pressed against that is actually going to tax your grip more than people think. Just because you're pushing does not mean you're not smoking your grip. And so what we've seen is a lot of athletes are breaking up these clean and jerks more than last year because it's all gonna come down to how you navigate these rope climbs. Medeiros and Cervani now on their second set of two rope climbs. They see Justin Medeiros on the left. He has very short, choppy pulls, where Cervani on the right is longer. Cervani on the right will actually almost extend his top arm to pull him up. That is not as strong of a position to be in on a pulling movement. So the difference between the two is, is, is curious, where you may have the ability to do a long pull like that, but it's not a beneficial thing to do. Would I rather do, say, a chin-up from a 90-degree position or a full extended position? 90 degrees is the place you want to be. Justin is now through his second rope climb, and he is starting to separate himself from the men that were in the lead here. And there you see the struggle. Over pulling, too much biceps in the mix versus using the, the lats to help you get pull. And now his grip smoked and you miss a rope line. Jack Farlow and Sam Kwan are also done with their second round of rope climbs, as is Will Morat. So it's Medeiros in the lead right now in the first of these two heats. Again, Medeiros in 23rd place overall, had the two worst finishes of his career yesterday in ride, and then in the pig chipper. 
12 more clean and jerks. 70 pounds each on the kettlebells, and then they will load those back onto the sled and push it forward. If you've never tried kettlebells at home, maybe you've used dumbbells. It's definitely, it's a night and day difference between using a barbell. The kettlebells are, are unevenly weighted. They're, they're odd, they're called an odd object for a reason. And a big thing about here is getting comfortable with the weight distribution, getting comfortable with the awkwardness that is a kettlebell. Now when you add some weight to it, I'm just talking about regular kettlebells, it's a whole nother beast in general. Barlow Medeiros and Quant, your leaders now. Morad has fallen a couple of reps behind the leaders. Barlow and Quant on the left side. Medeiros is on the right, and now he is loading his kettlebells onto the sled, and he will push it forward to the next line and then return. Or two more rope climbs. And we said the nice part at the beginning of this test was you get to continually unload your sled as you work your way down the field. The worst part of this test, as the sled gets heavier, as you get further and further into the test itself. So usually when we say, you know, you do a 21-15-9 format, it's designed to keep the intensity and the speed up the whole way. This, quite the opposite. Jack Farlow is your leader. Justin Madera sits in second, and it's Will Moran and Sam Quant fighting for third right now. Madera is taking another break on this sled push. And that's a bit of a red flag for Madera is because we saw this happen yesterday on the bike. We saw this happen yesterday on the pig chipper out here on the field. And what it looks like is that he's just getting gassed. There's something not right with Justin Medeiros because he has never had an issue with this type of test. So the question remains is, what is going on with Justin? His family in the crowd here trying to urge him on as he is heading back to the rope for his final round of climbs. Jack Farlow is the leader and Farlow is making his first ascent here and that rep will count. Let's go down to Mike Garza with more on Jack Farlow. Thank you very much, Sean. So in test number one, Jack's legs cramped so severely that he could barely shuffle through his final transition on test number one. He's also training partners with Emma Lawson. So this, as you mentioned, his first year at the games, Emma has been an integral resource just helping Jack navigate all the challenges of being a rookie at the CrossFit Games. Currently 37th place. Of course, we have a cut coming. The top 30 will move on. Jack is big and strong, very good on the Olympic lifts. He wants to get himself inside the top 30 to be the show off later this weekend. Justin Medeiros on his first of his final two rope climbs. He will make it. Jack Farlow, meanwhile, is done. So Farlow is working his way back to the kettlebells and sled for his final 12 clean and jerks. When you think about clean and jerk, you think about Jack Farlow. This kid is unbelievably strong. Clean 400 pounds, has jerked 400 pounds. So two kettlebells of 70 each hand plays to his strengths. Farlow getting right to work. You can see Jason Hopper at the bottom of your screen. He just got done with the second round. The, the beginning of this test, Jason Hopper probably pushed five times in a row, and that sled maybe moved five inches. Here comes Medeiros. The good news for Justin is that he is still in second place in this heat, but we still have 20 more men to go after this. Justin has still some of the better legless climbs in this heat. That's where he's gaining a lot of his time. Round one of this test, handled the clean and jerks, took one break, pushed the sled 42 feet. On the second round, much different story. Still took two sets in the clean and jerks, rested more, and had to take two breaks on the last sled. This last sled push is going to be just, it's going to be harder than the previous one. Jack Farlow on the left side. This is his first individual appearance at the CrossFit Games, former team competitor. 
Finished the sixth of the teenager in the 16 to 17 year old division in 2019, and he is now done. Now all Farlow has to do is get the sled to touch the blue paint in the end zone, and he will be able to cross the finish line. If you're curious of how heavy this is, we saw the men flip a 510 pound pig yesterday. This is like taking that pig and trying to push it across the field flat on its belly, plus an extra 40 to 50 pounds. Fully loaded, that's 544 pounds, 246 kilos that he is trying to lug down that field. And Medeiros is taking a break and taking a knee as Jack Farlow is just about five feet from finishing this thing. And Haynes is on the kettlebells for the final time as Farlow is in. So Farlow's going to take the first heat, 1254.31 seconds. Well, Ant Haynes is pushing Justin Medeiros for second place right now. Nick Matthew is there as well, as is David Shirunke. And one final push for Justin Medeiros here. And there goes Justin. Shirunke is done. Well, David Shirunke is the biggest athlete in the field. He's 227 pounds. And he has started to get that sled moving as Medeiros takes a break. The trick here, Sean, is that you got to make sure you don't dip the nose of the sled down into the turf. The problem with Shirunke is that he is so tall, it's very difficult to get parallel with the ground and make sure that push is going directly forward and not down. Well, shirunke has got his hands on that thing to try to hold the back end down. It looks like he is going to make it across. So Justin Medeiros has now watched another man pass him in this heat as Shirunke gets in. Second place in the heat at 1404.63 seconds. And Medeiros still working on that final push as Ant Haynes is now done with his final 12 clean and jerks. And Nick Matthew is just about done as well. They're at the right side of your screen. There goes Medeiros. Again, he's just got to get it into the blue. And that will do it for Justin Medeiros. And he is in. 1431.17 seconds. Here goes Ant Haynes. And Jason Hopper's made up some ground as well. He's back to the kettlebells for the final time. Ant Haynes just about done, and he is there. And now Nick Matthew is working on his sled push. Haynes at 1502.37 seconds. You can text MACRO to 69456 to get a free beef for life plus 40% off trifecta meal delivery. Eat elite. Nick Matthew looks to be the next man to finish here. 18 minute time cap to two and a half minutes to go before we hit that. Matthew coming in in 26th place overall. His best finish came last night in the inverted medley when he took eighth. They got Sam Quant and Bronislaw Alenkowitz on their final sets of clean and jerks as Nick Matthew is across. Jason Hopper has loaded up his kettlebells and he will now start on his final sled push. Looks to be the next man across. I hope this gives people perspective of how hard this sled push is. <laughs> like I said to start, Jason Hopper is not a small man. Jason Hopper is not a weak man and this sled is just stopping him dead in his tracks. Now here comes Bronislaw Lenkowitz at the top of your screen in the blue shirt threatening to pass Hopper. 
Look at Bronislav's hips relative to Jason Hopper's zone. Bronislav's hips are below his shoulders as he's staying low. Hopper's hips are high, so that's what's driving the end of that slant down. Bronislav's isn't, it's staying nice and flat to the surface. That's the big difference between the two. And Alenguis gets across the finish line. 17, 12, 0.14 seconds for him as Jason Hopper is just inching closer to the finish. The crowd trying to get him there. And 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. As Sam Quant is starting his final push. Hopper will get in. Quant has 15 seconds. This one's going to be close. And now Quant will make it. And he will be the last man across. Quant taking eighth place in the heat with a time of 17.56.21 seconds. And again, Sam Quant came into this test on the wrong side of the cut line. 35th place overall. He's got to gain some ground here. And we have uh, 20 more athletes that are coming. And you talk about the difference between the two alpacas from last year to this year, Sean. It's half the time. The winning time of 12. 54 last year 623 so nearly exactly twice as hard as last year's alpaca justin came out early lead good sled push to start great on the legless rope climbs but then it started to take his it take its toll farlow makes a move on the second round and leans on his strength to put himself ahead of Justin going into the final push. And Jack Farlow, rookie here at the CrossFit Games individually, good start to day number two. Jack Farlow with a top time of 12.54.31 seconds. David Sharunke will take second in the heat. And Justin Medeiros, who needs to start scoring some points and move himself up the overall standings, comes in third at 14.31.17 seconds. Final heat coming up next. It's Friday at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games, and we are kicking things off with a test that we were supposed to see in its entirety last year. It's the Alpaca. Thanks for being with us, everybody, at the North Park here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Overall standings after three tests, it's Roman Krennikov has yet to finish outside the top five. 279 out of a possible 300 points. Jay Crouch sits in second place, followed by Spencer Panchik, but it is tight in spots three through 10. Test four, the way Boz intended. Fill it up pack. again, <laughs> fill it up again, Sean. We're running it back, Alpaca, sled push down, 126 feet, 42 foot sections, drop some kettlebells off. And then three rounds, two seated like this climbs, 12 kettlebell clean and jerks at 70 pounds each, and then a sled push all the way back to the finish. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. Ooh, we saw it early last heat. No missed rope climbs. There's no room for that here, and there's no rest for the grip. And make sure the clean and jerks are quick, crisp, and fast. You don't want to hang on to those longer than you need to. The 20 men will be out on the field in the second and final heat. They are all trying to chase down Jack Farlow's top time of 12.54.31 seconds. The leaders will be right in the middle of the field in lanes 9, 10, and 11. Jay Crouch is in second place, and if you had that picked, you are related to Jay Crouch. And for more on him, <laughs> here's Mike Arsenault. Well, Sean, you should have seen the megawatt smile on Jay's face when I reminded him that he was sleeping on the day one podium position. He's been doing CrossFit. His first open was at 14 years old back in 2013. Didn't have a great performance last year. What the difference was this year, he spent three weeks in Nashville to acclimate to the heat and humidity. That's what he's attributing to his great performance through one day of competition. And there is Jay Crouch. So far, nothing outside of the top 10 and two finishes of fourth or better, next to him, Roman Krennikov and then Spencer Panchik, your top three. Well, Jay Crouch, 28th last year in Alpaca. Spencer Panchik, 24th last year. Roman won the whole thing, so they've got their work cut out for him today. Now, two guys who are looking to make up some ground is 
well are right next to each other in lanes 13 and 14. We'll keep an eye on Brent Fakowski and Patrick Velder. We are underway. First sled push. Again, 544 pounds, 246 kilos that they are pushing right now. What I like in this sled push right at the start, it's like you're in a boxing ring and they ring the bell and you get punched in the face in the first second. And then you see how people react to that. We've seen people push the sled, not move. Game plan needs to change immediately. Well, Dallin Pepper and Roman Krennikov are the two men in front. And they will be the first to unload their first two 70-pound kettlebells, so they lighten the load a little bit, and we'll start on their next push. And Pepper is about a sled length ahead of Roman Krennikov right now. You see Pepper, he has his hands on the handles, jamming his arms up together in that base position, which can greatly fatigue the shoulders and grip going into the legless rope climbs, where Roman, on the back side, has his shoulders on and his hands drop to the side. So it's going to be less of an impact on his upper body going into the rope climbs for this first round. Jurgen Carl Gubinson has crept up now, and he is on the lead pace along with Krennikov and Pepper. BKG last year, 12th place in Alpaca. And there you have it. Right side of your screen is Pepper, hands high, really compressing that upper body position where Roman arms dropped. Right, so not a lot of blood getting pumped in the arms, not a lot of blood or fatigue going into the forearms. So we'll see how we've seen athletes change their technique as the test unfolds. Gubinson, Krennikov, and Pepper will be the first men done. And now James Sprague is there as well. Brent Fikowski finishing up. And Roman Krennikov, along with Dallin Pepper, heading to the rope. Jorvan Carl Gubinson taking a swig of water, and he's going to get started on his first two legless rope climbs. Here comes Brent Fakowski in the middle in the blue shorts. And we said that Roman won Alpaca last year, which is the beginning of his campaign to get that second place position. In fact, that was when Roman actually scored more points than anyone in the back half of the weekend. And when he was asked about how would you have done with the climbs, he would have been better. <laughs> now hands for this seated, feet must leave before the hips. Hands must start below the start line. At the top, both hands clearly over. And then control the descent until hands get below, and then you can drop. At the five rep mark, Krennikov will be done. And Krennikov is in the lead here. Brent Fakowski has now moved into second. You think about the technical aspect of these seated climbs, and you, then you talk about Brent Fakowski, and he's notorious for meticulously dissecting a legless rope climb or a hybrid rope climb. A couple years ago, we saw him do that leg wrap that no one did on the hybrids where it's legless until the leg. So Fikowski has been working on these. And honestly, if you're an athlete that have games aspirations and you have not been practicing this test in particular, then I think you need to go back to the drawing board in your games prep. 17 is the number that Roman Krennikov is looking to hit. And then he will load up his sled and push it forward to the next line. Brent Fikowski staying even with Roman Krennikov. Said last year Fikowski was 11. Pat Vellner actually took third. As you said in the previous heat, Jack Farlow's 12.54. The winning time last year was 6.23. That is how different this test is this year. Roman Krennikov will be the first man to start his sled push back down the field, now loaded with two 70-pound kettlebells, 31 kilos each. And that sled is 124 pounds, 56 kilos. And here comes Brent Fikowski now in second behind Roman Krennikov. And Fikowski using that same arm position that Krennikov is using. Usually when it comes to something technical, if I'm on the field, I, I just, I'll just peek over. <laughs> just look what Brent's I was like, doing. What's Brent doing over there? All right, maybe I'll try that. Here comes Pat Velder, who is now in a fight for third with Dallin Pepper, as Pepper passes him. So Velder's going to fall back to fourth, and Bjorn Carl Gubinson is pressuring him. Yeti, the official cooler and drinkware of the Noble 
CrossFit Games. Head to Yeti.com to learn more. Roman Krennikov is on his first of two rope climbs on the second of three sets that he has to complete on that implement. We talked about the recipes being no missed climbs. And sometimes it's hard to judge how your grip is going to respond rep to rep on the legless climbs. And it's it just, it's hard to do, but it's more beneficial to maybe, it's like if you're unsure, rest an extra 10 seconds more than you had planned to versus get three quarters of the way up the rope and realize you started too soon. Brent Fikowski getting set to start his second and final rope climb. It's that leg swing from Fikowski on the right, and that's just to gain some momentum. Well, the women are coming up next, and we will have the six-time fittest woman on earth in the booth with us. Tia Toomey will join us for the first heat of the women's alpaca coming up here in a little bit. Now, Roman Krennikov and Brent Fikowski neck and neck. Brent Fikowski in sixth place overall. He was 10th in ride, the opening test, and then finished third in the pig chipper, but in the inverted medley, he was tied for 23rd. So trying to get back on track here and move himself closer to a podium spot. And that's a hard, uh, that's a hard placing to judge because it was just so skill based that you know a, a little misstep here could be five to ten places. I think Fikowski actually missed at the very end of the last implement, lost about 30 to 40 seconds, and a couple people passed him. Well, the 32 rep mark is when Krenikov and Fikowski will be able to load up their sled with two more kettlebells and push it forward, and they'll go back to start round three. 47 total scored repetitions. Well, Vellner's making a move along with Pepper and Adler. And the one thing with Vellner, great at pulling, great gymnast, strong, but that overhead pressing fatigue has always been a little bit of an issue for him coming down to this. And now we don't have a, a lot of upper body pressing, but you do have a lot of upper body interference with the sled push, with the clean and jerks, especially with the legless climbs. So him managing that work and just keeping him out of the red is going to be a, something that Pat just needs to be very aware of. Fakowski, that was a smart move from him. As he dropped him to the ground, he put them on the sled. And now Brent Fakowski, because of that great transition, has taken the lead from Roman Krennikov. Good and sled flat. It's not bobbing up and down with each step. Nice and flat to the bottom. Well, Fikowski is done, Krennikov is done. And now back to the Zeus rig for two final rope climbs. And Pat Vellner is now loading his sled. He looks to stay in third place here in the heat. Time to beat again from Jack Farlow in heat number one. 12.54.31 seconds. Dallin Pepper is back on the sled. Now Pepper has overtaken Velder for third as Fikowski and Krenikov head back to the rope. And Dallin Pepper solidly in third place as Velder took a break. And now Jeff Adler has started his sled push. Velder stopping again. Velder is actually, I think that's a strategic break for Velder so they doesn't redline a little bit. He's been doing that. In, when it comes to sled pushes themselves is that maybe you feel when your legs really start to burn, I'm just going to take a break, let it flush out, and then move back into the press. Those, those look more like strategic breaks for Vellner than fatigue breaks. Krenikov and Fikowski both getting to work on their first of their final two road climbs at the same time. Fikowski done just ahead of Krenikov. Here comes Dallin Pepper back to the rope. Vellner working his way back, as is Jeff Adler. This last climb, so important between Fikowski and Krenikov. When to go? Are you going to go? Do I go with you? Reminds me of the old legless in uh, 2013 with Rich, Troyan, and Hendren. Maybe do a little fake out. Here goes Roman Krenikov. It's a gamble. 
It's a gamble. Krennikov got there. And Roman Krennikov back in the lead ahead of Brent Fikowski, who has yet to get on that crash pad. Krennikov taking a look over his shoulder to see where Fikowski is. And Roman's going to take his time getting back to his final 12 kettlebell clean and jerks. Bukowski still has not started his climb. So Roman Krennikov has a little more than two minutes to chase down Jack Farlow's top time. But more importantly for him, he is leading everybody who is immediately behind him in the overall standings and now looks to tighten his grip on that top spot on the leaderboard. Now Fikowski, meanwhile, is on his final rope climb, as is Pat Velder. So Velder has closed the gap with Fikowski a little bit here. And a no rep for Pat Velder in the oh, background. Man. He did not show control on the way down. That is going to be costly for Pat Velder. Fikowski doing his best Ace Ventura 2 impression. <laughs> Six rope climbs are too much. Krennikov is halfway through his final set, and he got right to work as soon as Brent picked up those kettlebells. Forty-seven total scored repetitions here, and then that final sled push. Krennikov is done. Oh. He's got a minute. And Roman Krennikov is halfway home. Takes a break. Dallin Pepper has now made it to the kettlebells for the final time, as has Bjorven Carl Gubinson. He'll be at the bottom of your screen. And Pat Vellner still has another rope climb to go, but Roman Krennikov, second win in three events, and Roman is reigning right now. Fifth career test win for Roman Krennikov and 100 more points as he is locking down the top spot in the overall standings. Now here comes Brent Fakowski. This is big for Brent. A lot of the athletes he's trying to leapfrog towards the podium are struggling in this test. Jake Crouch and, Sa and Spencer Panzik, pardon me, as Fikowski is in, are the men in second and third. And they're way towards the back here in this heat. Spencer might be at. But Pat Velder, meanwhile, has just run into just all kinds of problems here on this rope climb. That's his third attempt that he has failed. And Velder is in eight. Fikowski is sitting in six. Panzik has about half his last clean and jerks to go, so he's close. But Crouch is not close. Feibig is not close. Dallin Pepper is now in. Here comes Bjorven Carl Gubinson. So Pepper will take third in the heat, fourth in the test. There goes Bjorven Carl Gubinson. He is done. He's got to get across the finish line. Now Jeff Adler, meanwhile, is getting set to finish up as well. So Krennikov is your winner at 1234.59 seconds. Gubinson will take sixth in the test at 1423.84. But Adler is across, and now Chandler Smith getting set to finish. And for Adler, great finish for him last year. 
Adler struggled. He got 16th out of 30, by the way, that were taking this test at the time. So bottom half, so a top 10 finish for Adler is big. But Chandler Smith is now in. He'll take ninth place in the test, 1449.37 seconds. Watch out for Mertens, lane 20. Yella Hosta is in, Mertens is in, Velner now. In all kinds of trouble. He could get capped. Velner, eighth place overall, with 196 total points. Had back to back sixth place finishes after a 27th in test number one. As Spencer Panchik comes in, but Velner's going to be towards the back of the pack here in test four. Noah Olsen trying to get across. And there's Yonikowski, the man who won test number one for the third time in his career at the CrossFit Games. And now two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. <laughs> Noah Olsen trying to just will that sled across the finish line. And Pat Velner, meanwhile, the cheer that you just heard from the crowd, just made that final rope climb. Come on, Madison, Wisconsin, with about 90 seconds remaining. You have Noah Olsen. Here goes Noah Olsen. Olsen is in. Tenth straight appearance at the CrossFit Games for Noah Olsen. Closes out with a time of 1640.05 seconds. Jay Crouch and Lazar Jukic are the two men on the sled right now. Right. Sam Cornwaye is out there. As he starts to work his way to the finish line. And he go back to Fikowski. All these finishes are great for him. Cornwaye was in fifth. Spencer third, Jay second, Moritz Fabig fourth. Well, 30 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Well, Jukic gets across the finish line. Jay Crouch is looking like he might get time capped, and Pat Velder is going to get capped as well. I think Bailey Martin just sneaked in. Eight one hundredths of a second to spare. But Roman Krenikov, his second test win. 1234.59 seconds. Roman Krenikov, I'm not sure when Russian babies are born, they just switch the teddy bear with a kettlebell, but that might be the case based off his performance today in Alpaca. Just got a little push from Brent Fikowski there towards the end as they became neck and neck towards the final round. But once it came down to the final climb, Roman Krenikov separated himself as Fikowski got a little bit of a no rep on that last climb. And then just like last year, it was all Roman Krenikov. Roman Krenikov, another test win, another 100 points. He'll have 379 out of a possible 400. And just to put a bow on the Justin Madera story, not terrible for him. He winds up in seventh place in the test unofficially. The men are done, the women coming up next. Here are your results. Farlow and Fakowski, two Canadians behind Roman Krenikov. Dallin Pepper and David Chirunki rounded out the top five. Bjorgen Carl Gubinson in the place that we're used to seeing him in sixth. And again, Justin Medeiros, a top 10 finish for him. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault.
Roman, we had to modify the alpaca last year. We weren't able to do the rope climbs. You won it. You said if we'd add the rope climbs, you win this one. We have some props for this interview. Here's your first place trophy from last year. We added the rope climbs here in 2023. Which version did you prefer? No, in the last year, there was not so hot. There were no canates. Та больше мне нравится. Это очень сложно. И хочу подарить эту штуку с прошлого года для Андриана, чтобы он помнил обо мне. И вторую с этого года пусть тоже себе заберет и хранит у себя дома на всю жизнь, чтобы помнил меня Романа. He absolutely loved the last year version because it wasn't this hot. This version is definitely much harder. He wants to thank Adrian Bosman for this workout. He wants to give him present this uh, from last year. And he wants to tell you, Adrian, you can keep this year one as well. So you can remember me for the rest of your life. So thank you for creating this awesome workout for me. <laughs> Roman, congratulations. Two test wins thus far. Two more tests coming up today. We'll see you a little bit later. Отлично. Я не знаю, как мы будем делать следующий workout. Пока я ощущаю себя просто ноль. He has no idea how he's gonna do another event after this. Right now, he feels like zero. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I mean, he may feel like a zero, but he's number one right now. Roman Krennikov with another test win. Women coming up next, and we'll be joined by the six-time fittest woman on earth, Tia Toomey, in the booth. So stay with us, everybody, as the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games continue for Madison, Wisconsin.
We're in Wisconsin, but we have an alpaca state of mind. Test number four in the North Park kicks us off here on day number two of competition at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar. We got Nikki Brazer down on the field. We'll hear from her in a second. And we are joined in the booth by the six-time fittest woman on earth and her daughter, Tia Toomey. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah, I'm great. Thanks for having us. Well, thanks for being here. What's this experience like for you now being here as a, as a spectator? Oh, it's, it's really crazy, actually. You know, I've, I've got mixed emotions, I will admit. Um, obviously, it's absolutely worth having a year off and, and having holding my baby girl. Um, but, man, I just want to be out on that floor. We will talk more about that here in a second. But let's get you caught up on the overall standings after three tests. And it is Alexis Raftis, who is your overall leader, 270 out of a possible 300 points. Emily Rolfe sits in second place by 21 points over Ariel Lowen. And it is close between spots three through seven. So a lot still that needs to be decided over these next three days. Test four, Stacy, the way we were supposed to do it last year, it's the alpaca. It is the alpaca. Here we go, 126 foot uh, sled push there. Women have 443 pounds to load, then three rounds for time, two legless rope climbs. 12 of those kettlebell clean and jerks, and then a 42 foot sled push back and loading those kettlebells along the way. Recipe for success, what are you looking for here? Here's the deal, you wanna push the rope climbs, but you gotta always save a little reserve in the tank, and then you definitely wanna keep a steady, consistent pace on those clean and jerks. No, no reps, for sure. Let's bring in Nikki Brazier, the third member of our broadcast crew down on the field. Hey guys, part of what makes the CrossFit Games so unique and exciting is the specific implements we get to test here. Stacey mentioned this, the sled itself weighs about 124 pounds empty, but add these kettlebells into it. We're looking at 450 pounds for the women. They will have to push it down the field of play and complete all the elements of this test before pushing it back. As soon as the sled hits this blue marker on the ground, they'll be good to go to run to the finish. 20 women in this first of two heats. And two athletes we will be watching right in the middle of the field, Karin Freova and Emma Carey. Freova coming in in 23rd place overall, Emma Carey in 21st. The two of them looking to do some damage here in this test. For sure, Freova last year uh, placed third in this event. Now that didn't include the legless rope climbs due to that weather inclement there. But hey, we'll see how she handles this load and if she's been preparing for this test all year long. There is Emma Carey, who had a crash in the opening test ride that really set her back. I didn't get to see that because I was busy competing in yes. the Masters division. And congratulations are in order. Stacy finished second in the 35 to 39 year old division. So congratulations on that. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Uh, but I heard about it. And uh, man, I was so impressed to see her just flip the switch. Uh, coming back after that last place finish into a solid event test uh, four on the pig event. So Tia, people who may have watched the documentary got a really good behind the scenes look at you and it did seem like there was something different and I don't want to say that you, you had lost motivation or anything like that. Or I was pregnant. Or, but, and or, that, or, right, or, or anything like that, any distractions. Well, <laughs> but how is being here, and you mentioned this a little bit at the top, rekindled that fire for you to want to go out and compete? Uh, you know, I, I know I stood on top of the podium last year, but I definitely walked away very unsatisfied with my performance last year. And that fuel, like a couple months after the games, just definitely made me want to do another year. And, um, you know, it, it's wild because, you know, everything happens for a reason. And to, found, like, to have found out that I was pregnant, I'm, I definitely must have needed a little bit of a break because I tell you what, I've never had this much fire since I was a rookie. And, you know, I had definitely something to prove. So um, also to just watch these athletes out on the floor, you know, they put so much hard work all season into it. And for them to be able to showcase, it's just, I'm a little envious. I just want to go out there and, and, and you know, be, be with them, you know? Emma Carey and Ellie Turner are your leaders right now as they approach the final drop-off point. 18-minute time cap here, and timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch 
of the Noble CrossFit Games. How have you and Shane been managing things here you know, with everything you have going on? Yeah, there's so much going on, you know. Be we honest. Have, yeah, 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 I know, I know. Reality versus Instagram, you know, no. Nah. But uh, we have a proven booth here uh, in the Vin Vendor Village. So we've got a great team operating that, and that's definitely been helping us out. Shane is coaching Olivia um, and, you know, and a bunch of the other proven athletes. Um, and then for me, I'm doing a lot of appearances. And honestly, Willow has just been such an angel. And I know I'm her mom and I'm very biased, but she has literally been sleeping on me the whole time, so allowing me to do everything that I need to. There are a lot of parents out there that are very envious of that yeah. situation. I'm, so. yeah, I'm looking at her like, my kid never did that. Oh, Both man. of them. I know, I'm very, very lucky. She's it's adorable. a false, uh, if we have another one, I, I hear it's never going to be like this. So embrace it, essentially. The second is uh, trouble, that's for sure. <laughs> Emma Carey on the left side of your screen is through her first of two rope climbs. Ellie Turner on the right getting started on hers. Paige Semenza is also towards the front here as well. We'll keep an eye on her. First of two heats for the women. Yeah, it's really cool that we actually get to see the workout with right. what we wanted to do, obviously, last year. Um, and, and just see the difference, you know. I think I think it's going to be a little bit different for the females versus the males. Males is a little bit overall, you know. I don't think that there's going to be um, well, we've seen, you know, they they could both do, you know, the legless rope climbs and the um, the sled push and the kettlebells. But um, with the women, it's really going to come down to who can be efficient on the rope climbs and then also who can move the kettlebells nice and efficiently. Emma Carey is now done with her second and final rope climb here in round one. And now 12 kettlebell cleaning jerks. 53 pounds each. She handled the pig extremely well, I must say, yesterday. She's taking fourth in that test, and that, for a tiny girl, I mean, she's only weighing in at 140 pounds. It was impressive. I mean, that would have technically been more of a, okay, I say weakness, but it's, you know, maybe she didn't take a top 10 in that test or whatever, but she handled it with grace and with ease, and I was really impressed with that finish, and if that says anything about, you know, what's to come or maybe the strength that she, uh, you know, just improved in this last off offseason, um, speaks volumes about her fitness right now. Absolutely, you know, and I think she was coming off a back injury, so to be able to get back out on that floor, you know, come back from an injury, it's very impressive. I, I definitely think the younger generation that's coming through, they're, they're so strong, you know. When I look back at my age um, and, and where they are, my goodness, it's incredible what they're doing. They sure are, and, you know, I was I was the earlier of, uh, you know, started this in 2009, so I got to just kind of gain strength as the yep. sport kind of evolved. Um, and here they are, just come, like, straight out of the gates, boom, just so strong. It's yeah. just so impressive. Yeah, and it's, it is very impressive. As long as they've got a good team around them, making sure that it's healthy, progressing forward, you know, um, it came into our lives a little bit later on. And as they're, you know, starting off very, very young, um, it's going to be very important that they, like, gradually build and, and, you know, think of their health and the longevity of their career as an athlete in CrossFit. You nailed it. Emma Carey is now done and will push her sled forward to the next station. 24 kilos is what those kettlebells weigh. The sled is 124 pounds. It's about 56 kilos. As they advance this sled further on down the field, they're adding more load. What I noticed when I was watching the men do this test is you kind of need your legs to get yourself up that rope with a, with a kick. You know, you're using your hips, you're using that momentum, and you can see the leg fatigue settle in as they get advanced down the field. Their kicks aren't as strong. And I mean, you're talking about upper body pushes and presses with pulling with these kettlebells. You're blasted. And so we'll see. Emma Carey kind of kept her arms bent the entire time on that sled push. We'll see how she uses her legs um, more, if that's even a factor for her. And it's also interesting to see their footwear too, you know. Being on the turf, you don't want to obviously have anything that's going to be too slippery, especially with a heavy sled like this. So uh, they're doing really well. Paige Semenza is now done with her second sled push and she will join Emma Carey back on the rope. 
This is the first of two rope climbs for Emma Carey. I remember last year, it was uh, on the very last day, so obviously a little bit more fatigue had kicked in after doing the whole weekend, but um, the shoulders were on fire last year. And so in order to uh, you know do these rope climbs, especially with the new standard, very impressive what they're doing. Emma Carey just got hit with a no rep. She got to the top, but did not control her descent. We will see how she handles this. We've seen a lot of athletes run into trouble here on the rope climbs. When you talk about the grip fatigue and the shoulder fatigue, I mean the leg fatigue, when the more time you spend on that rope, the more time under tension. So you want those short, choppy little hand over hand pulls, keeping them as close to the front of the eyes and the forehead as possible. And I only saw that out of the, her first rope climb there with Emma. And then she reserved and went back to that long kip and that, again, it may work for someone. It does not work for me. I don't know about you, Tia, but it's just more time under tension. And I, I can see the fatigue in her legs building, and that's why she's not able to use her legs and that short little choppy step to get up that rope. Yeah, I know. So I had to wait until I was, um, I had Willow. The whole pregnancy, I'm watching the athletes do this new thing in the, on the rope. And um, I finally uh, got to try it out. And it, you really do have to really emphasize that hip, um, you know, starting low and then having to really use that hip drive in order to not fatigue too much in the pull. McCary trying to rest enough to get that first rope climb knocked out. And as we say that, Sean, here comes Ellie Turner. Done with her first leg list there. Taking a little seat, gonna rest it out. No rush, there's no rush. But she did already surpass Emma Carey. Yeah, it's really important to stay in your lane in, in a workout like this. You know, you can start out too hot and then just absolutely fall off. And you definitely don't want to be doing that, especially at the CrossFit Games. Um, but definitely staying in your lane, focusing on what you can control, focusing on, you know, your, your strengths and maybe where you need to take a little bit more time. Um, Ellie definitely knows where she needs to take that time just to rest and recover and, and get back into it. Text macro to 69456 to get free beef for life and 40% off trifecta meal delivery. Eat elite. Wow. For life. That's crazy. I'll take it. <laughs> the Paige Semenza, Fisa Goffey, and Alexia Williams are your three leaders right now. Paige getting right to work on those kettlebells. We'll see how she breaks this up here. She's also re-dipping underneath those kettlebells. I mean, they're called an odd object for a reason, folks. These things are not light. They're awkward. They're funky. One can go up at a different time than the other, so it takes consistency, it takes accuracy, it takes power, precision, and strength on top yep. of all of that. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. And it's funny because last year, and it's just because you're under the pump, you're competing, you want to go fast. And I remember I started out real hot. <laughs> so I'm talking from experience here. And I was doing push press to start off with. And man, that was a bad idea because they fried up so quickly. And uh, definitely getting that dip drive and getting underneath that weight to use the legs to actually get that weight up is so crucial. Let's bring in Nikki Brazer down on the field. Guys, it's interesting to see Paige Semenza up front because yesterday when I was having a chat with her, she let me know that her personal goal here has really shifted as the season carried on from being focused on a very specific finish, top 15, to now really letting go of that expectation and just trying to soak in every bit of competing. It had been a really tough year for her, but she said that it helped her grow in many ways through resilience and adversity. She said, I just kept showing up day after day, and this is the big week to show exactly what that statement means. Well, Semenza only has three reps to go, now two. Alexia Williams and Fisa Gaffey right behind her. Kelly Baker and Victoria Compass rounding out the top five. Yeah, Paige looking strong. Fee taking a quick shake. 
I've noticed the difference between their two uh, kettlebell clean and jerks. Fee is actually pausing at the top of the shoulders, just a true testament to what these kettlebells, just getting them to the shoulders can do to someone. But I'm not so sure I, I like that strategy. I think the more you put those on your shoulders, the more the shoulders are gonna fatigue a little bit. But I mean, with this odd object, you just kind of have to do whatever you do, make sure you don't get a no rep. So for her, it's just settling into knowing she can get underneath that, the kettlebells there. Yeah, having a little bit more control. Yeah. Well, Paige Semenza knows a lot about leg drive. She's a former hockey player, played at Ohio State University. For senior season, she was tied for the team lead in goals. She scored 13 and had seven multiple point games and a hat trick against North Dakota. What a stud. Push that with ease. I like that she let her arms relax a little bit. Meanwhile, Emma Carey, you guys, got through one legless rope climb, but she's still resting and waiting for that feeling of ready to go again, come back. I, I don't know if you one of you have ever been in this position, but this has got to be frustrating, knowing that there is nothing you can do but rest. I have been. <laughs> I'm sitting next to the six-time champ, so I doubt she has, but it is a horrible feeling. Uh, you just want to... you. You, you can't do anything about it. You literally just have to wait until you get that that feeling of, OK, I, I've got this again. I can go again and hope for the best. Yeah, there's definitely are times. Every, everyone goes through it, you know. You have to take the moment, and you have to really listen to the body. And not pay attention to what's happening around you. That's yeah. also the hardest part. Because you it? talked about that sense yep. of urgency. You see everyone just accumulating reps, and, and your body's just responding with, now's not the time. You still <laughs> just have to sit here and wait. Yep. And it can be a combination of things, you know? So this year, and you've heard the athletes talk about it, it is very hot out there. So, you know, maybe the heat this year compared to last year is definitely having a huge influence on some, um, especially if they're not staying hydrated, which is absolutely key throughout the summer and also here in Madison. Uh, and to optimize performance, right? I also think, you know, last year they descended in reps 20, 15, 10, and this year it's 12 across, so that you get that feeling of, oh, 12's not so bad, but 20, I definitely have to break it up. But you have to be strategic, and it's easy to kind of come out hot, like you said, and take the 12 <laughs> as unbroken, and maybe you should have just broken up a few, a few times starting off. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get to that six, seventh, eighth rep, and then you're like, oh, I still got four to go. <laughs> Paige Semenza is through her first of two row climbs here. As Emma Carey, who was our early leader, is trying to get herself through this second round. That's the short, choppy little step she needs, and that's what she started with. But now you can see she's going back to that really long kip. It's just more grip, more fatigue, more time on that rope. Oh, oh, oh and she clamps. Oh, that's and you're, so costly. It is costly. And you talk about the heat, Tia. Um, and none of these athletes are wearing gloves. They also don't have their grips around their hands. So you run the risk of actually a, a rope burn. Yep. Um, and, and that you, you definitely don't want. You got to use your hands for a really long weekend ahead. So Absolutely. unfortunate. I hope she's not getting a burn, but that is a risk you take falling off the rope like that. Especially when you don't. Especially when you don't know what the other events are coming up. If you have to hold on to the pull-up bar in the Coliseum, you know, you definitely want to make sure that your hands are good to go for the rest of the weekend. It is definitely really important. And, oh, man, it's just such a long rep. It is. Everyone resting right now at this portion of the test, and we have two minutes to go before we hit the time cap. And Paige Semenza is the leader. She only has one legless rope climb remaining, and then she'll head back for 12 final clean and jerks, and then the final sled push across the finish. You know, and we know Amanda Barnhart is a machine at sleds, and, you know, she's even having to break up the sled herself, and so that just goes to show how heavy it really is as it's, uh, you know, increasing the weight as they progress through. So 
what these athletes are doing out on this floor is unbelievable. You know, I've never actually sat up here and looked, you know, looked over the floor. It's beautiful, it is. isn't it? It's a good view, isn't My it? My goodness. Oh, here's a wave for the crowd. That is the best feeling ever when you finally make a rope climb after waiting for a really long time to get up the rope and the crowd is rooting behind you. That's Rebecca Vittison who is now in the lead. She's so tall. <laughs> There you go, look at it. Looking strong. She is. Nice big hip drive off the top of the shoulders there. Strategic break. And she is fighting for the lead with Abigail Doman. And now Alexia Williams is working her way to the kettlebells. We have 30, about 35 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. You hear that 30 seconds in the background and it's like just accumulate reps. It's 30 seconds, accumulate reps. You can do this. Yeah, one step at a time. Just keep progressing forward. Yep. Yeah, these girls are trying to dig deep. You can just tell they want to keep going, but physically they're just... Oh, let's go, go. Abigail Doman right now is your leader through 43 of the 47 total score repetitions. But no one is going to finish, but Domit is going to have the top score. Way to go, ladies. Way to go. A late charge from Domit and Vidison. Unofficially, Domit gets through nine reps on the clean and jerk. Tia, thanks so much for taking the time to do this. We really appreciate it. We know you're busy, and uh, it's always a pleasure having you up here and talking to you. Yeah. Best of luck moving forward and looking forward to seeing you next season. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. It was great. Final heat coming up next here in the North Park. Final heat for the women in the fourth test here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games as we kick off individual action on Friday at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. I'm Sean Woodland with the second fittest woman in the 35 to 39 year old division, Stacey Tovar, and Nikki Brazer is down on the competition field. Overall standings after three tests, Alexis Raptis is our overall leader. Emily Rolf sits in second, followed by Ariel Lowen, but it is extremely tight. Spots eight through three. So these three tests that the athletes will face today can certainly change what you're looking at right now. Test number four, it's not a test, Stacey. It's a state of mind. It's the alpaca. <laughs> Apparently so. It is the alpaca. For real this time, with the legless rope climbs, 126 foot sled push to start things off, 443 pounds on that thing, and three rounds for time. Two legless rope climbs, 12 kettlebell clean and jerks, and then a 40 foot, 42 foot sled push, unloading those kettlebells and adding weight as you go. Recipe for success here. You want to pace the rope climbs. You saw it with the men. You saw it with the last heat in the women. With the women there, you got to be strategic though, and then push those clean and jerks. Lane assignments here for the second and final heat. 20 women will be out on the field. Overall leaders will be right in the middle. Alexis Rapp is your overall leader. She'll be in lane number 10. And Ariel Lowen, who currently sits in third place overall, will be 
in lane number nine. And for more on her, let's go down to Nikki Brazier. I am not at all surprised to see Ariel in that third place spot because yesterday she told me that she is feeling so incredibly confident about this season. Not necessarily that she'll win, but that she's trained differently and more than ever before. Though you may be wondering about that bandage on her elbow. She did say an old injury flared up on Monday. We'll see how she fares with these rope climbs. And we mentioned Alexis Raptus, your overall leader, 270 out of a possible 300 points and has yet to finish outside the top five. Three top five finishes yesterday. This girl's on fire. A fifth in the ride, a third in the pig chipper, and a fifth in the inverted medley. I like seeing her in that white leader jersey, Sean. I think many people may be surprised that she is your overall leader after day one, but if you talk to the training think tank crew where she trains, they were not surprised by that at all. Here's the best part. She believes in it. She said it last night. She visualizes herself in that thing. I'm all for that. I like it. I like it. Well, Jamie Simmons is going to be the first woman to start unloading her kettlebells, completing that first section, and she is right back on the sled. Jamie, though, I don't know if they have to take it off in a certain order, but I would have recommended taking off the kettlebells at the front versus the back. Now you see her struggling. The weight is forward loaded, and she's struggling there. She's got to get a little lower, use more legs, use more push. Well, she's the only woman that took the back kettlebells off, and now a lot of people are starting to pass her, one of whom is Annie Thorstadter, who is right now the leader along with Laura Horvath. Emily Rolfe as well. Took the first ones from the front. Now Alexis, I'm kind of surprised. Um, there's a few girls with the bent arm, but I kind of like the straight arm strategy a little bit more. You see Annie in front there, Horvath next to her. Um, two different approaches with that sled. I would want the blood to just flow down rather than pull in that elbow bicep position. You're going to be using a lot of that unless they plan on hanging on the rope with those straight arms and using a longer kip swing to get up. If you're using those short choppy little steps, oh my goodness, that could be devastating and that could be just where all the muscle fatigue has already accumulated just from pushing a simple sled. You might not think about that, but it accumulates when you're using that same hand over hand, short, choppy little step position on a legless rope climb. Laura Horvath, Annie Thoris' daughter, and Katrin David's daughter will be the first three women to the rope. Horvath getting right to work. Annie Thoris' daughter pushed a little extra weight on her sled. You may have noticed she had a water bottle there. It is, it's muggy out there. I've been here every year, and for some reason, this just feels like the hottest year. I agree, Sean. It is warm. I was out there yesterday. At one point, they said in some areas of the turf, now we're talking the darker colored paint there in the finish line and, and the start lines, it reached 126 degrees. I will tell you, though, where the green field is, it's a little bit cooler. And I will also say, I didn't get much of a breeze the last few days when I was out there competing. There is a nice breeze, but it is muggy. It is humid. It is hot. Welcome to the Midwest. I'm from Nebraska. <laughs> it's the Midwest. Different type of heat around here. For more on the weather, let's go down to Nikki Brazier. I can confirm it is, in, in fact, incredibly hot and humid down here on the field of play. Uh, the nice thing is, though, to note that the alpacas are made of a sort of like powder coated metal, and so those implements are not getting super hot down here in the sun. Uh, tested that out before this, this test started, but you guys heard it with the men in the last test with Roman Krennikov saying that this year's test is incredibly hotter, even more hot than last year's, which definitely changes a little bit about how these athletes have to approach it. And that's, that's, that's probably why you're seeing that water out there, Sean. Not a bad idea. Well, Laura Horvath is now your leader, along with Emma Tall and Alex Gazan is moving back to the sled, and Jamie Simmons as well. Now Annie Thorstadter is done, and she's putting, a, putting her belt on before she attacks those two 53 pound, 24 kilo kettlebells. Emma Tall looks great. I like her strategy there. She was dipping underneath, solid swing, really using her hips to send the kettlebells back between her legs and then thrusting them forward onto her shoulders. Versus Alexis Gazan, she's taking a, a little bit of a break here, but you'll notice she goes straight down with the kettlebells. Um, it's just a little bit more pull. Maybe that's the way she likes to roll, but 
I would prefer a little bit more of a back swing to, to kind of use more momentum there, getting an overhead. Alex Kazan on the right side of your screen right now in third place. Captain David Sutter taking a break there on the and Left side of your screen, you got Laura Horvath and Annie Thoris out of Horvath. Needs to get to the 17 rep mark before she will be able to reload her kettlebells and start pushing the sled back. Now, Laura did win this test last year, Sean, but like we mentioned earlier, there was weather, a little bit rainy out, a little bit mist, so the ropes were a little bit too slick for them to actually be in the test. So. We'll see how she handles the legless rope climb. She handled the kettlebell clean and jerks really well. So stronger athlete, no surprise there. I would like to see how she does on these legless rope climbs. Myself. Horvath and Gazan onto the sled, and now it's Alex Gazan who is slightly ahead of Horvath. Gazan is on the left. Horvath and Emma Tall are on the right. Emma Tall is in the dark shorts. Alex is taking a little bit of a break, probably strategic. I'm going to I'm going to fill you in on a little secret. She is the best legless rope climber in both the men and the women individual age group. Yeti, the official cooler and drinkware of the Noble CrossFit Games head to yeti.com for more. Horvat and Gazan back to the ropes for round two along with Emma Tall. They are your top three. Now this is where Gazan just needs to stay in her lane. Horvath has a, a year or two up on her in the competitive realm. Gazan just needs to do her thing. If she's feeling like she can climb the legless rope climb, she needs to go and not worry about what Laura's doing. If she feels like she needs to rest, she needs to take time to rest. But this is right here, guys, this is her jam. She loves those legless rope climbs. Laura, on the other hand, has that rock climbing experience. So the grip, I don't think, for Laura is much of a factor at all. It's literally muscular endurance at this point for both of them. Both Kazan and Horvath are through their first of two rope climbs here in round number two. Kazan making her second straight appearance here at the CrossFit Games. Showed up as a rookie last year and finished 24th. Not a bad start to your rookie season. Women's division here, Ariel Lowen. Round two. The 20 rep mark is when they will go back to the kettlebells for 12 more clean and jerks. Kazan already making her way up. I think that might have been, Sean, maybe a 20 second rest. That's aggressive. That is aggressive. Laura, meanwhile, you see, still kind of shaking things out down there. And Alex Kazan won the North America West semifinal. And I got to give you props, Stacey. You called that early on when a lot of people told you, Matt, that might not be the best pick. You stuck with it, and she wound up winning. I did. I talked to her coach, Justin Kotler, and he kind of gave me this little, like, swagger of confidence. Like, you know, we've been working working on that. She's got the talent, she's got the strength, she's got everything she needs. We've just been working on what's happening between the ears. And to me, that really said something. If she's got everything she needs, and she's just been working on the mental part of the game, man, she's a force to be reckoned with, for sure. Emma Tall and Laura Horbath working their way back to the sled. Fighting for second place behind Alex Gazan. Gazan, 12 more clean and jerks to complete here. And then at the 32 rep mark, Gazan will push her sled forward again. Here comes Horvath, who comes into this test. Seventh place overall with 202 points, but she only trails Ariel Lowen for third by 23 points. And there's lots of time yet. It's Friday. We still have Saturday and Sunday left to go. A lot of tests yet to complete. Now you'll notice here, Alex Kazan going with a little bit of a push press, doing well with it. Um, Emma Tall, as soon as she gets going here, she does a little bit of a push jerk. Um, and I'm not sure the way that Laura is gonna approach this round here, we'll see here in a second, but a little bit of a jerk underneath. Emma clearly re-dipping those knees to get underneath those kettlebells. You wanna jerk a little bit, like Tia mentioned in the previous uh, heat there, that it does save a little bit on the shoulders. However, it does take a little bit more accuracy, precision, timing underneath some relatively odd objects. Two of them, heavy, 53 pounds each, 24 kilos part, a piece. Not light. Well, Emma Lawson has now 
moved into fourth place in this heat. She's out there in the dark top in those army green shorts with a belt on it. Now, Emma Lawson is only seven reps back at Alex Gazan here. As Gazan has loaded her kettlebells up, and she will be the first to this sled push. Now, here comes Alexis Raptus and Jamie Simmons, and Annie Thor's daughter as well. And this is the first time we've seen Alex relax the hands like that. Before, she was pushing it with those bent arms. And now she's kind of letting that blood pool back down to the fingertips through the whole arm, through the shoulders, just relaxing as she takes a strategic break here and gets ready to go again. Nobody in the first heat was able to complete this test inside the 18 minute time cap. Abigail Domic got the farthest. She got nine reps into her final set of 12 clean and jerks. But Gazan is gonna finish this sled push right as Emma Tall gets started on hers. Zan taking a leisurely stroll back to the rope. Lots of time on the clock yet, Sean. 18 minute time cap, we're a little over 10 and a half in. If she moves as fast as she did on, on that last set of legless rope climbs, she will have plenty of time to, to cross the finish line. Emma Tall has just closed out her sled push. Laura Horbath is looking to be the next woman to do that, and Emma Lawson it's starting to creep up on Laura Horvath there. And there is Lawson. He's about a sled length behind Laura Horvath. Horvath is done, and now Lawson is done. Well, Alex Gazan, two rope climbs left. There goes Alex making the move. Beautiful, using those legs. That's the kip I'm talking about. Short, choppy little steps. Fast hands down the rope. Believe it or not, you could blow up just on the descent down because you have to control your descent down. You can't just fall. Kazan going to the cooler. Just trying to cool herself off. Emma Tall, Emma Lawson, and Laura Horvath have yet to start the rope climbs. And meanwhile, Alexis Raptus and Annie Thorisauter now have finished their sled pushes. So Raptus, the overall leader. The leader will always be dressed in that white jersey with the red shorts. Rope climb. Now, Alex Kazan finished her last rope climb with the time on the clock, seeing approximately 11.45. Took a little bit longer to rest there, but looks great going up. So saw Tall get through her first road climb as well. And Kazan's starting to go to that kip. She'll make it now, has just, to control the descent. Just get down with the control, get beyond that black do it. line. Beautiful work. Alex Kazan with five minutes and change now to get across the finish line and become the first woman to finish this test inside the 18 minute time cap. And without about a 45 second rest there, a little water pour down her spine, quick shake of the hands, a little chalk up. She got through the hardest part. Not to say the rest of this isn't hard. That back sled with all that weight on there, 440 pounds. You talk about the pig yesterday in test number two. I mean, Chase said it earlier with the men. It's like flipping that thing onto the ground and then pushing and adding more weight on that thing. Not easy. These women are superheroes, you guys. I, I can't express enough how hard this is after just three other tests, really, before this. You are fatigued, it's hot. Gazan through 38 of the 47 total scored repetitions. She's got nine to go, or making that eight to go now on this final set. And then Mittal back there. Mittal is on the left side of your screen. Getting back to work on the kettlebells. Laura Horvath. 
finally making her way back. Tall has half of her set remaining now. She has six left. Gazan. Four more reps to go for Gazan. Now is just four reps away from finishing up this set. Here comes Laura Horvath. Five reps remaining for Tall. on the right side of that box on the left side of your screen. As Alice Gazan is now done and smartly puts those things right onto the sled. We see a lot of athletes just drop them and have to lug them over there. Brent Fikowski did that for the men. And now Kazan is onto the sled. And Emma Tall is just about done with her final set. Kazan immediately comes off the sled. She's not only sweaty, but she poured that water down her spine. I don't think she's completely dry. She did slip. You notice they're using their trap muscles. They're using their lat muscles. They're using their biceps and triceps to push that sled. Well, Emma Tall is on the right. Gazan is on the left. They are about dead even. And here's what you want to do, Sean. You want to stay low to the ground. You want to keep your hips parallel to the floor, and you want to just keep moving your feet. They do not want to go, trust me. Your calves are burning at this point. Your quads are blowing up. But you just got to keep them moving. Gazan finally starting to push again, so it's going to be Emma Tall who's going to get in, and Emma Tall will take the alpaca. She just kept her feet moving. She stayed low to the ground. Gazan is slipping. She lost a shoe. The shoes matter. I mean, Noble hooked them up with some cleats. I'm surprised to see them not more of them out here. But Gazan now with one shoe is going to try to, now she's going to ditch the other one. Laura Horvath is threatening to catch Gazan. Horvath is on the right. But Gazan now ditching the socks. And Laura Horvath is looking to wrap up a second place finish in this test. Head judge comes over to Gazan's lane and says, you've got to put your shoes back on, my dear. Holy smokes. Well, Horvath is in. That'll be a second place finish for her. Remember, she was only out of the top three by 23 points was Horvath. 1636.18 seconds and now a minute and change before we hit the time cap. Here comes the leader. Here comes Emma Lawson. Alexis has... What do you think? Maybe three more feet to get to the blue line. Just the front of the sled needs to touch the blue line, Sean. But, oh my goodness, she doesn't even have her second shoe on yet. Well, the two feet that matter are the ones that she's dealing with right now. She's got to get her shoes back on. And here come Emma Lawson and Alexis Raptus. Raptus is in that white jersey, the leader's jersey. And now Gazan. Her shoes are not on, Sean. They're literally, toes are in the shoes. Oh my. Goodness. She is going to save it. Now here comes Emma Lawson ahead of Alexis Raptus. So Lawson is done. That's big for her. That is big. And Alexis Raptus, who has yet to finish outside the top five, is going to finish fifth. Beautiful finish. Wow, Sean. She is going to have four top five finishes here after this test. That is so impressive. The Raptus looking like she's going to hang on to that leader's jersey. Emma Tall is going to take the test. Laura Horvath is going to move up the overall standings. Alice Gazan dealt with a shoe problem. She's still going to take third place. And how about Alexis Raptus? Started this as a teenager. Her first game's appearance was in the teen division. The very first year it started, 2015. Well, it's a wild second and final heat. Emma Tall is going to win her first test of her career. Her prior best finish was third place in event one in 2021. But Alex Gazan not only had to deal with all the equipment out there, but two shoes as well at the end. But a great race. Of at the finish of this test. Laura Horvath out early, but then she soon had some company. She did. She was out early. I like seeing that. But then Gazan came uh, came striking back, caught up on those legless rope climbs. Beautiful work, short, choppy little steps, using those frog leg kicks and swings to get her up that rope. 
handle the kettlebell clean and jerks with ease, even push pressing the entire way. This is where Tall made her ground. She was jerking underneath those kettlebell clean and jerks. I think that helped her in the end, saved her legs a little bit, saved her shoulders, grip a little bit, and gave her a solid finish. Well done. First career test win for Emma Tall. Laura Horvath looking to punch her way into the top five, if not higher, with that second place result. And Alex Gazan, despite losing both of her shoes, will take third and another top five finish for Alexis Raptus, who looks to continue to be your leader heading into test five. And it's Emma Lawson in fourth. Let's head down to Nikki Brazer with Emma Tall. Emma, when you saw Alex just out of your peripheral vision and she was just a bit ahead of you, what did you need to do to pull ahead and make it to the finish first? Well, I know that, la that last sled was going to be like win it or lose it. So when I saw that I had opportunity, I just went for it. We have all experienced what it's like to have a long grinder of a test like this. What do you have to do mentally to prepare for every implement that is to come? In a workout like this, when it's very easy to blow up, I think you really have to take a step back. And when you are close enough to the end of the workout, that is when you put the pedal down. Always save some in the tank. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. First career test win for Emma Tall. And we're going to put the overall leaderboard in a blender and see what comes out after that test. Four tests are down. Two tests remain here on day number two. Team test four coming up next. So stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
know the feeling? Know the feeling. This is the guy right here that I told you about, all right? This guy, when anyone walks in here and they tell me, I can't do this, I'm like, this is the guy. Go, go, talk, go talk to Henry. When I think of CrossFit, I think of Henry. And when we open these doors, that's the person that I wanted to serve. The day I walked into CrossFit mentality, I could not air squat to a 45 pound plate on top of an 18 inch box. You could imagine what it was like for me to just get out of a chair, stand up. I remember him telling me that he hadn't climbed a ladder at work and he couldn't even remember when. And even going downstairs, he was holding on to the railing and going down sideways. At that time, I really thought that this is what getting older was, you know? And obviously I was very wrong. There you go, so instead of pulling right to here, I want you to think, try to pull a little bit higher across your chest. There you go. Let's get one more big pull. Nice, and relax. I think the most important thing when you have somebody that's walking into your gyms is you gotta build the trust. And you gotta explain to them what your goal is. And when Henry came in, I told him, this is gonna change your life, but you need to trust me and you need to show up. He happened to be in the lobby when I came in to basically sign up for my on-ramp and he just had a short 30 seconds with me, but he said something to me that I'll never forget. He was asking me how I feel and why I'm here and I told him I have some bad knees, and maybe we could correct it. And he looked at me and said, you stick around here long enough and you probably won't need knee replacements and the man was correct focus today is going to be trying to improve our positioning on our squats. So what we really want to do is get the ankle nice and warmed up along with the hips and everything else. And then the more we can get this elbow down towards this toe, you can see that knee starting to track out. That's what's going to open that up for that overhead squat here today. Dude, you're clearing your feet so well now. Like that looks easy. That looks easy, bro. That looks easy. That's what I'm talking about. He's always got a smile on his face now. And I think he's just happier and hungrier than ever because once he started to see that progression happen, it was just, it was so life-changing. He's like, I want more. I want more. I want more. And he just kept investing and doubling down. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> that was awesome. Nice, dude. All right, so look at the difference here now. All right, and then even on this next one, when you brought your hands overhead, that was... Well, I didn't want to scab my nose, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> when I came to mentality, that just, it was like I jumped out of a train and, and all that just changed. And every day was better. You know, I, I, all of a sudden I could do this, and all of a sudden I could do that. One more set, last one. Getting to see the progress over five years of just nonstop work, showing up, not missing, and doing the things that he needs to do, and then getting to see how it changed his life. That to me is like winning the CrossFit Games. Cool, well, that's all I got for you. Yes, Good job. There is a six word phrase that we say, uh, what is CrossFit? CrossFit is constantly varied functional movements that are executed at high intensity. Es una definición de cinco segundos que dice todo, pero no satisface a nadie. It's a strength and conditioning program that mixes weightlifting, calisthenics, powerlifting, running, rowing, biking, and a whole bunch of different ways so that you get a broad, broad, broad range of fitness and you're never bored with your workout because they're changing all the time. At the end of the day, it's just working out 
with a good bunch of people, having a sweat, letting off some steam, and getting healthier and sexier at the same time. It's family, it's community, it's fitness. It's a no BS approach to bettering your life, not only inside the walls of the gym, but also outside the walls of the gym. You have to realize that when you step into a CrossFit gym, you're not just seeing the fittest competitive athletes in the world. You're seeing athletes that are just like you or me. The beautiful thing about CrossFit is that absolutely anyone can do CrossFit. Regardless of any demographic, age, ability level, or background. Todos não como pode, é como devem, né? It is designed for anybody to take part in. If I looked at each individual person that walks in every single day here, it's like everybody's absolutely different. It could look like my 80-year-old dad. It could look like my kids. There's an option for you that fits you exactly where you are on your fitness journey. It'll meet you right where you are at, and it'll take you to places that you never even thought you could go in terms of your fitness. I've seen people change their lives. I've seen people lose 50 kgs, relationships be created, babies being born from people who've met at the gym and, and they got married, etc. Para mí CrossFit fue encontrar una familia fuera de mi casa. <laughs> I can, I can honestly say, hand on heart, that it will change their life. Not because it's just a fitness program, not because of the community, but because the greatest adaptation that occurs in CrossFit happens right here.
Well, it's a good day for a 5K here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. We're going to run in and around the Alliant Energy Center here in Madison, Wisconsin. It is team test number four. Alongside Jamie Hagia and Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith, our eyes and ears down on the field. My name is Joel Gadeck. Glad to have you with us here on what is a steamy end of the week in Madison, Wisconsin. CrossFit Invictus has won 270 out of a possible 300 points, trying to bump themselves up from the bronze medal position a year ago. East Nashville proven just three points back, and Oslo Navy Blue second place each of the last two seasons, certainly in that mix. As we start to go down the leaderboard, we start to think about the cut line. The top 30 teams will advance to tomorrow, then we'll cut to the top 20 on Sunday. The 5K event description is, uh, Jeremy, pretty, pretty straightforward. It reads really easy, a lot <laughs> harder to do. Five kilometers uh, as a team holding a rope, which is probably going to be one of the hardest things we've seen. We saw something very similar last year, but this one just a little bit longer. That's how many miles? 3.12 miles. There we go. Recipe for success, Jimmy Hickey. <laughs> You need to run your own race. So every team is going to be different with their pacing. But since this is a four person run, you can only go as fast as your slowest runner. Also, you're going to look to book in your best at the front and the back of that rope. When your slower runners start to struggle, look for them to physically help push them along this course. There is a massive humanity at the start line. Let's go down to it with Lauren Smith. Guys, I'm in the middle of the dog park. It's the part where the athletes will be doing the final stretch into North Park on a slight decline. And we are in the midday sun. It is about 83 degrees out here. It feels more like 93. And what that means is the course is incredibly dusty. Don't worry about the bike in front. They've been warned to give a little bit of leeway to the athletes, but there's nothing you can do about all of the other athletes kicking up dust around you. Oslo Navy Blue won the running event called Fast at last year's games. 18.23 to run three miles. Again, this is a little bit more. As a 5K, we are off. And Joel, the start of the 5K, it's not very wide and 10 teams bustling for position in that first bit. A great shot, a mass. And talk about mass. CrossFit has got the largest in-person activation worldwide, the 5K. Make sure you jump onto the app and log your score, but they're doing 5K here on site. A thousand people expected. You can track your time while you run that 5K on your G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games, giving you the chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar spot, and over $400 in CrossFit swag, you can visit gshock.com slash CrossFit for more details. All right, we are in the first stretch of this 5K. How do you pace this out? Is this a run hard from the gun? Is this an 80% effort for 80% of the run and then you leave enough for a kick? How do you attack this? Well, interesting enough, I talked to Sam Briggs, the engine who ran this in the age group, and she is known for her running and her endurance abilities. And she said the strategy, she likes to have negative split times, which she gets faster each lap of this three of this uh, 5K. However, running with a team is going to be a little bit more difficult because you can't pace off yourself. You need to pace off of your slowest runner. And that's an important point, Jamie, where you put your runners in relation to what you want out of your team effort. I spoke to one of the teams in warm-up just before this, and the strategy was going to be put the fastest runner first, the second fastest at the end. So if need be, they can push them, the slow runners along a little bit and not have a caboose. And that's what was part of our recipe for success. In these later rounds and towards the end, you will physically see these athletes or their teammates with their hand on their low back, helping push them along. Now, interesting from a strategy standpoint, look at how wide a gap Invictus in the white leader's jersey has opened up. Part of that, I have to imagine, is they trust their ability to run this fast. Is there a strategic sense to that as well, though, in that they are forcing the people behind them to chase them and to run at a pace that maybe they're not comfortable with? Oh, absolutely. I think when you get into competition, one, your adrenaline kicks in. You want to go a lot faster. You, don't, you, you know where everyone is around you. So sometimes that might be a trap to try to stay close by them. But also, what a huge advantage. If they're wearing those white leader jerseys, they are in the front of the pack, and that makes a huge difference in their starting placement, starting this race off. About to run through the campground here. 
See if somebody like beer is an athlete <laughs> as we get it's through. It's a drink station. It's just two. a little bit different. But Lauren mentioned it at the start before the 5K kicked off, getting that dust kicked up in your face. So getting out to a good lead early, making sure you're not dealing with one of those aspects of the run. It's hot enough as it is. It'll be a three lap race. So just a smidgen over a mile per lap as we pass the three minute mark. That'll give you a general idea of a mile pace for these athletes once they come back around and into North Park. Oslo Navy Blue is in second place with Lana Richter in the front leading the pace. Josh Alshama in the white headband leads for Invictus. And I'll go back two years ago to the running event and Jorge Fernandez, who right now is the caboose for Invictus, tried to push the pace on their run at the 2021 games to the point where Brittany Weiss was struggling and she kept screaming from the back of the pack, Jorge, slow down, I can't. And he said, you're going to because <laughs> oh, you're either going to keep pace with us or you're going to let go of the rope and you're going to have to catch up. So that's where your, your motivation in, in maybe a little bit of a, a, a sardonic way <laughs> or a sadistic way comes into, hey, push your teammates along. You have a choice and it's one. <laughs> Keep up. <laughs> As Jeremy mentioned, there is a community 5K throughout the CrossFit community today that you can participate in at home as well. Today's Global 5K Day, we are celebrating with a VIP 5K. So hit that 5K today. It's the most programmed workout of all time on CrossFit programming's main site, 113 times. You can enter your benchmark score in the CrossFit app as well. Let's head down to Lauren Smith. Yeah, the redness have just all come past me and it's Trondheim that are flanking CrossFit Invictus up front. They've closed that gap. They probably had about four to five meters. It's now at less than a meter as they are in effect drafting off them down the hill and back into North Park. Trondheim is a repeat team here at the games last year, although only with one returning member in Vor Thurman Moe. That's Vor leading the way with the white shades. Just behind Jorge Fernandez. We've got to think when you get out to a lead, Jam, you can probably attest to this, you can set a certain pace. If you get stuck in that pack, you're going to be relied upon for the pack group or the lead pack to be pulling you along at a certain pace is making sure you get that break out and sort of getting into your stride and getting things a little bit more comfortable that you can do in, within your team. Yeah, and again, speaking with Sam Briggs before that, she was in the age group division and known as the engine in this, she actually said the tips to overtaking is during the flats and the grassy areas of this course. There is a part of this course that has gravel that is really not great for your, it's not the instability of that. And she said for herself and Scott Panchik, who don't have the best knees in CrossFit, <laughs> that was tough on them. <laughs> All right, we are coming back into North Park now. So about the one lap mark, sub six minute mile to lead the pack here for Invictus with Trondheim quite literally on their heels. We think about a really fast 5K run, anything under 20 minutes is going to be really good. Something I've never been able to achieve, obviously. And you're pretty renowned for your running, <laughs> Jamie Hagia, and you've done something similar to this on a similar course as well. Yes, we, we did have to swim before this, but I ran as a four-person team, and I will tell you, I was the weak link. Speaking of those bookends, I was in the middle being pushed along, so that's why I know. And here's a move for Trondheim. They have overtaken Invictus. A pass to the inside as we embark on lap number two. Look at Torian. They're in third place right now, starting to separate themselves a little bit and in trouble. Entered this event in 29th place overall. Again, we are cutting to the top 30 at the end of competition today. Jeremy, this is a big event for Torian because we thought the test this morning was going to be a big test, and the weight totals didn't necessarily stack up to what Torian's capable of, so this is a bounce back event or test. Oh, big time, and coming in as the number one Oceania contender into this, we expected them to be probably in a bit of a higher position than what they are. And the one we expected to be a lot higher coming up was East Nashville Proven. But they've just run past us in our commentary position and not probably sitting where they want to. 
I was able to speak with Andrea Nistler right before this test, and she did say that this is a one that is going to be a tough one for them as a whole this weekend, but if they make it past this, they are excited for every <laughs> other test coming up after this. Teams starting to separate themselves quite a bit now, where leads are turning into isolated pictures. Trondheim qualified out of the European Regional, one of four teams from Norway to make it here to the CrossFit Games. They were eighth in the European Regional. And again, Vor Thorman Moe, the only returner from last year's team, with Stein Moe and Nilsson, Jorgen Skevik, and Tobias Opdahl, who travels about 1,000 kilometers to train, about a two hour flight to train with this team. So, really, what's a 5K? Easy. <laughs> and Victor's now sitting comfortably in second position. They've got to be careful that they don't try and push and catch where Trondheim are currently, just staying in their own lane. Jamie, you mentioned it before. Just run your own race, making sure. You're sitting where you want to, and if you do want to have a little bit of a push, you've got to like wait till really late in this 5K to hit that finish line. Right, you think about it. This is, they're on their second lap out of the three. So if you make a, a push too early, you can burn out and it can be atrocious for your team. Nine minutes in, expecting someone to finish in about the 18 to 19 minute range. As we get another look at Tron time, back down to Lauren. I was chatting to Trondheim when they were in their training camp in Rockford earlier this week, and actually Jorgen Skevik tore his hamstring only a week after semi-finals, and he did that by sprinting. So the fact that they are so comfortably on this run is a testament to how he's managed that injury and how they're working together as a team. Yeah, Lauren, and that's a tough injury to take because Skevik competed at CrossFit at the individual elite level quite a while ago. He was 16th at the games back in 2017. And then upon retiring from elite competition, he ran a marathon, which is what most people do when they retire from fitness. But you figure he would be the runner on this team, so for him to sustain that injury and bounce back from it, and now, at least early on, pace this event, okay. Trondheim have got a really interesting strategy with their team members. They've got three up front and one at the back, and probably your weakest runner at the back, trying to get into that slipstream you see it often in cycling. Not so much in running, because they're not going that fast, but probably a good strategy for the Trondheim team. I, I actually like this dynamic, right? You're gonna have your three in front, almost like a diamond shape. Um, and that person in the back is, if you can get a little bit of a pull if you're hanging on to that. But you see them right there, they just made a quick switch without, very quick switch, so he went to the back of the pack. Now maybe he's looking to, to make a move to be able to push for those final, that final lap. That's Tobias Opdahl in the back, Jorgen Skevik in the front. Vor Thurman Moe and Stein Moe Nilsson are the two females. Vor leading the way. Stein just behind her, 462. Another thing to think about is your communication. You've obviously got to be doing this stuff, training with your team. You get into a test like this one, which is a grueling one, you haven't got a whole lot of time to talk, so you've got to probably go with hand gestures, maybe. When do you shift? When do you move? When do you push? When do you pull back? Oh, absolutely. You know, as one of the weakest runners on my team, I had to literally communicate screaming at my team, we must slow down. I cannot keep this pace. Um, I was You a and Jorge Fernandez would not <laughs> have been good teammates. <laughs> I would have been dropped from that rope, absolutely. <laughs> Passing the 11.30 mark here, and again, heading back toward North Park. So we're looking at just over six minute miles at the front of this race. And that jives with what we saw in the fast event, a three mile run last year here at the games. This is five Ks, so just over three miles. And it is Tron time. Again, only Thurman Moe was on their games team last year. That did finish 29. This is a group that has experience and a group that's trying to bring some respect to Northern Norway as well, because everybody moves down south. They go to Oslo. CrossFit Oslo has that huge contingent here at the games. But don't forget Trondheim and the affiliate that is owned by Matilda Garnis, who's competing on the elite side. I do. No, hang on. Okay, 
you look at the time that just ticked by 12 minutes 35 that's actually according to world athletics that is the fastest 5k run time ever <laughs> and you go to the worldwide 5k that we're trying to get done here it doesn't matter actually what time you get it's just about achieving something getting to that distance like running 5k for a lot of people is a tough thing to do but 12 minutes 35 is a bit ridiculous really and if we're looking at negative split times if they're looking at getting faster each lap running a six minute mile and be able to hold that across the three laps is going to be extremely impressive hitting the 13 and a half minute mark you saw right past the ice water station so a chance to rehydrate on this run Afterwards, all these athletes are going to hit the ice barrel. And we walked past the ice barrel station after the individuals had completed alpaca not that long ago. And uh, that thing is getting utilized today. Oh, there's some forearms getting thrown straight in there. Emma McQuaid fully dunked up to her neck. Number one, just to get yourself to relax from a body standpoint, but get that body temperature, get that heart rate down. Oh, recovery is the name of the game, especially this week at the CrossFit Games. They put under some grueling tests and having that as a recovery tool. We might go and jump in that ice barrel after this. It's getting a little bit hot. This is an incredible read for Trondheim. You saw things opening up on that first lap. It was Invictus that was pushing the pace, and Invictus is still in second. But that gap that was about 20, 25 meters, that slowly became 40 meters, very quickly became 150 meters. And once you lose the leaders, it's hard to know what you're chasing after. Look, in your first lap, everyone is excited. They are going out fast. They are running as hard as they can, maybe a little faster than they'd like. And then as that, that fatigue it starts to accumulate, that's going to add on seconds as each lap passes by. Well, there you see Invictus just crossing your screen in the pack, starting to make their way to them. Oslo Navy Blue. There's Avon Dalringard just running off the left side of your screen. You have Preston Da and Victor Langsford on the left, the Swedish super team. Joe, you mentioned the, the spread of the teams now, but only three points separating each position so far. There is CrossFit Krypton and Ben Smith, although gingerly, guys, he is running. You can see clearly has his knee taped up after hurting himself on the Olympic total. And this was that injury on the clean and jerk. 2015 fittest man on earth initially misses the jerk here he tries to go for it again and that was not the right move for ben smith but at least in the moment our concern assuaged here as he's back out there to run a 5k and looking really solid on his run i saw him back in the athlete warm-up area and he was ready to go it looked really good news for their team glad to see him out there running strong oh when you've got a Games champion in the field. It's always exciting to see them actually coming together when you're competing with your brother as well. It's uh, just awesome. And you think about how much of this is physically taxing on the body, but also a mental grind. This is a long, hard, fast racing, a great pace you have to keep up. So that mental fatigue is going to be, we'll see who has the most strongest mental mind as well. Second place, leaders overall. We see Josh Alshama leading the pack there. I spoke with him right before this race, and he said that he is going to be in charge of pacing, but Devin Kim does not like to know the split time. She doesn't want to know where they're running at. She just wants to hold that rope and follow along with the pace he's going at. Tell me nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Oslo Navy Blue, back-to-back -back silver medals to CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. Of course, Freedom out of the picture this year. There's move fast, lift heavy. A lot of pack running here for a vast majority of these athletes. There's the Franco's Misfits. I'll tell you what, those blue noble hats that all the athletes have, it's a good look. Now you think about training as your team and you've got to get that communication and everything sorted out, Jamie. In your experience as a team athlete, how often do you practice long distance, grueling, grindy stuff? 
Yeah, you know, after semifinals is done, you know that the CrossFit Games is going to bring in odd objects, long runs, swims, things outside of the gym. So you definitely, after semifinals preparing for the games, I guarantee you a lot of these teams were outside running. 5Ks, mile times, just a, a wide range because you don't know what is coming, the unknown and the unknowable. All fists up in the air here for Tron time as they start to make their way back to North Park. They can see behind them. They know there's nobody there. Tron time with a 15th and a third place in their two tests yesterday. Performed well on the lift this morning. Entered our fourth test today in 17th overall. Plenty clear of tonight's cut line. Finish line is on the turf here inside North Park. And we'll see if Tron Time can make it in under 19 minutes. They're going to have to boogie. Doesn't matter. This is a massive test win for the Norwegians. It's quite literally a victory lap for CrossFit Trondheim. That's a 5K as a team in just over 19 minutes. Test win in test number four. That's wow. incredible <laughs> yes. doing sub four minute splits as a team holding a rope. So out of your normal stride as well. We'll just wait for somebody else to. <laughs> Maybe the secret, I need to move to Norway. I'll become a better runner. <laughs> Here's Invictus. So the Sea of Green will maintain their overall lead heading into test five tonight. But I mean, Tron time. Go win this thing by better than 30 seconds. Invictus is in second. Now we have a race. Invictus unconquerable. It's all about the San Diegans. They're in third. Torian winds up in fourth. That's a huge result for the Aussies. They're in grave danger of being cut tonight. That will certainly help that case. And now it's just the floodgates opening and everybody flowing in. Hey Joel, you mentioned Torian coming in with probably one of the heaviest athletes there is in Royce Dunn. So a good run from him. And the Franco's misfits, Shaylin Laurie, Brandon Luckett, Logan Collins, Alexis Johnson. Teams trying to chase each other down, Milford Looks like they're going to hold off no shortcuts. Andre Houdet is trying to drag his team across the finish. We've got another all-out foot race. And I do believe all four athletes from PSC were able to get across first to win that one. Oslo Nice, which has the two women from Oslo Purple Red that crushed the run last year on it, comes across. And John, we've just hit 21 minutes, and we've had about 20 teams finish. So they are. Wow, they're hoofing it. That's about seven a minute mile pace. I can't even do that for one. <laughs> <laughs> there is no cap on this event, and East Nashville proven needs every second of it. One of the favorites coming in, East Nashville proven could get run down here. Oh, look oh at this God. race, Whoa. Omnia. That'll come down to the chip timer, and it is East Nashville proven by five-tenths of a second over Omnia for 20th and 21st place. And training Think Tank is carrying Hannah Hardy. The game's veteran and the captain of this team. And you hate to see that for Hannah Hardy. This is a training think tank team that Max El Haj is so proud of from that affiliate because they are all true training think tank athletes that have come together under that methodology. And they have poured their souls into this 5K. Athletes not wasting any time in this sun. As soon as they are done over that line, they are straight into the shade. It is absolutely belting down. 
It's a 20th place finish for East Nashville Proven. That's the squad with Taylor Williamson and Andrea Nistler, who remember were on CrossFit Mayhem Freedom over the last couple of years. And if you think back to the fast event at last year's games, Mayhem Freedom struggled on the run and then never lost another test from that point forward. And spoke to Andrea Nistler and Taylor Williamson about that leading up to these games. And I said, what did you think going into that moment where Oslo Navy Blue had an opportunity to surpass you, but you jumped back in front? And they both said, we really don't remember it. It was just in the flow of the games. We'll have some good tests. We'll have some bad tests. We knew our wheelhouses were still to come. I don't think they're worried. But that's probably the thing that's going to separate them from the inexperienced teams that do come to the games. They know they're going to go through ebbs and flows right across the week. Be able to just take those hits and just move on and put that aside. Here's the Coda Redemption team with athletes that were on a couple of different Coda squads a year ago that did not make it to the games for a variety of reasons. This is their redemption run. But you can see, Lauren talked about the weather at the start of the race. It is hot, and these athletes are wearing it. And going back to those highs and lows you're gonna see throughout a long weekend of tests, some of the best advice I got when I was competing at the CrossFit Games was don't get too high and don't get too low. You know you're gonna do well in some and not well in others. If you can stay in the middle, you know, and all these athletes are very experienced. They know not to get too, too excited or too, too hard on themselves because you have to stay in the right mindset to keep on moving forward. And again, that's Hannah Hardy being carted off. Mm -hmm. The Games athlete with CrossFit West Chase in 2021, captain to team for West Chase last year before coming under the TTT umbrella. And to put things in perspective, 24 minutes is still an oh. eight minute <laughs> mile pace. Oh, my PR is still three minutes out there. <laughs> I'm, I'm going on lap two still. Don't worry about you guys. <laughs> we got to think now, fast forward to the next test that is coming up, recovery is going to be imperative. Making sure they're hydrating, getting oh. enough nutrition in ice barrels. They're going to be sitting in them for a good 10, 15 minutes trying to cool that body temp down. It's the Templo team that had a top five finish in the lift event this morning. And I absolutely love the programming design of today. We saw a weightlifting test earlier this morning and now a monostructural. Nothing fancy. Go out there and run a 5K all together. Yeah, what, is, what is your fitness? Exactly. That's what we're here for. Yeah. <laughs> How about the judges? It's so easy. Run. <laughs> See you back here in a minute or a few minutes. Jamie, how does that test your fitness system to, in one day, you, know, you think about the Adam Clink deadlift 500 pounds and run a under five minute mile. We didn't deadlift this morning, but, but how does it tax your system to go out there with a very heavy Olympic lift, take a couple hours break and go out there and run a 5K as fast as you can? The fittest, it will never be an issue for them. The, the, the thing is we want to be well-rounded athletes. So you should be able to lift heavy. You should be able to go run a 5K a, a mile. 10 miles if you wanted to, uh, you know? So these athletes are just just uh, showcasing and their display of incredible fitness at this level. We're wasting no time getting in the ice buckets. <laughs> <laughs> this is Cape CrossFit, the team from Africa. I had a great conversation with Callum Diebel leading up to this. I said, listen, like, teams from Africa, the best they've ever finished at the games is 20. So what's the expectation and how do you attack this? And he said, listen, no matter where we are, we're fighting for positioning. 24th is better than 25th. 17th is better than 18th. And it's all about creating future opportunities for teams from Africa, from Asia, from South America, the regions where the sport is still growing so that people can see it and say, we can do it too. I have always been a firm believer in representation matters. And when you see someone from your home country out there doing it, you see them, you know that it is achievable. So when you, that is a big component, they are doing great work for their community. The Finkel sisters, Regan and Brady, Ashton is their third sister, the youngest of the trio. Their parents are big fitness enthusiasts back home in South Africa as well. Coming from the oldest box in Cape Town, Cape CrossFit, as CrossFit begins and continues to establish a foothold in South Africa. We well, got to think, Joel, 
the Africa and Asian continents, it's almost three quarters of the entire world's population. And we're just getting started there. What is going to happen? I don't know what, but I'm excited to see what the future holds. And all teams are now in as the final three athletes from Training Think Tank are actually going to come across and finish the run. Back at the beginning, it was <laughs> chaos. It looked like Black <laughs> Friday at Macy's. <laughs> This is where Tron Time overtook Invictus. That was just after the first lap. They kind of laid in wait, played yeah, that game. Probably just to see exactly what Invictus was going to do, what sort of pace they were going to set. But once they got out there, I don't think Invictus even worried about the distance between them. Only a three-point split on the leaderboard. But very hot and very taxing. Trondheim, absolutely outstanding. It's hard to win tests at the CrossFit Games. Goes without saying. Anytime you can fuck one, that's a good day. Anytime you can win one by 35 seconds, get out of town. Invictus has a great day. Invictus and Unconquerable go two and three. How about CLT? The team from Charlotte, North Carolina, in fourth ahead of Torian. Down to Lawrence Smith. I have this test winners around me, Trondheim, Steiner, after a difficult lifting event, how important was it to make your mark on the run? Oh, uh, we're looking forward to this event. Uh, we're talking good together and had it fun. And it was Barne Shiran, uh, so we talk, uh, say in Norwegian. <laughs> Jürgen. Just after semi-finals, you tore your hamstring and now you're putting down the time to beat on a 5K. How did you manage to make this happen? Yeah, you know, I wasn't so keen on having a sprint at the end because of my hamstring, so we just needed to go hard the entire way. So, yeah, we knew this event was the one we had to win. So, yeah, it was very good to get it. Vor, you're the only returner from the Trondheim team that was at the CrossFit Games last year. And at the end of it, you were left without a team and you brought all of these guys in. How different is this experience and how much have you found a love for what you're doing with this group of people? I think we're kind of more similar in our strengths and weaknesses as last year. So I think we can do pretty, pretty good on the events that we are like good at and we are like shit at the rest. <laughs> Guys, it was absolutely incredible. Tobias, I'll let you have a very, very quick last word. You came in in 17th. How important is it for you to continue now with this momentum? Uh, it's very important. Uh, I guess we want to make the last cut and uh, stay in the top 10 as we were uh, last night. So that's our goal for the day and finish off strong on the last event. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you know, how do you avoid sprinting at the end? You just run fast the whole time. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, that's the, the thing they did years ago with Dave Castro with the row. They had the 1,000 metre row and then they had the half marathon and they had two splits. So probably fortunate that yes. they didn't have that here today. And you do. I know you wanted to see that. I though, did. Jeremy. I wanted to see a four and a half K uh, marker and then the last 500 metre sprint. Everyone go for it. That is evil. <laughs> that is so evil. As long as I don't have to do it. Realizing no one was coming to save them from a growing opioid crisis, the people of Portsmouth, Ohio, led by Army veteran Dale King, band together to create real change. Their unorthodox strategy takes on addiction and recovery through fitness, fueled by the energy and community of Dale's gym. If you've not seen about this story, take a look now. It's incredible. Dale. It's incredible what you've built. It's a project very close to your heart. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, um, Greg had always said CrossFit's a lifeboat in a sea of chronic disease. And unfortunately, where we're from, uh, that sea's very stormy with addiction. So um, through the people at my gym, we started, a pro we started a program to work with folks in recovery and um, it's been one of the most impactful and rewarding experiences I've ever been a part of. Now you set about making this, this television program three years ago. I imagine it's been a journey of love. Why was it so important for you to share this story with the world? Because it, it tells the story of my best friend and more importantly, it still tells the story of my town. Um, 
I, I'm here because of the people that go to my gym. And, and for me to be able to tell that story and put it on a national spotlight, it, it means the world to me. And, and we're just thankful for CrossFit to give us the opportunity to promote it for us. Now, Portsmouth it struggles with opioid addiction, but you're also taking people who have been in prison. How do you help them find a new lease of life when so they've come into your gym? But I understand you also help them find work out of it. It's more than just training. It is life. It's um, people have given me a lot of second chances in my life. And what we realized is when dealing with addiction, getting sober is step one. Uh, but you need a you need a good people and you need a good place to work at and, and some housing down the road to really be successful in long term recovery. So that's that's kind of what we looked into and started doing. So if anyone wants to find this program, it's I understand not released quite yet, but where can they sign up to get early access? Uh, official release date will be October 3rd. You can go to smalltownstrongdoc.com, pre-order, check it out, follow us on Instagram. Um, really, this it's important for people to know, this is a project from an affiliate, and um, it's it means the world for us, for any support that you can give us. It's amazing seeing affiliate owners doing such incredible things. You should be really proud. Thank you for doing everything that you do. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. Again, small town strong. Make sure you check that out as we head toward October. Five carries in the books. The teams have completed four tests. We have a cut still looming here on Friday at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Ski Bag is coming up next. The men's individual test five. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. Rogue, don't weaken. Jocko Go and Jocko Molt, the official energy drink and the official ready to drink protein shake of the Noble CrossFit Games. Wild Health, winning is in your DNA. Unleash it with Wild Health. And Momentus, the official supplements and sports nutrition partner of CrossFit.
That's it, Carolyn. Don't forget to use your legs. Three more. Left. They say that CrossFit is not for everyone, but it's for anyone. The thing is, Six, people four, make an incorrect assumption that it's Seven. not for them based on self-limiting beliefs, based on things that they assume from social media or society, and that is what's absolutely not the case. You just have to find the right CrossFit that matches with your values and, and feels like a good place to be, and you know, you'll find your tribe and your community of people. these athletes are working against their peers at the CrossFit Games, they know that they're also testing or working out against or doing an event next to the fittest in the world. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they were good at and they showed up the environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person is good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit, it's constantly very functional, it's executed a high intensity, this thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that the community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games.
time to do some indoor skiing as we head to the Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Day number two of competition for the individuals here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. Thanks for being with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram and Mike Arsenault is down on the competition floor. Roman Kredikoff has been dominating this competition so far. He is your overall leader, but there's a new man right behind him, and that's Brent Fakowski, the professor. New man doing old things that he used to do. Brent Fakowski has two third place finishes to his name. It started yesterday with the pig chipper outside in North Park. And again, to start off this morning in the same place doing a similar test when it came to Alpaca Redo. So two third place finishes, a great finish this morning. Brent Fikowski is doing classic Fikowski things at the moment. <coughs> Overall standings after four tests. Roman Krennikov is the only man with more than 300 points. He has two test wins, has yet to finish outside the top five. And it is close after that. 31 points separate Brent Fikowski from Jeff Adler in eighth. And we go from a long, grueling outdoor event to a fast, nasty test. One of the most intense tests we have this weekend. Kowski sandbag squats, 30-30. 2020 with a 200 pound sandbag. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. If you want to win this test, you must go unbroken on the squats. And how do you do that? Tip the cat to the squat gods and say, I'll see you on the other side. Let's go down to Mike Arsenault. Sean, thanks for taking your sweet time with that introduction. <laughs> this is what the athletes will be embarking on, getting the Sandbag to their shoulder, 200 pounds for the men, and then at some point they'll have to take their arm off. Man, that is extraordinarily heavy. 30 squats, we did the sandbag lift. Last year got up to 340 pounds, 200 pounds today, 30 squats, and if it's as any bit as tiring as one rep for me, we're in for some excitement here in test number five. Mike Arsenault just selling out for his work, and we really appreciate the effort, Mike. Thank you. Go, go very, take a break. Very method. <laughs> Nine men will be on the competition floor for this opening heat. Cole Greasehaber is in lane number six. He does have a test win, but right now, 31st place overall. We're cutting down to the top 30 after the final test tonight. Just on the outside, looking in, but with that test win, very high skilled, very different task. But Cole has got some strength in those legs, and he's going to put it to the test right here. We start with a 30 calorie ski and we were talking to competition director Adrian Bosman earlier today and he said look if you're going to have any chance of being competitive you've got to go unbroken on all of these. You got to go unbroken on the squats if you want to work your way up the leaderboard but with the ski he also said this is a big part of the intensity that you need to have a successful run at the test but what you need to be careful of is that you don't dip too far into the red on the ski before you get to the back. 100 total scored repetitions and we will have the calories updating on the top of your screen on the scoring hat. Leader's name will be on the far left. Number in the white box will indicate how many calories and reps that man has amassed and the number in the white box next to everyone else's name will indicate how many reps or calories by which they trail the leader. The Sam Quant is just about done with his ski. And Quant will be the first man off. And Quant needs this. He is not having a weekend. Anybody thought he would have, including himself. And one thing about this ski, Sean, is when you have to have that overhead, a one-arm support, that ski is going to tax all those muscles you are using to support the back. So not only are your legs getting blasted by the sandbag, but there is no rest that one arm you are using to secure the back on your shoulders. And Alex Vino right behind Sam Quant. Nicole Greasehaber and Jake Douglas swapping third place right now.
You can schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free. Now available across the U.S. Scan the QR code to get started. And Sam Quant now with 10 reps remaining here on this first set of squats. Then he'll go back to the skier. He'll advance forward and complete 20 calories. The other part of this is the fear of having to drop the bag and do an entire clean to get it back on the shoulders. A 200 bag is so incredibly heavy. And Sam Quad is done. To Quad back to the ski, now 20 calories. As Sean, this is the nastiest part of the entire test. I think it's these 20 calories on the ski erg as far as intensity is concerned. And the reason is, is that you just did 30 and 30. Just dropping 10 is really not enough to feel much of a reprieve from what you just did. So these 20 cals, not only are they going to be tough, but since it's only 20, it forces you to keep the intensity higher than you would want to. Top two on the screen, Jake Douglas on the left out of Australia, making his first career appearance here at the CrossFit Games. And Sam Quant on the right, both of these men right now on the wrong side of the cut line. Douglas comes in and and dead last in 39th, and Sam Quan is in 32nd. And Sam Quan now with just one final calorie to go. He'll go back to the bag now, 20 squats. I'm curious if he switches sides. He had it on the left shoulder on the 30. And yeah, it puts it over to the right shoulder for the set of 20. Good move by Quan. If anybody's curious how heavy this is, go to your buddy, <laughs> throw him over your shoulder if you can, try not to fall over, and then rip off one squat and tell me how that feels. There's 90 kilos in that bag, 200 pounds. Jake Douglas is now on to his final set of squats, but Sam Quad is just about done. He only has seven reps remaining. Five final reps for Sam Quan, who's looking to get back on track here and get inside the cut line. Last rep here for Sam Quant. He is done, and Sam Quant takes heat one. 434.75 seconds for Quant. Now Jake Douglas looks to be the next man to finish. Douglas is done. The Douglas second place in the heat. 505.72 seconds for Douglas. Fabian Benito, your leader on the floor. He's four reps shy of finishing. And he is in. That's Kaike Servani. He's trying to keep that bag balanced and has to dump it. And Cole Sager is in. One of the three men here making his 10th straight appearance at the CrossFit Games. And now 15 seconds to go before we hit the time cap. Well, Suvani will get across with a couple seconds to spare. And that will do it for heat number one. And it's Sam Quant who sets the top mark at 434.75 seconds. Sam Quan just didn't break form, didn't break stride, didn't break pace, just end to end. It was so consistent. And we said this is a very high intense test, but it doesn't mean full send from the start. But we did say unbroken or bust. Quant did just that and set a good time to beat for the next three heats. 434.75 seconds. We'll see where that ends up in the whole scheme of things with now three heats to go. Heat two coming up next here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin.
Day two of competition continues here for the individuals at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. One heat is down in test number five. Heat number two is up next. Thanks for being with us, everyone. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. I'm Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Test number five. We're going to ski and we're going to squat. Gross, Sean. <laughs> Gross. 30 cal ski, 30 sandbag squats. 2020 at the tail end. 200 pounds on the bag. There's a nice splash of intensity here for test number five. If you want to win, Sam Kwan just showed us. Unbroken or bust. And tip the old cap to the squat gods, Sean, because it is all about these squats here at the end. Recipe for a success delivered by Trifecta. There will be 10 men on the floor. Keep an eye in the middle. David Shirunki and Nick Matthew Shirunki, the biggest athlete in the field. Swimming background, rowing background. That is a pain tolerance for a big man. He's also incredibly strong and suits up well for this. Just came off a fifth place finish in Alpaca. But Nick Matthew, when you talk squats, this is the man whose name you should be talking about. Saw him do 505 for a double last year. This guy can move some weight. We start with the 30 calorie ski. Sam Kwan has the best time. At a heat number one, four minutes, 34.75 seconds. When you look at this ski at the buy-in, Sean, you can't waste time, but you don't need to try to gain some ground on any of your competitors. So it's not quite a buy-in, but it is not the most important part of this test because it is those 200 pound bags, 30 squats at those weights is a big number after i mean think of what they did just this morning those sled pushes that they had to do the bike that they had to do yesterday 100 wall ball shots they're not exactly fresh in the legs coming in so be somewhat i would say smart not conservative smart on these first 30 cows when the big guys are out front early brought us all language chiruggy farlow and hopper all on the lead pace in this first 30 calorie row. Six minute time cap here, and timing is presented by G Shock, the official watch of the Noble Crossing Games. There is Jason Hopper. And Bronislaw Lankowitz will be the first man, along with Jason Hopper and, and he, Jack Farlow. You keep listening off these names, Sean, and it's like, oh, I, I forgot about that guy, and I forgot about, like, there are some strong athletes in this field. Lengowitz is on the left. That's Farlow on the right. Once Lengowitz hits the 60 rep mark, he will advance to the second skier and complete 20 calories. And then we cut down to 30 athletes after test six this evening. And right now, all these guys are on the right side of that. And you think about a test like this, Sean, and I was like, hey, I'm going to give you a six foot, 220 pound man from Poland who grew up on a farm. How do you think he'll fare with the sandbag test? I feel like he would just call this any day that ends in Y. Legowitz <laughs> <laughs> and Hopper, your leaders, Farlow, Morad. And Hapalainen right now in the top five, 100 total scored repetitions here. And there is Big Braun, who has really rounded out his fitness. He used to just be known as you know, the powerful guy, and you could look at him and tell why, but he's made an effort with Underdog Athletics and, and Justin Cotter to become a more complete athlete. And it's really the first year he's exclusively focused on qualifying for the CrossFit Games. Now, finished right about 2.35, is up three seconds off of Sam Quant's pace from Heat 1. Now, Bronislaw Lankowitz and Will Morad. And now Jason Hopper, bottom of your screen, getting to the ski, as is Jack Farlow. Hopper taking a look to his right. And Jason Hopper right on the cut line right now, 30th overall. That's a bit of a surprise. It is, and if, if you were to pick a top three athlete to win this test, it would be Jason Hopper, but we haven't seen who we thought Hopper was gonna be coming in through the first four tests. At the 80 rep mark, Bronislaw Alenkowicz will go back to the squats and complete 20 more, trying to track down Sam Quant's time of 434. 
3.75 seconds. Quan was off the ski at 3.27, so Quan's time could stand another heat. Bronislaw Legowitz, first man to the squats, gets that bag situated across his back. And now Jason Hopper, along with Will Morak, getting to the bag. And Jack Farlow and Nick Matthew now stepping up to start their final set of squats. Malegowicz has got a shot here at Sam Quant, but it's going to be close. He's got 10 reps to go. Hopper at the bottom of your screen, battling with Will Morad in the top of the white shorts for second place. Top three on the screen right now. Left to right, Alekowicz, Morad, and Hopper. So Sam Quant's going to hang on to the top time. And now the fight is for second place in the test. And Nick Matthew, meanwhile, is putting on a frantic pace as Alegowicz is across. Matthew is right there in the middle of your screen, green shirt and gray shorts. Trying to get in ahead of Jason Hopper at the bottom, and Will Morad, and what a comeback for Matthew, and it's a bang-bang finish between Hopper and Morad. So Nick Matthew will take second, Morad will edge out Hopper by a little more than a second. There is Jack Farlow, the man who finished second earlier today in Alpaca. And now David Sharunke getting set to finish up. And he is in. Usually that step up to the finish man is <laughs> not that difficult, but after everything here, I mean, it's, you might need a ladder. I think it's when I would just like flop my foot up on the top. <laughs> like, just all right, good. Gotta roll onto now it. Now I'll roll on. And Heinrich Kapalainen is not gonna be able to get in. Ronisaw Lankowitz will take the heat. 454.44 seconds. Sam Quant still at the top time at 434.7. Five seconds. Bronislaw Valenkiewicz on the left, Jack Farlow on the right. Farlow coming off that second place finish this morning in Alpaca, but Valenkiewicz start to finish. Again, the same smooth intensity that we saw from Sam Quant. Quant's time, still the time to beat. <laughs> you can see Bron with a little bit of the booty lock there as he Caught up on the finish, Matt, 454.44 seconds. Only man to go sub five in that heat. Nick Matthew with a great finish to take second place. And then a really close finish between Will Morad and Jason Hopper. E3 and Ski Bag coming up next.
Halfway through test number five here inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center as the second day of individual competition rolls on Friday at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. And we are glad you were with us. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. we got Mike Arsenault down on the competition floor. Test number five, you said it in the prior heat, gross. Gross, 30-30-20-20, cows on the skier and squats with that 200-pound strongman bag. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. You've seen two heats. Do you change anything here? I think it's it's solidifying what we thought from the very beginning. It's unbroken or bust, and it's coming down to the squat. So get your affairs in order with the big squat god man upstairs. Ten men will be on the competition floor here, including Justin Medeiros in lane number three. Did not have the start he wanted. His two worst career finishes in test one and two, but he has gained 21 spots in the overall standings over the last two tests. He was 36th place going into the gymnastic skills, moved to 23rd, now in 15th, coming off that seventh place finish this morning. In lane six and seven, two men who are looking to punch into the top 10. Yellow Hosta, who is on the right side of your screen, and Mort Feebig on the left. Look, Hosta does some great stuff at semifinals with sandbags and machines, but Feebig, his last event was the biggest damage control for him for the weekend. Look for him to bounce back potentially here on this test. Time to beat still belongs to Sam Quant. Four minutes, 34.75 seconds out of heat number one. Only two men have gone to sub five. It's Quant and Bronislaw Alekowicz in the prior heat. And there's something about this being in the later heats is that you get to see what it takes to win the test. So now you can formulate some pacing based off that. All right, I know my time is 434 at halfway. He was at 227. Okay, what pace do I need to row or ski to get off at say 115? How fast do I need to do my sets of five squats to get at 227? You start to utilize what other athletes are doing to help formulate your test plan. Moritz Fiebig right now is two thirds of the way through that 30 calorie ski. There's Lazar Jukic. Jukic coming in in 19th place overall. Speaking of pace, Quant was off the ski at 105 and five big there he is now if you go back to the first time moritz came on the scene it was the final event of the 2021 lowlands throwdown where he totally sent a test very similar as far as intensity to this one now all the athletes are done with their first 30 calorie ski and fiba got hit with a no rep to start, but he is the leader right in the middle of the floor. And now at the far end, both Colton Mertens and Lazar Dukic moving forward. Here comes Pat Vellner as well. Now, this is a tale of two movements for Colton Mertens, who's up there in lane number two. Smallest athlete in the field, skier, not an advantage. But the dude can squat. Not only is he quick, but he's strong. And listen, range of motion with squats is a benefit if you're a little smaller. And here comes Colton Mertens. Colton Mertens has moved into second place behind Moritz Feebig at the 60 rep mark. They will move to the second ski. This time it's only 20 calories. So Mertens putting some pressure on Moritz Feebig. The two of them have the same amount of reps. Here comes Pat Vellner now in third. He and Lazar Jukic battling for that position. Now the benefit for Colton coming into the second half of this test is that he was behind on a 30 cal ski. Those athletes who are better at the ski are gonna lose their advantage they have on him in the 20. And Colton Mertens is the first man back to the ski. Here comes Moritz Feebig in second. Mertens getting right to work. Here comes Pat Vellner and now Justin Medeiros. But look how hard Mertens is cranking on it. Here's what I like to see here. Mertens keeping his legs relatively straight, not blowing up the quads, and just using that upper body, driving the chest down, using his triceps, because he's going to save his legs as much as he can for the last set of 20. Mertens now 10 calories to go. Pat Vellner has moved into second place ahead of Feebig, and now Justin Madera sits in fourth. Yellow Hosta moving into the top five. So Feebig's pace a lot slower than he had on the first 30. He might have gone a little too fast in the very beginning. Merton's three final calories here. He's gonna be tough to catch. 
And Mertens is done. Velner looking to be the next man off the ski. And there goes Pat Velner. He has 20 squats remaining. Velner's had an up and down competition so far. A 27th and back to back sixth place finishes and then 27th in the Alpaca as Colton Mertens has 15 reps to go. Five just failed to clean on the sandbag. 434.75 seconds is the time to beat. Mertens has got a shot at that. Velder in second now. Jeva Hosta has moved into third ahead of Justin Medeiros. And now final five for Colton Mertens. If Mertens can get this, they're going to blow the roof off in the Coliseum. Mertens is in, and he is your new leader. Muscle, hamster, madness. Well, Velder and Hosta are tied. Hosta's at the bottom of your screen. Velder's in the white shorts. And Medeiros sneaks across. So Justin Medeiros edging out Velner. And we'll have to see where Hosta finished. But Justin Medeiros advanced just enough into that final section. And he's going to take second in the heat and se second in the test right now as he edged out Sam Quant's prior best time. Now, the one, one thing for Justin, though, is what he doesn't normally do, John, is to win tests. If Justin wants a shot at podium, He's going to have to win tests. And Noah Olsen is in. Now, I think Medeiros did complete all the work. He just didn't advance him on that final five. He did 10 in one spot. They're supposed to move forward every five reps. You take a look at Uldis Upnix, who's just trying to get a couple more reps before that six-minute time cap hits. But Justin Medeiros, another solid result. Back to the athlete we're used to seeing. Colton Mertens right now, the best time at 430.60 seconds. Let's take one more look, though, at what happened with Justin Medeiros. You can see Pat Vellner advances. He's on that final set of five. Medeiros only took a couple steps forward. I think he just thought he had to get ahead of that line, but he does complete all the work. But that's why visually he didn't look like he was on the lead pace. Which, in all points and purposes, makes a difference because Running 10 feet across the finish line versus advancing 10 feet with a sandbag does make seconds of differences. Justin Medeiros right now, second place in the test. Colton Mertens, your new leader, 430.60 seconds as we head into the fourth and final heat.
We are down to the final heat and test number five for the men here on the second day of competition for the individuals at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Chase Ingram. Mike Arso has us covered down on the competition floor. Brent Fakowski, the professor, is teaching these kids a lesson. He sits in second place overall right now. Hey, this is classic Fakowski at the CrossFit Games, now tied for second place, as you said, Sean, on the heels of those two third place finishes, both at the North Park Stadium. Alpaca this morning, trying to keep pace with Roman Karenikov, who we thought would run away with it, but Fakowski gave him all he could handle towards the end. And as a result, Brent Fakowski moved <coughs> into the top three. 379 points for Roman Krennikov, who has two test wins and has yet to finish outside the top five. Brent Fikowski and Jake Crouch are tied in points, but it's Fikowski with the tie break and just 31 points separate Fikowski in second from Jeff Adler in eighth. Test number five is Ski Bag. Ski Bag and whatever bag number names you want to put with it, because that's how tough this is. 30, 30, 20, 20, Ski Cows in squats with a 200 pound bag. Unbroken or bust is the only way you can succeed in this test. Dear eight pound, six ounce, baby squat god, help me please. <laughs> Recipe for success delivered by Trifecta. Here's your start list, 10 men on the floor for this final heat. Jeff Adler will be in lane number nine. He's only 31 points out of second place. And for more on him, let's go down to Mike Arsenal. Thank you, Sean. If you're new to the sport of fitness, you may be watching the CrossFit Games and thinking this is unattainable. These athletes are superhuman. Well, back in 2017, Jeff Adler and his coach, Carolyn Lambre, were actually volunteers for the media and the events team. And now six years later, he's competing for a spot on the podium. It took a lot of hard work, a lot of perseverance, but it is possible. Maybe a volunteer here this weekend might be competing in the CrossFit Games in 2029. Chandler Smith right now, seventh place overall. Finally. Welcome Finally. back to the CrossFit Games and living up, like you said, to that potential that I think a lot of people know he has. It's the expectations, though, that he needs to manage. There's your overall leader, Roman Krenikov, who may pull the handles off of this thing. <laughs> may know his way around a skier or two. What Roman did last year on the swim test, just hammering, putting up numbers on a skier. I didn't know were actually registered, could like could come up on a screen. The so question mark showed up on the display. <laughs> well, everybody on the lead pace right now. Not a lot of separation. Dallin Pepper and Brent Fukowski, Jeff Adler as well. yonakosi has been towards the front. And it's really, sorry, Sean, the, this first 30 is the only part you don't need to crush yourself with. We've seen some different strategies so far. Mertens not coming off the ski first, and then what he could do on the sandbag after that. Once we get to the bag, now it's the race. Well, Dallin Pepper is your leader, but just by a fraction. We need about what Dallin Pepper did in the semifinals on the final test and a sandbag. And here you go. Everybody done it pretty much the same time. 30 squats at 200 pounds. <laughs> 90 kilos in that bag. Colton Mertens does have the top time. 4 minutes 30.06 seconds. And Roman Krennikov is towards the front here. Schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free. Now available across the U.S. Scan the QR code to get started. Oh, Sean, I miss the days when a 150-pound sandbag was heavy. <laughs> Those are good times. Roman Krenikov is slightly ahead of Sam Corlea right now. Jeff Adler is up there as well, along with Dallin Pepper and Chandler Smith. This group extremely close here in this first set of sandbag squats. 30 total reps at the 60 rep mark. 
He'll go to the next gear for 20 calories. The leader's name will be on the far left on the top of your screen in our scoring hat, and the number in the white box next to that man's name will indicate how many reps he has completed. Roman Prenikov is through 60 of the 100 total scored repetitions, and he is in front here, and here comes Dallin Pepper and Chandler Smith. Top of your screen. And bottom of your screen, it's Adler and Cornwallier. Now here comes Grover Carl Gubitz and Brent Fikowski. Meets Spencer Panty because the only man still on the bag. Look at Brett Fikowski, right side of your screen, is actually lifting his heels up in between strokes, trying to shake out the legs. He's not bending at the waist very much. He's really just using his arms, knowing full well that those last 20 are going to be a quite an unpleasant experience, to say the least. Roman Krennikov has six calories remaining. He's on the right side of your screen in the leader's jersey. The leader, the overall leader, will always be in that white jersey and red shorts. And now Roman going back to the bag. Colton Mertens has the top time at 430.60 seconds. Krennikov right to work. And now Jeff Adler has moved up along with Dallin Pepper. So Adler and Pepper fighting for second. And now Gubitson and Chandler Smith, no rep for Roman Krennikov, continuing to work. They'll advance every five reps. Colton Merton's looking like he's going to hang on for a test win here. Krennikov now, final 10 reps. Dallin Pepper on the left. And Jeff Adler on the right, or towards the front, along with Chandler Smith. So Colt Mertens is going to get the win. And now Chandler Smith, top of your screen, moving up to challenge Roman Krennikov for first place in this heat. Watch out for Chandler. Chandler Smith looks like he has a faster pace, and it's Chandler Smith edging out Roman Krennikov. And that's Jeff Adler who got in as well ahead of Krennikov. And Bjorven Carl Gumanson is in. Gumanson. We'll take 15th in the test. Koski is across, and now Fikowski is fading. And remember how close it was between second and eighth. Only 31 points separated Brent Fikowski from Jeff Adler in eighth place. So once again, spots two through 10 may look extremely different than they did coming into this test. Well, the fifth place position, Dallin Pepper, who came out strong over in lane number three, has failed his last rep three times in a row. Now Sam Cornwallier tumbles across the finish line. Dallin Pepper has may not have gotten in, and he didn't. The Pepper and Spencer Panty get capped. Chandler Smith gets the heat win, 457.11 seconds. That'll be good enough for seventh place in the test. Colton Mertens is going to hang on for the win, and Justin Medeiros is going to take third. Roman came out strong on the ski. And the first 30 squats, no surprise there for Roman Krennikov. Looking around, seeing if anybody was getting close to him. Look to the left. He probably should have looked to the right. Because if you say, hey, this is a pretty nasty, intense test. Well, how about the wrestler? Huh? They like to roll in the mud a little bit. Chandler Smith working his way towards the podium like we have been waiting since he started competing in the games. First career test win for Colton Mertens. Sam Quant will take second. Justin Medeiros continuing to move up the overall standings. A third place finish for him. And Roman Krennikov, his first finish outside the top five, but he's ninth. He will hold on to the overall lead. Let's send it down to Mike Arsenault. Thank you very much, Sean Colton. Your first career uh, test win at the CrossFit Games and your third appearance in front of thousands of people here in the Coliseum. What does it feel like to capture 100 points for the first time? Um, it feels good. Hopefully it'll help me out on the leaderboard and stay above that cut line. 
Uh, I knew I could do pretty well in this event coming in. Been working a ton this offseason on just upper body pull and endurance in general. And I know my squats are the best that there is in this sport. So, um, yeah, just been out there, executed well, and pushed hard and got it done. Speaking of that cut line, in two of your previous appearances at the CrossFit Games, you unfortunately were cut. That position or that effort right there looks like it might keep you safe from the first one at least. How has your preparation changed this year compared to years past? Um, you know, really just more of the same. It's just finally coming together. Uh, started the year off with a autoimmune diagnosis in January and thought that, you know, my season or maybe my career might be over, but just put my head down, kept working. I'm not worried about the results and keep moving. Let the rough end drag. Congratulations, 100 points here on test number five. Thank you. Colt Mertens has to be happy with that first career test win. And looking to keep himself on the right side of the cut line. And that 100 points will certainly help that. And a fantastic story about Colt Mertens. And Mike Arsenault with the sandbag. Appreciate his effort. Great effort from the men. Mertens picks up his first test win. Justin Medeiros continues to creep up the overall standings. Women coming up next here as our coverage of day number two for the individuals continues at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
This is the guy right here that I told you about, <laughs> all right? This guy, when anyone walks in here and they tell me, I can't do this, I'm like, this is the guy. Go, go, talk, go talk to Henry. When I think of CrossFit, I think of Henry. And when we open these doors, that's the person that I wanted to serve. The day I walked into CrossFit Mentality, I could not air squat to a 45 pound plate on top of an 18 inch box. You could imagine what it was like for me to just get out of a chair, stand up. I remember him telling me that he hadn't climbed a ladder at work and he couldn't even remember when. And even going downstairs, he was holding on to the railing and going down sideways. At that time, I really thought that this is what getting older was, you know, and obviously I was very wrong. There you go. So instead of pulling right to here, I want you to think, try to pull a little bit higher across your chest. There you go. Let's get one more big pull. Nice. And relax. I think the most important thing when you have somebody that's walking into your gyms is you got to build the trust and you got to explain to them what your goal is. And when Henry came in, I told him, this is going to change your life, but you need to trust me and you need to show up. He happened to be in the lobby when I came in to basically sign up for my on-ramp and he just had a short 30 seconds with me, but he said something to me that I'll never forget. He was asking me how I feel and why I'm here and I told him I have some bad knees and maybe we could correct it. And he looked at me and said, you stick around here long enough and you probably won't need knee replacements and the man was correct focus today is going to be trying to improve our positioning on our squats. So what we really want to do is get the ankle nice and warmed up along with the hips and everything else. And then the more we can get this elbow down towards this toe, you can see that knee starting to track out. That's what's going to open that up for that overhead squat here today. Dude, you're clearing your feet so well now. Like that looks easy. That looks easy, bro. That looks easy. That's what I'm talking about. He's always got a smile on his face now. And I think he's just happier and hungrier than ever because once he started to see that progression happen, it was just, it was so life-changing. He's like, I want more. I want more. I want more. And he just kept investing and doubling down. Oh, now you're just showing off. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> nice, dude. All right, so look at the difference here now, all right? And then even on this next one, when you brought your hands overhead, that was... I didn't want to scab my nose. I mean... <laughs> when I came to Mentality, that just, it was like I jumped out of train and, and all that just changed. And every day was better. You know, I, I, all of a sudden I could do this and all of a sudden I could do that. One more set, last one. Getting to see the progress over five years of just nonstop work, showing up, not missing, and doing the things that he needs to do, and then getting to see how it changed his life. That, to me, is like winning the CrossFit Games. Cool. Well, that's all I got for you. Okay. Good job.
Day two of competition for the individuals rolls on here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin, as the women are set to take on test number five, Ski Bag. I'm Sean Woodland alongside the second place finisher in the 35 to 39 year old division here at the CrossFit Games, Stacey Tomar. Congratulations on that. And Nikki Brazer is down on the competition floor. Our overall leader is Alexis Raptus, and the name of the game here is consistency, and no one has been more consistent than Alexis. Four out of four, top five finishes. She's doing fantastic. Fifth on the rise, third in that pick chick fur, fifth in the inverted medley. And then we just saw it, fifth in that alpaca redo. Looking fantastic, love the hat too. That was a smart choice. Raptus sits atop the overall standings with 358 points. He's 45 points up on Emma Lawson. Laura Horvath moved up into a top three position after the alpaca earlier in the day. And it's Annie Thorostotter and Ariel Lowen rounding out the top five. 30-30, 20-20, four time. Here we go, 30 Cal Ski Erg, 30 Sandbag. Sandbag squats, 20 Kel ski erg, and 20 sandbag squats. 125 pound ba uh, sandbag there. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. What will you be looking for here? If you want to win test five, you must go unbroken. I'm not necessarily saying you gotta start sprinting this thing, but you gotta be a little bit smart on that ski erg. And then just nod to the squat gods. <laughs> Let the legs burn and just don't miss a rip. Let's get it down to Nikki Brazier on the competition floor. Thanks, Sean. Now at 125 pounds, this is not the heaviest sandbag that the women have ever lifted here at the CrossFit Games, but that's because the intent here is to incentivize the athletes to go unbroken. And one more twist for you. Once the sandbag is up on their shoulder, they will have to do their squats with only one arm supporting it. They cannot have two. 10 women on the floor here for this first of four heats. In lane number four, Carolyn Stanley comes in in 33rd place overall, looking to get inside the top 30 and stay alive after that first cut. Yeah, I got a chance to talk to her coach, Jarrett Smith, at a comp train. He said that of all the tests that were announced prior to the CrossFit game starting, she did test this workout and she's most looking forward to this test because she does love to squat. We do know that there is a 30 cal ski erg to start, but it's not necessarily where it's won. We saw the men just go. I would say if you're consistent, if you're a great squatter, Colton Mertens just proved that, you might want to take the take your eyes on Caroline there and uh, don't blink. She might take this, this test. 30 total calories to start here. And then it's onto that 125 pound, 56 kilo sandbag. Emily DeRoy is your leader halfway through that 30 calorie ski. DeRoy coming in in last place, 40th place overall. So she has this test and the next one. She's in lane number 10, left side of your screen to get inside that top 30. We're cutting the bottom 10 athletes at the end of the day, and we only have one test remaining after this. Yeah, big, long pulls on that ski erg. You can see a lot of the girls sending their hips and their butt back, not necessarily bending the legs. They want to save the, the legs for what's to come underneath those sandbags. Emily DeRoy will be the first woman off, and she will get to work on her 30 squats. Renan Enganez is there as well, along with Sarah Kaya. We'll schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free, now available across the U.S. Scan the QR code to get started. Lanes five and six are the two women who would be on the wrong side of the cut line. That's Manon Enganez and Sayer Kaya. And Sayer Kaya on the right side of your screen is your leader right now in this heat, along with Ella Wunye.
And there's Elahunye, who's our leader. 10 reps to go here. Now remember, as the athletes walk forward, they are allowed to bring that second hand on top of that sandbag, but as they're squatting, they must let go of one of those hands, find the balance, find the control. You don't really realize how much of your core, we all think leg, 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 that ski erg is arm, it's core, you're crunching with every single pull down. The balance, just to have one arm out on this uh, sandbag squat takes so much of that tree trunk of yours to keep yourself upright, heels firmly uh, rooted into the floor and back nice and upright as well. It's a challenge, it's a full body workout we're looking at here. Ella Bunye is the first woman to the skier for the second and final time. She's got 20 calories to complete here. And there's Kelly Baker who's going to join her now. So two women on the second and final ski at 20 calories. Ella Rubier right now is in 39th place overall. So she really needs a strong performance here and in the final test of the evening to continue on in the competition. You notice Kelly Baker there on the right side of your screen just kind of really using her lats to pull down on that ski erg, keeping the butt a little bit higher, not necessarily dropping into that squat. Emily DeRoy and Michelle Basnett are also on the ski as well. And now all but two women have completed their first set of 30 squats. Ella Wunger, though, down in lane one, getting back to work on our final set of 20. The six minute time cap here. Same as the men. So 15 reps remain for Ella Wunge at that 125 pound, 56 kilo bag. She advances every five repetitions. And Kelly Baker and Sayer Kaya are on their squats as well. Ella down there in lane one, she's kind of short. She's got a short amount of time left to get just a few reps in. She knows she's racing the clock, but darn, that's so uncomfortable knowing my legs are just completely gassed right now, and I only have a few short seconds to finish this work. Rune's gonna make it with about seven seconds to spare. 554.35 seconds for Ella Vunye as she's the only woman to complete that test inside the six minute time gap in heat number one. So Ella Vunye was your leader from the outset here and then really put a ton of distance between herself and the field when she got to the ski for the second time. It was that second ski. You could take, uh, you know, she just looked really calm and confident. She knew the pace she needed to set. She knew she had to race against the clock there at the end. And once you see that finish line in sight, you can give it a little bit more gas. 554.35 seconds, Ella Wunye in the top time with three heats remaining. Action continues here. Stay with us, everybody, at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games.
It is Friday at the CrossFit Games, and we have moved indoors inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center for the fifth test that the individuals will face here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar, and Nikki Brazier is down on the competition floor. Last night, we crowned champions in the age group divisions, and Stacey, you finished second overall. Congratulations in the 35 to 39 year old division. Thank you, Sean. That was so much fun to watch it re uh, play re uh, again. It's just, it brings back a lot of excitement. I am currently lobbying Adrian Bosman for one more test because I know you feel like you could make up that deficit. So I think we should just throw something together here. Get everybody back out and do a couple more. I was kind of hoping for one more test with just maybe a little bit more skill. Moderately heavy barbell would have been really good for me. You've competed as an individual and, and now competing as a master. What was the experience like? How did it compare? Oh, it was great. You know, I did leave my shoes behind in 2017. Just I'm a new person now. I'm a mom of two. I've, I own a gym. I'm a boss. Uh, I'm still a wife, uh, but I got a, I got a coach now every day. And yeah, it was the same experience, but different. Mm -hmm. Well, liked it. We are very uh, proud of you here on the uh, broadcast team. Congratulations on the uh, on the silver medal, and hopefully we'll see you back on top of the podium next year. Thank you. The business at hand is test number five, the second heat for the women in ski bag, and I think Chase had the best description of this. It's gross. <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the one out there doing it. Four time, 30 cal ski erg, 30 sandbag squats. Then they go to back to the ski erg for 20 more calories and finish with 20 sandbag squats. 125 pounds in that sandbag. 10 women will be on the floor here for the second of four heats. And in lanes one and two, two women who should have no trouble with that 125 pound bag, Amanda Barnhart and Ellie Turner. We are underway. Amanda Barnhart coming in in 29th place overall. So she has some work to do to stay on the right side of that cut line. Ellie Turner a little more safe in 27th overall, but looking to give herself some breathing room here in this test. Amanda Barnhart, though, games vet, been here for six years, college swimmer. So you know this upper body pull on this ski is Kind of in her wheelhouse. You see her taking a look over her shoulder already, kind of looking over at her neighbor next door. How's my pace? How many cows? She just has to stay in her lane. She's done this before. Yes, she may be in an unfamiliar location. We I do have a cut later this afternoon, but she knows what she needs to do. She's a strong squatter. Like I said, she's a college swim swimmer. So I think she has an advantage in this test for sure. Emma Carey is your leader through about 21 of those 30 calories. Barnhart in second, followed by Abigail Doman. And there is Emma Carey, who started off really well in the alpaca and then just ran into a wall on her second round of legless rope climbs. 25th overall, right side of the cut line, but like everyone else in this heat, Trying to give herself some, some headroom. So Amanda Barnhart is on to the sandbag. Unfortunately, though, that first rep, she didn't quite get the depth the judge was looking for, so she did get a costly no rep there. That's one of the recipes to success we kind of mentioned earlier on, you know. Don't worry about necessarily going out so hot on that ski, but darn it, you cannot afford to go underneath Another Sam Heck squat when you've already got 50 to look forward to in this test, number five. Emma Carey towards the top of your screen. She's out front. She's down the right side. She's your leader. Six-minute time cap here. Timing is presented by G-Shock, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. Emma Carey, though, you know, had a little fumble on that ride test, number one. Didn't seem to phase her. Came back fourth in the pig event. Didn't have the finish she wanted there in test four. Doesn't seem to phase her now. Keeping up with the crowd, uh, crew here. Doing what she needs to do. And Amanda Barnhart choosing to put the lifters on as opposed to the more traditional training shoes that Emma Carey is wearing. And it seems to be paying off right now for Amanda Barnhart who is in her final 
10 reps. Ellie Turner sits in third, followed by Paige Semenza and Sydney Wells. Emma Carey actually got an, a no rep. She thought she had finished her set of five, started moving forward. The judge called her back. And now look, she had to drop the head down in 25 sandbag, clean it back up, and get back to work. Paige Semenza has now moved herself into second place behind Amanda Barnhart. Barnhart and Semenza getting to the ski at the same time. And now Ellie Turner is about to join them. She's in the middle of those long black pants. And here comes Emma Carey. Yeah, they just got to settle into a comfortable pace here. Nothing too extravagant, nothing too fast. Nothing that's going to necessarily spike the heart rate. The heart's already beating fast enough. It's almost like a recovery. Let the legs get a little juice back. Use as much of that upper body pull as you possibly can. You can see Amanda Barnhart demonstrating this beautifully, using her entire upper body, not necessarily bending over, and using her legs. Amanda Barnhart has been to the CrossFit Games five times before this. Her career best finish came in both 2019 and 2020 when she finished seventh overall. Well, Emma Carey has now retaken the lead on the skier. Once she hits that 80 rep mark, she will move forward and Emma is done. Now 20 squats remain. The Ellie Turner and Amanda Barnhart look to be the next two off the ski, and there they are, dead even. And here comes Paige Semenza. The Turner with that bag, no problem on her shoulder. She will get to work first, and now with no rep, she had two hands on the bag. You only, can only have one. Ellie Turner now in the lead ahead of Emma Carey by about one rep. Here comes Amanda Barnhart advancing forward. The Turner with 10 reps remaining. 554.35 seconds is the time to beat. 30 to go before we hit the cap. Emma Carey, you know, kind of fumbled, grabbed her hold of her CM bag, thought about squatting, squatted a little bit too soon without releasing that hand. The judge gave her a no rep, and here we are again. She's got to drop that sandbag. The final three reps for Ellie Turner looking to set the new mark to beat, and here comes Amanda Barnhart into her final set of five. Turner's got one left. She will make it. She is in, but she will not beat Ella Runier's time. Barunye at 554.35 is still your top time. Ellie was four seconds off. <laughs> Ellie Turner, 27th place overall coming into this test. And now just one of two women who have finished this test in its entirety inside that six minute time cap. So this race really started, Stacy, here in the back half. Yeah, you got it. You know, Ellie didn't necessarily put, on, put the pedal on to the metal until she got to those sandbag squats, kind of coasted through the skier, caught her breath a little bit, picked it right up, got right to work, despite getting a no rep early on, felt the pressure of the clock there at the end, held on, you can see she is just so uncomfortable at this point, but managed to finish that Chris, uh, finish line. Well, Ellie Turner, her score says that she was capped. Her other time, though, the real time that should be on there is 558.87 seconds. She is inside the time cap. Everyone else did not make it, so now only two women have finished, and Ella Runier still has the top time at 554.35 seconds. Two heats remain in ski bag.
halfway through test number five for the women here on day number two of competition for them at the 2023 Noble Cross of Games. We are inside the confines of the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center. I'm Sean Woodland alongside the second fittest 35 to 39 year old woman on the planet, Stacey Tovar, and we got Nikki Brazier down on the competition floor. Ski bag is test number five and say goodbye to your legs. Holy cow, Sean, Chase said it best. It's gross. Six minute time cap on this thing. 30 cal ski erg, 30 sandbag squats, 20 cal ski erg, 20 sandbag squats, 125 pound sandbag. You've watched a couple of heats. Does that change at all the recipe for success delivered by Trifecta? <laughs> you know, things don't change. However, <laughs> I still don't want to do this thing. Test number five is all about going unbroken. If you want to win this thing, you cannot afford to drop that sandbag, nor do your legs want you to do that as well. And just nod to the squat gods, guys. You know, sell your soul to the squats. Ten women on the floor for heat three of four here, and it's Gabby Magawa in lane number six, 12th place overall, looking to crack the top ten with a strong effort here. Yeah, she needs this here. She does enjoy pulling gymnastics movements, so maybe she'll take a crack at the skier here, give it a little ride. And she loves the barbell, so any any chick that loves the barbell knows that we love the we love the squat. So she should have no problem with this test. However, it's not one on this ski. Down in lane number one is Olivia Kerstetter, making her first individual appearance here at the CrossFit Game, former teenage champion, and right now. 19th place overall. She is her youngest competitor in this field at 17 years old. What I love about her the most is that her entire family does CrossFit. Mom, dad, even a sister that is also a, a competitor herself. And she admits she loves the machine. So she's strong too. Catherine David's daughter is your leader right now in the heat. She's also looking to work her way into the top 10, a former two-time CrossFit Games champion. 14th place overall, 200 points for Catherine. Now, prior heats, Catherine uh, at about the 20 rep count. They were a little over a minute, and she was already at minute three on the clock and had about 24 cows there on her ski so she's well above the the previous heat's pace and david's daughter is now done and she will be the first woman to that 125 pounds 56 kilo bag you know this isn't the normal size of a sandbag we see you know the men had a 200 pound sandbag and when we bring a 125 pound sandbag into the situation we usually would expect 185 pounds for the men However, director of the Noble CrossFit Games, Adrian Bosman, wanted to incentivize the women with 125 pound sandbag to go unbroken. And we saw it in both the two heats prior to this that it's still heavy. They were dropping it in between these sets of five squats. Catherine Davis' daughter is still your leader. Olivia Kerstetter was the second woman to the sandbag. She's at the far end of the floor as Davis' daughter I'm, has 15 left. Sean, I, sorry about that. I'm impressed with Catherine's squats here. She's normally not a squattier type of girl. The machine, no problem. We know that girl can, can pull, and she's got an engine on her. But she looked good on these squats here. Solid stance, feet firmly planted into the floor. Looks comfortable. I hate to say that, but she looks comfortable. The first note rep that we see from Davis out on the right side, Olivia Kerstetter is on the left alongside Karin Freyova. Danielle Brandon just dumped the bag. She's there in the middle of, in the all blue. Another no rep for David's daughter. Only two women have completed this test inside the six minute time cap, Ella Gounier and Ellie Turner. And they did it with only six seconds to spare. And here's the deal. We're almost at the halfway point and there's a six minute time cap on this workout. I can feel the pressure of that. David's daughter back to the ski for 20 more calories. And as a former champ, when you hear you're in the lead, the momentum only carries forward. She can feel that. You you roll off that, you know? It's like, yeah, let's go. This is my jam. I'm in the groove now. Bring it. Well, Olivia Kerstetter sits in second. Now here comes Gabby McGowan to the ski. She'll be in third. Karin Fraova is there as well. So it's four women now 
on their second and final ski. 20 calories at the 80 rep mark. That's when Catherine David's daughter will get to her second set of squats. Now, the previous two ta uh, heats have shown that they need at least about 90 seconds to get through those last 20 squats. So we're racing the clock here pretty soon. The David's daughter cranking away on that thing, and now five calories to go for her. She's opening up a lead on Kerstetter, Magawa, and Freyova. Paige Powers will be the next woman there, along with Rebecca Vittison. Vittison, bottom of your screen as David's daughter moves up to the sandbag. 20 more squats, she'll advance every five reps. 554.35 seconds is the top time from Ella Runier, and now another no rep for David's daughter to start things off. She chose the same shoulder. That must have been feeling good for her on those first set of 30. At this point, it's like whatever's comfortable, just kind of go with. Olivia Kerr at her top of your screen. She's onto the bag as well. She caught ground on those first set of 30. Olivia did there down in lane one. So we'll see if Katrin, you know, holds steady here. Another no rep. She cannot afford any more no reps. And Gabby McGowan and Karin Freyova are now getting set to start their final sets. And Olivia Kersetter is starting to creep up. And Katrin had a drop down there. And, and this crowd is letting her know, you have got to pick this thing up. Ten reps to go for David's daughter. Olivia Kersetter, left side of your screen, now at the top, has pulled even with David's daughter. She slowed that second ski erg up on that second set of 20 calories. And keep an eye on Gabby Magawa there in the middle in the all black. She's moving pretty well right now as well. Magawa just five reps behind Kerstetter and David's on it now. Kerstetter has the lead. Final five reps for Olivia Kerstetter. Final five reps for Katrin David's daughter. Olivia's looking strong there. Two more reps to go. Katrin's fobbling a little bit. You can see the sandbag and now moving the second on her hand came up. That was the no rep Here for Kerstetter. David's daughter drops it again. Kerstetter is going to get in, and she has your new top time. Gabby Magawa is now even with David's daughter with five seconds remaining. And that will do it. So Olivia Kerstetter, the only woman in this heat to finish, and she has your top time at 550.91 seconds. I'm so happy for her. Her family is right behind her in that, in that lane one. High fives all around, hugs and love. Looking good. One heat remains, and we'll see if that time stands for Olivia Kerstin. But Catherine Davis' daughter shot out of a cannon, but late she faded as she struggled with that bag. I think she might have came out a little too hot, but who's to say? She, maybe she was trying to make up ground and play to her strengths. She, Olivia came from behind. Kind of went a little bit more steady pace on that second set of 20, and that's where she eventually pulled away. And David Sutter had to drop the bag twice on that final set. Olivia Kerstetter was able to get through her final five reps, and now she has the top time at 5 minutes 50.91 seconds. Catherine David Sutter and Gabby McGowan and Connie Freyova will all tie. They were three reps shy of completing the test, and Danielle Brandon, 12 reps shy. We'll be back with the final heat in ski bag.
One heat remains for the women in test number five. As day two of competition for the individuals continues here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. Glad you're with us, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland with Stacey Tovar, and Nikki Grazer is down on the competition floor. Consistency is the name of the game of the CrossFit Games, and no one has been more consistent than Alexis Raptis. She's four for four, and top five finishes, Sean. Fifth on the ride, third in the pig chipper, fifth in the inverted medley, and fifth in Alpaca Redo this morning. And as a result, Alexis Raptis is your overall leader hanging on to the white jersey with 358 points. Emma Lawson is 45 points back of her and Laurel Horvath rounding out the top three, but only seven points up on the former two-time champ, Annie Thorosauter. Ariel Lowen is only 10 points back, so it is still very tight in spots three through 10. Ski bag, and it's gross. <laughs> it's gross. 30-30, Cal, Ski Erg, Sandbag Squat. 20 Cal, Ski Erg, 20 Sandbag Squat. Six minute time cap, 125 pound Sandbag. Recipe for success is delivered by Trifecta. If you wanna win, you have got to go unbroken and not, not to the squat gods, sell your soul to the squat. 10 women on this floor for this uh, final heat. Annie Thorsdotter, the former two-time champion, the only woman to compete in three different decades at the CrossFit Games. It's within striking distance for a spot on the podium. And for more on her, let's send it down to Nikki Brazier. It is no surprise to see Annie coming into this test in that fourth place spot. She has more experience than any other competitor out here. 13 appearances at the CrossFit Games. And when I asked her what makes this one special, she said having her family here, especially her daughter, cheering her on in the crowd. An inspiration to all athletes, but especially us mamas. There is Alexis Raptis, your overall leader after four <laughs> tests, three fifths and a third. 24 years old. The team division started in 2015, and that's when this individual woman started. Only, pardon me, Stacey, only three women have finished this test inside the six minute time cap. Olivia Kerstetter has the top time at 550.91 seconds. Now these athletes cannot see. They're corralled when the prior heat is already out on the floor. So they don't really know what unfolds. They don't know the paces that were held and the strategy that, we, with, that was used in the previous heat. Now you've had that experience. Have. What's that like with being down there, knowing that competition is going on and that your turn is coming up? How do you manage those nerves? Well, you don't. <laughs> you kind of just rely on knowing yourself and, and knowing what's best for you. If I were to be out on this floor doing this workout, I'd probably ease into the ski erg a little bit. And I and knowing that I have 50 stand-back squats to complete, and knowing that there's been some no reps and hearing about the chatter, you do hear the noise underneath the stadium there while you're warming up. I'd be like, okay, I just need to like stay with the pace, consistent pace, not necessarily sprint, but just stay steady on the ski and sell my soul to the squats. Laura Horvath is the first woman to the squats, and here comes Annie Thorsauter, now Emma Tall on the right side of your screen. So 30 squats here, 125 pounds, 56 kilos. They will advance every five reps. The leader's name will be on the far left side of the scoring hat on the top of your screen, and the number in the white box will indicate how many repetitions that woman has completed. The number in the white box next to all the other women's names will indicate how many reps by which they trail the leader in the heat. Now you might just think squat because we've been talking about the legs and blowing up the legs and selling your soul to the squats, but you do not realize how much of your core you are using when you are doing a sandbag squat. You're staying upright. You're balancing that thing on one shoulder. You're firmly planting your feet into the floor. There's a lot of accuracy and precision going on there that it's not necessarily just involving the quads. Final five reps here for Laura Horvath. You can schedule a no-cost 15-minute evaluation to find out if a Rosti treatment is right for you. Get pain-free, now available across the U.S. 
Scan the QR code to get started. And Laura Horvath's going to get started on her 20 calories on the ski here. And she is way ahead of the lead pace. Olivia Kerstetter in the top time again at 550.91 seconds. And Laura Horvath is running away with this heat right now. Sean, I said it in the previous heat. We need about 90 seconds to get through those last squat, 20 squats. We were at 3 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock when they were all on their 20 cal ski. So she's well ahead of the pace right now. And knowing Laura as an athlete, like this is what athletes look forward to is hearing their name on the loudspeaker, getting pumped up, knowing that they are in the lead and just riding with that momentum. Alex Gazan on the right side of your screen on the ski. She has moved into second place. And those are the only two women on this portion of the test as we are more than halfway through the allotted time here. Six minute time cap. Our leader there struggling to get the stand back even to her shoulder. And now Laura Horvath getting the crowd behind her. And she is looking to put up a dominant performance here. Annie Thoris daughter moving to the ski. You just saw her at the very bottom of your screen. Emma Lawson is there as well. Now, Laura Horvath came in in third place overall. She's only 14 points back of Emma Lawson for second, and she is well ahead of Emma right now in this heat. Laura is so ridiculously strong that it is no surprise that this 125-pound sandbag is being handled the way that it is right now. Horvath looking for her eighth career win at the CrossFit Games. And she is absolutely demolishing this. She has five reps to go. And this is not fair. Laura Horvath is going to win Ski Bag, pick up 100 points and looks to move even closer to the top of the overall standings. Alexis Raptus is towards the back here in this heat. Laura Horvath only has to make up 59 points on Raptus to overtake her for the overall lead. So we'll keep an eye on that as this heat continues to play out. Now one minute to go before we hit the six minute time cap. Leader on the floor is Alex Kazan. As she moves forward, with 10 reps second, left. That is the second time she had to drop that sandbag in these last 20 squats, Sean. She's got 45 seconds. She can feel the heat. She knows exactly where she's at. She just has to stay calm, get back in the groove of things, find the balance, find the control. Well, Alex Gazan now with 30 seconds to go to get inside that six minute time cap. She's got five reps left. I talked to her coach, Justin Kotler. They've been working on what's been taking place between the ears this offseason. This will be a huge confidence builder for her if she can finish before the cap. It looks like she's going to solidify that. Gazan is in, and that her. should be good enough for second place in the test. It was close. But 550.32 is going to be six tenths of a fat second faster than Olivia Kerstetter. So only two women finish. And if you blinked, you probably missed Laura Horvath as she just dusts that test. Four minutes, 36.18 seconds. And Alex, Alexis Raptus is going to be towards the back here. Right now, she's listed as finishing 37th in the test. And that means Laura Horvath might might be in the overall lead heading into the final test of the day. It was Annie Thor's daughter who came out on that ski erg with a blazing pace, getting to the squats first. But this is where Laura pulled away. I kind of told you, once she hears her name on that loudspeaker, she just rolls with the momentum. She handled this 125 sand pound sandbag like it weighed 105. For real, Sean. Oh, it just fires me up. But think back to the pig shipper. I don't know if she's getting misloaded implements because she is making those things look like there's nothing in them. 436.18 seconds, the only woman to go sub five. Alex Kazan, Olivia Kerstetter, Ella Vunye, and Ellie Turner, the only other women to finish inside the six minute time cap. But let's go down to Nikki Brazier with your test winner. Laura, in a test where we saw so many women unable to finish, you were laughing, you were hyping up the crowd. What got you so fired up about this test? Just this test to do it in the Coliseum in front of everyone. 
It was amazing. This was definitely a wheelhouse test for you. What is it about these movements that allowed you to get to the finish line so quickly? I love moving heavy things from A to B, and this was all about that. So I was just excited when it announced. You are a seasoned veteran at this point. What are your specific goals, your personal goals for this season? This year, my goal is to win the CrossFit Games. You have support here from the crowd. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. You're awesome. Laura Horvath is going to get one big step closer to accomplishing that goal. A test win here for the woman from Hungary. And she looks to put herself atop the overall standings with one test remaining here on day number two. Team action is coming up next here, so stay with us, everybody, as our coverage continues at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. The 2023 Noble CrossFit Games are presented by Noble, the official footwear and apparel brand of CrossFit. GoWide, the mobility app designed for athletes. G-Shop, challenge your limits, the official watch of the Noble CrossFit Games. The U.S. Army, be all you can be. For more information, visit GoArmy.com. And Trifecta, eat like you train.
these athletes are working against their peers at the CrossFit Games, they know that they're also testing or working out against or doing an event next to the fittest in the world. The CrossFit Games are the greatest, biggest stage of fitness where we find the best, most well-rounded athletes on the planet. The cool thing about the CrossFit Games is that you never know exactly what the test is going to be. So we literally test things from long to short to medium, uh, from heavy to light to no weight to odd object to traditional objects to things you may have prepared for or things you may not have prepared for. And that's literally what it is. It's a test of all of your years worth of work. I think it exposes a lot of people and, and the fittest are prepared for every element they're exposed to and the games test that. It's also a festival. It's also a great time to come and see other people engaging in a lifestyle that is supporting, embracing challenge. It's a showcase for what CrossFit does. 15 years ago, you had people that were strong or people that were fast or people that could swim. You had people that were good at the things they did, O courses, whatever they were good at and they showed up the environment and you could very quickly see like, oh yeah, that's what that person's good at, but they can't do all this other stuff. And so then the world for 15 years has been doing CrossFit, it's constantly very functional, it's executed the high intensity, this thing that's just so amazing and so beautiful, but also so simple. Everybody in the room is interested in everybody else getting better. Everybody in the room is interested in, hey, it's challenging, but that's a good thing. And that's the, that's the philosophy that the community embraces. Hey, challenge is worth pursuing. Hey, it's gonna make you better. Hey, I don't know if I can do it, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, and that's the CrossFit Games. I've always been anxious about stuff um, and it really came back with a vengeance just after my father died back in 2012. He was, a, he was a great big character and very funny and everything like that and to lose someone like that leaves a gap in your life obviously and it's not just me but everybody. He was not engaged with the world as much as he could be I would say. He was generally sluggish, he wanted to sleep a lot and he wasn't actually enjoying life. Mental health in particular is a massive side effect of not being healthy. If you're not healthy, the brain's not going to perform particularly well for you. It's not going to give, it, give you its best. So I was aware that fitness is a thing, it's just that I've avoided it like the plague for a very, very long time. But I knew that if you got the body moving and got a bit puffed out and moved more, you will enjoy the results. And that's when I started to explore the idea of taking some exercise. So first time I met John, he had never done any gym work in, I think it was like 20 or 30 years. I don't think he knew what the gym was about. It was a CrossFit gym, but I didn't know what CrossFit was, never heard of it. And I thought, I can't just turn up and walk through the door, that's, that's gonna be a bit scary. So I thought, well, maybe I start a conversation. Sent a note to Glenn saying, I'm in my 50s, I'm desperately unfit. I don't know what to do, how can you help? So we come over, we, we had a chat, and the idea was to start off with, we was just gonna be one-to-one -to, -one to warm him up to see if he would like to come and try a class. And John knees out, hips extended all the way at the top. I wanted somebody to, to encourage me, to cajole me, to push me a little bit. That's it. But wait for it to get to the shoulder before you come back down. That's it. From there, we had five or six more sessions, put him onto a class, He's such a people person, he gelled with everyone. Well done, John. Big John. Glenn worked with John, obviously, intensely at the start when he went to CrossFit, and he's shown him that no matter what age you are, no matter how fit or unfit you are, physically and mentally, you can do it. Getting fit is, is you know, you just don't do a workout and you feel fit. It's a process. What I found was, suddenly, about after a month, I thought, I'm not tired in the afternoons anymore. I wasn't like that a year ago. John's just improved so much. It's great to think that we've had a, a bit to play in that. 
CrossFit is an essential part of, of, of my life now. I can't imagine life without it. If I'd known the benefits of getting fitter and, and doing CrossFit and stuff like that, I would have started decades ago. <laughs>
2023 Noble CrossFit Games here at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, Wisconsin. We are back inside the Coliseum for team competition and our final test of day number two. Alongside former CrossFit Games teams athlete, Jamie Hagia, Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith down on the floor. My name is Joel Godet. Glad to have you along with us as we take a look at some gymnastics and monostructural movements after four tests have left us with CrossFit Invictus, winning 367 out of a possible 400 points. Pretty comfortable lead, not insurmountable by any fact, but pretty comfortable lead over Oslo Navy Blue and East Nashville Proven, the favorites coming in. Bike, row, and hold, Jeremy Austin. That's what we stand in front of. Absolutely, and if you think about power and output and gymnastics prowess, this has got both of those 150 calories on the Echo Bike Wall one of your team members does a handstand hold move on to the row for 125 and the seated muscle up to ring support and finally another 100 cal echo bike back into that handstand hold with a 16 minute time cap recipe jamie for success all about placement of your athletes oh the smart placing is going to be with this force rotation you want to pair your most powerful athlete with the person who can hold the longest and also no pacing it's no secret this is an all-out sprint interval Nine teams here in this opening heat. Lane one will be open. We are cutting at the conclusion of today's competition. So the teams in the middle of the floor, lanes five, six, and seven are the ones to watch. That is the cut line right now, 30 and 31. Oslo Nice on top of Coda Redemption. The Rhino Dogs from Las Vegas trying to make that jump out of 32nd place as well. And we are underway. The trickiness of this event, of this test, is the fact that you can only move the bike while your partner is holding the gymnastics movement. So watch the rabbits go to work here. I, just right off the bat, you see the speed, the intensity, the sense of urgency on the bikes these men are moving. Well, you think about power output, and your athletes are standing there in a handstand position. You need to get as much bang for buck as you can. Oh, that's interesting. How about the Rhino Dogs switching with the bike first? When Ethan Helbig was done biking, he called for Rafe Duran. And if you have a skilled enough team like this, you can go for a set amount of calories. Most of these teams will be going with whenever they come down. But if you are skilled enough, you're definitely making a set amount of calories. Jamie, I don't know about you, but I don't want to spend any longer on the Echo Bike as humanly possible so these athletes need to get on and get the work done if you've got a little bit more in the tank you've got to bank on the fact that your other athlete can hold that handstand position and you see them they rotate to the back so there are two rest stations you're going to rest once and then twice before you go to that handstand hold and get back to that bike Power your performance with Momentus. You can enter to win the ultimate prize pack at livemomentus.com. Livemomentus.com slash CrossFit. Glad to have Momentus on board in their first year as a partner here at the CrossFit Games. Jamie, you talked about strategy for these teams and where you place your various athletes. Oslo Nice, right on that cut line. Their first two athletes, men. They went to men first as opposed to alternating genders. Because there is no set order of male, female, male, female, if your best handstand hold support uh, person is going to be a male, you're going to pair them with your power output athlete. So that's why they had their two males out. Of. Really critical piece we saw just there. Your hand cannot leave the white. If a finger touches the blue, the rep is over. And that's a great catch and a great call there to force the rotation. Talk about CrossFit and the 10 general physical skills of CrossFit. This has got a few key components. <laughs> one being balance, one's being power, and the other speed. You add a little bit of stamina in there as well if you can stay on the bike any longer. But having it three to four of those components out of 10 in one specific test here at the CrossFit Games, these athletes are going to be tested all the way to this 16 minute mark. You're looking at CrossFit fly high, bottom of your screen. Kolesnikov team at last year's games. Alexander Plyushkin is moving that bike. One of the strongest athletes for Kolesnikov as well. And strength, very adaptable to power output. 
and fatigue levels are going to be important here Jamie and I know you've done a lot of team stuff in individual competition as well but getting the balance right is the tricky bit and the interesting thing here about teams is, yes, this is a team test, but really it is down to these individuals. Every single person needs to be able to hold a handstand support. Every single person needs to ride as hard as they can on those bikes. And you see the various forms. Everyone, some people have straight legs, some people have bent knees. It's kind of whatever they're able to hold that handstand support the best. Carlos Alabadejo here, the owner of CrossFit Marvel. He is half South Korean, half Puerto Rican, comes from a military family, grew up in South Korea, and he is forced to switch here once Mi Jung Choi comes down from her handstand hold. So Marvel rotating again, and it's interesting. You saw the first athlete when this test began hammering the bike, and now we've we're moving, but we've settled into a bit more of a pace. We have, and you could probably do a little bit of a deal with your team members and go, hey, if you don't hold your handstand very long, I won't spend very long on the bike, and that might pay off a little bit later on. If you want to get that athlete, when the stages are later towards that 150 calories. Athletes ticking over the 100 calorie mark already, so 50 remaining. We've got Coda. Excuse me, Rhino done first in 424. Coda is at 147, and now they are done in four minutes and 30 seconds. The next closest team is Cape CrossFit at 114. And that's actually Cape CrossFit that is now advanced as well with the sisters Finkel on the rower. And now you add in the ring support element of this as opposed to the handstand. And probably an easier component opposed to the echo bike which is the row which you can settle into and row pretty well and try to recover a little bit if possible your partner behind you however working twice as hard if not harder on that muscle up to ring support from the seated position tough one the seated position we're normally used to seeing a kip which is going to help assist you up into that muscle up but from a seated position you'll notice a lot of these athletes in a false grip that's going to help them in that transition over the top but this is not an easy hold you see there in the back he's a little bit you know you want to make sure everything's stacked over those rings and he's talking to his teammate. Communication is gonna be huge here. Taking a look at Brittany Morella on the rower for the CrossFit Rhino Dogs. It's an East Coast team, but they're based out of Las Vegas. Morella and Middleton, the women are from Connecticut. Ethan Helbig owns an affiliate in Pennsylvania. But they reached out to Justin Kotler and the Underdogs Athletics Squad. Morella and Middleton did and said, hey, we want a team, do you have two guys? And Raf Durand, was the one in Vegas that helped put this team together. Now in the mix against the Oklahomans from Coda. We got two teams here fighting at that cut line. Jamie, you did mention it. You can hold that position of support with bent elbow, but you obviously are going to fatigue a lot more and a lot faster. Having everything stacked underneath, wrist on elbow, on shoulder, keeping those rings in very tight to your hips, it's gonna be an optimal position. And if you have never tried this at home, they don't have to be on rings. You can grab two chairs, trying to hold yourself up in this position. It is quite difficult. On the first half of this test, you had athletes averaging about a 30 second handstand hold. Are you gonna be on the ring support longer or shorter than that? If it was me, I'd be on that ring support for about three minutes that's my jam oh Hand, handstand not so much so what do you, so you can, if you can hold that for that long what are you thinking about what are the things that help you out the most when you're in the ring support? just trying to recover now you've just been hitting a difficult position upside down you're getting on the echo bike so the heart rate and breathing is getting up fairly high but trying as i mentioned before about pulling those rings into your hip and getting your lats the big muscle groups at the upper back, trying to activate those as much as you can to pull the rings in to make it a little bit easier. The more bent your arms get and the wider those rings get away from your hips, the things are gonna get just a lot more difficult. Brady Finkel, the eldest of the three Finkel sisters, two of them on this Cape CrossFit team, is pulling the chain off that C2 rower. Quick rotation to Michael Van Tonder. And you could see Interesting wrinkle here. Van Tonder looked at his judge to say, when can I start? Because you cannot see your teammate in the gymnastic support. You just have to blindly row, not knowing if they're struggling. Echo bike, you get on, you rip the handles off it because you've just got to go with the rowing. 
it's better to get into a bit of a rhythm. The problem is your athlete behind you is not holding the ring position long enough for you to get into a good rhythm. That's going to make it difficult. As CrossFit coaches, they like to tell you to settle in and the tempo of your pull on that rower, right? You want to keep your heart rate down. But here, you are you have got to move. We talked about it in the recipes for success. This is an all-out sprint intervals on the bike and the rowers. And you see the pain on their face. 125 is the target for these teams on this rower. Tim Helbig told us everybody always talks about it. He and Raph Durand are hockey goalies. They got big old legs. They should be able to drive this rower with their lower bodies. But their legs are heavier, so they're going to have to support them a lot harder when they get to the rings. If you look at the programming for the last two tests, we had our Olympic lifting earlier on today at North Park, and now we move on to the monostructural aspect, but also the gymnastics element. So great balance in the last two tests, and which teams are going to be better off, we'll find out in a little while. Well, Coda is the first team to the bike. The Rhino Dogs are second. Coda in the middle of your screen in lane five. We talked to their captain, Kevin Schutz, coming in, and I said, what's the redemption mean in your team? Their team name is Coda CrossFit Redemption. They're a conglomerate of various Coda teams. Coda has six affiliates. Let's take a look at Cape CrossFit moving through in lane three now as well. The bike absolutely driving here for Coda. The idea of redemption is making up for a team that was disqualified last year because of a positive test. One team that fell just short because of a, a crash at semifinals. Kevin Schutz, who fell just short of an individual game's appearance back in 2016. You've got a push here on the cut line. Coda is eight points out of advancing to tomorrow. And at this point, you know the only thing standing behind between you and that red platform that you want to get on is that bike. So you are hammering this out as fast as you can. Coda leading the way. The Rhino Dogs in second. Both those teams going female, female, male, male for their sequencing here. Joel, I'm loving the speed. The athletes are attacking the second echo block. We saw it at the start when the athletes went out hot and then settled into a bit of a rhythm, and now they've got nothing to hold back for. 100 calories left on this third element. The fatigue is going to creep in quick. Is your goal 25 cows a person on this? Me, no. Jamie, probably yes. Oh, no. I hate the bike. <laughs> That bike is a nasty, <laughs> nasty effort. You know, it's interesting on that note. You would have thought the gymnastics portion of this would have been the limiter, that people would have been falling down to stop bike rides and rowing. It's not been the case. It's been truly setting calorie targets. The gymnastics has just been an inhibitance. Now, you did mention 25 calories. That's probably a really good number for the males to hit. Females are going to fatigue a little bit more. So maybe that 15 to 20 mark is a more realistic target and maybe shortening up the handstand hold time frame upside down. Oh, look at Helbig. <laughs> Helbig. <laughs> those are those hockey legs right there. Right side of your screen. <laughs> so good. Coda's got to catch up because the Rhino Dogs are trying to finish strong. Helbig just switching off with Raf Durand, who is also now going full Tim Paulson. But Jamie, probably an important factor, you get off that bike, you come back to position, your recovery time, you need to settle yourself really quick, heart rate down, breathing under control. When you spike your heart rate like that, you see these athletes coming to the back of that line of the rotation just absolutely exhausted. But they know that as soon as that rotation comes up, they're going to be ready to go. Oh. And here come the Rhino Dogs. 13 points out of making the cut line. Las Vegas has arrived and is trying to make it to the weekend. Coda right behind them. Both teams knew the assignment. A 
and you see the sense of urgency and how excited they are to get up on that platform, hopefully keep their CrossFit Games alive. Oslo Nice is the last team in right now, and Nice is going to be the next team to finish. So the third team out of the CrossFit Oslo affiliate also finished. Go figure. Three teams coming into this all knowing that they need to hit a home run to make it to the weekend. And all of them hitting the ball 415 feet to dead center. But if you're going to lay down the gauntlet, do it in the first heat. Let everyone chase you down. And those important cuts coming at the end of the fourth heat. There is that cut line. Nice is the last team in. Coda just behind by eight points, 13 points, the difference for Rhino. They'll make up a little bit of difference here with that first place finish, at least in this heat. We'll see how things hold. Coda behind them, Oslo Nice in third with three heats still to go. But of course, this positioning is locked in for those teams. They're gonna finish ahead of one another. Cap is 16 minutes. Move that bike, CrossFit Rotherham. That's the absolute after effects for CrossFit Marvel. We've got a cramp. And if you have never sprinted on a, a bike, jump on, you will know exactly how these athletes are feeling. Min Sun Kim, absolute worst for wear. Q21, also near the cut line right now, 18 points behind 30th place. CrossFit AB, they right now are four points in and safe, although that's a problem. They're giving up too many points. AB might be in danger. Inside a minute to go here in this opening heat. Rhino dogs are cheering on, fly high in lane 10. It's easy to encourage the pain when your suffering is over. It's always nice to be up there and be done with the test. 20 seconds. AB switching out in the middle of the field. Q21 finishes. But again, I don't know if that's going to be enough to jump them up the leaderboard the way they need to. With three seconds left, AB does get across. So the team out of Florida does finish the test. The question is whether or not they went above and beyond enough to make it through to Saturday. They're safe right now. Take a look back. Athletes having to rotate, sometimes forced, sometimes strategically. But tight race for the first portion, the 150 calories. Rhino Dogs getting a good lead. Coda moving forward, but the Rhino Dogs able to withstand some pain on the faces as the final reps count down. The Rhino Dogs tick off with a heat win. Test two, excuse me, heat two, test five. We are cutting at the end of this competition, heading into the weekend here at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. You are looking inside the Coliseum at the Alliant Energy Center alongside Jeremy Austin, Jamie Hagia, Lauren Smith, Joel Gadet, and the rest of our fantastic crew here all week with you in Madison, Wisconsin. CrossFit Invictus, they don't like the color bronze. They finished third last year, right now in first. 
Good lead over Oslo Navy Blue, who was in second each of the last two seasons. We'll see those teams on that graphic coming up in a couple of heats. They'll be conquering this challenge, Jeremy Austin. Tough day so far. This is test number five, 150 calories on the Echo Bike, while a member of the team does a handstand hold, moving on to the 125 calorie row for a seated muscle-up ring support. And then finally, the 100 calorie Echo Bike handstand hold to finish things off, 16 minute time cap. Placing your athletes wherever you like, but you must stay in that order for the entire test. Recipe for Success is presented by Trifecta, Jamie. This is all about smart placing. So with a force rotation, every time someone comes down from their ring or handstand support, you need to make sure that your power output athlete is paired with your best and longest person who can stand up there on those rings and handstand uh, support. And also, no pacing. This is an all-out sprint. Some teams that don't want to be in this position here in this second heat, CrossFit Omnia, had real high hopes after putting up the most points in the North American West semifinal. Did not win by way of a tie, but they are in lane six as we get underway. TTT CrossFit training think tank, they're back at this after they had an issue needing medical attention out on the 5K for Hannah Hardy. We did see that out there, and it was, we, didn't, we weren't exactly sure what was happening, but it is great to see her out here. She competed at the CrossFit Games in 2021, so she has the experience. She knows what it's like to be fatigued and come back out here and, be this, and do well in this next. This test is brought to us by Momentus, and with that, we go down to Lauren Smith. Cheers, Joel. As you said, I'm joined by Jeff Byers. He is the CEO and co-founder of one of CrossFit's brand new partnerships this year. And you're also a former pro NFL player, 22 appearances for the Carolina Panthers. How has your experience of elite sport played into the best of this partnership? Yeah, really when we formed Momentus, it was really about trying to find a gap that I found when I retired from the NFL and fill uh, with the Momentus, uh, with Momentus going forward. So the products we built were really based upon the experience that I had in the NFL, the experts we work with, et cetera. So we're really excited to bring, right, the 200 pro and college sports teams we work with and the quality of those products to the CrossFit the community. It's very important to us to bring that high quality to this community. Speaking of the community, I heard you're out on the community 5K earlier today. How did that go and how excited are you to integrate into this sport even further? I mean, I think everything we do is about community and our mission is to democratize high performance. And if you're not involved in the community, you can't do anything. So whether it's work in the booth, run the 5K, it was hot, it was fun. I got to run it with some of the people from the US Army, which was even more fun and rewarding. So it was amazing. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. It was great to meet you and enjoy the rest of the competition. Yeah, thank you. Lauren, thank you as we continue here through the second heat. In the first heat, Jamie and Jeremy, you saw the most successful teams that finished at the front go same gendered pairs, guy, guy, girl, girl, or girl, girl, guy, guy, as opposed to alternating. Jamie, you talked about the importance of your order here. What does that tell you? We actually did see a little mix of both. Some of these women were holding that handstand hold first, but it just really depends on who is your best handstand support holder. Torian may have one of those teams. Christy Hollard moving now onto the bike. Great gymnast. Great last year as part of Team CrossFit EXF in the gymnastics component of the test here in the Coliseum. And a male, male, female, female component of that team coming through. And Brandon Swan now doing that full rotation and getting back to the bike. We are 144 in. The Rhino Dogs have the time to beat from the first heat, 12.33 overall got off this first bike at the 424 mark. Look at the absolute guts going on right now for the Invictus Sea of Green. Laz Stallwood got wound up and let go. That hair whip is really help propelling her to get a couple more calories, I would think. Uh, it's interesting going from a very high skill technical hold to the bike. There is no thinking, there's just doing and all 100% go. We're talking to Lalo Torres. Before competition started, he said, La Stallwood is the person that makes us go. She's hair on fire, complete firebrand energy. We never understand what she says, but she is the one that pushes us. Oh, mercy. Let's go down to Lauren. So I spoke to Hannah Hardy back in the warm-up area. She said she doesn't remember anything after lap one of that 5K. She came to in an ice bath surrounded by medical staff 
and she was carried by her team all the way around that run. She did say that she's been checked out. She started to feel normal about 30 minutes ago. She's had some food. Had she been in the first heat, she doesn't think she would have made it, but she's ready to go now. Hannah Hardy is the captain of this training think tank team and has been to the CrossFit Games before back in 2021. She knows how to battle through some things. She is the absolute unquestioned leader, has moved around for med school and tackled CrossFit elite training at a high level, academia at a high level. Good to see her back out there. She also had mentioned that, you know, CrossFit had really helped her with an eating disorder. So it's so great to see some of these women, the men you know, who are dealing with eating disorders, really seeing CrossFit help them in their body positivity and understanding that eating for performance. Loz back at it again. Joel, you mentioned going hair on fire. The problem with that is you jack your heart rate up that much and you don't have much of a recovery. You've got to get back on that echo bike with nothing in the tank. Well, and Loz Stallwood did a two-second handstand hold the last time through. <laughs> that is the shortest so far. She switches out for Sean Early here. By the way, that man in the center of your screen competed in his first ever CrossFit Open this year. It is not typical that you qualify for the games after your first try in the Open, but uh, there is the statistic buster for you. That gives hope to everyone out there. <laughs> you can do the Open and you can make it to the CrossFit Games. Jacob Schmidt for CrossFit Omnia. They are the Why Not Us team, very much flying under the radar, but again had the most points at the end of competition in the North America West semifinal, lost a tiebreaker. And you notice behind Kelly Stone is holding a split leg handstand support. A little bit better for balance for her. Just really preference on what helps you out the best. And <laughs> Marnie Sykes doing the muscle up into the ring support. She grabbed the wrong rings initially. Oh, one of each. <laughs> Christy Hollard rowing 10 seconds behind the pace of the CrossFit Rhino Dogs from Heat 1. Atorian moving up in the last two tests very well and needed to. They didn't get the start they wanted in day one. And having some athletes like Royce Dunn, Brandon Swan on the Echo Bike and the row. Girls have just got to try and hang on and stay with them. And as Marty Sykes now switches on to the rower, there are two teams, now three teams, under the second half of this test. That's plus 6-4 in lane 7. One of the three teams from Oceania. And Sea of Green has also arrived. The cavalry is starting to move on to the second half. The underrated part of what you're watching right now is the strict muscle up from the floor. The strength that it takes, especially under exhaustion, Jeremy, to complete that part of it, forget the ring support, is what? Well, if you go back to the original Nasty Girls, yeah, Brandon just struggling to get through, and that's going to stop Marnie rowing at all and just chalking up because that sweat must be falling down his arms. But if you go back to the early Nasty Girl video with Annie Sakamoto, Eva Twatikins, and Nicole Carroll, this is the muscle-ups they started doing before the kips started to get introduced into competition. So this was a more difficult position. Those elbows just shooting a little bit wide, but he finally gets there. And Brandon, with so much experience, just need to find a way to get there. And this is where we talked about the placement of your athletes. If you, he did take him a couple attempts to be able to get that strict muscle up into that support, which did cost him some time on the rower. And you want to be able to hold this support for a while because Marnie Sykes, and she's going to have to switch out. Marnie Sykes is the best crossfitter in New Zealand, recruited to, shall we say, mainland Australia to be a part. Actually, she moved. Yeah, she moved <laughs> to, to be a part of this team. Could have gone individually. is CrossFit Templo, who had a really good lift this morning in test three. Put up 2,020 pounds, had a top 10 finish, and they are right now inside the cut line with 115 points, but this test was hammered by Oslo Nice, Coda, and the Rhino Dogs, so there are people nipping at your heels. Yeah. 
That's now Tata Habani, better than 40 years of age. She is the oldest competing here in the team division on the left side of your screen for Templo. We saw our age groups go earlier. She wouldn't have been in that 35 to 39. She would have been in that second group of age group athletes. Very impressive for her to be out there with some of these young guns. More than halfway through. Laz Stoll, can we just put Laz Stoll on the machine and let her go? Did she row her way from CrossFit Yaz to CrossFit Invictus? Just like that wind up sprint or you just, yeah, rip it, the, the court out and let her go. Those are expensive, Lauren. <laughs> and she understands the assignment. My recipe for success is no pacing. Thanks, Lowell. That is great. Fantastic. That rower had a family. You <laughs> talk about effort and emptying the tank. You don't have to guess at all with Loz. Steve Green was the third team to the rower. They passed the 50 cal mark of 125 that you need. <laughs> Lauren is absolutely exhausted at the bottom of your screen. Hopefully you have some time to recover here with Lalo Torres now in the ring support. And in the previous heat around this time, that nine minute mark, we had seen some of these teams advance to that final bike and handstand hold. So this heat, we'll see where it shakes out. Seems like everyone's on the rowers a little bit longer than that first heat. Bottom of your screen, another switch for Invictus, the Sea of Green. Torres is now on the rower with Kelsey Schulte holding the ring support. Closing in on six minutes left to go in this test. These teams still have another handstand hold and another 100 cals on the bike to go after they complete these 125 calories on the rower. Uh, Joel, you think nervous system as well. Let's look at Lauren Stall would send the bike and send the row. So her nervous system is going to be going, well, what are you doing? Are you like maximizing it or resting? Which one is it? And trying to balance that out. So trying to coordinate that with your brain at the same time and trying to keep your heart rate and breathing under control. Jamie, you'd know from competing, that's a difficult thing to do. And also, when you're going from these big machines to that static hold, that is a difficult thing when your heart rate is up high, you're breathing hard. You have to definitely focus when you're in these positions. And Torian flying ahead onto the bike ride. Christy Holler jumped on. Marty Sykes immediately into that handstand hold. And you'll see some different strategies. Sykes shifting her weight back and forth. What's that do? And uh, she's finding her balance, right? If you, a, a static stand, hand, handstand hold, it's extremely difficult. You need to be using your fingertips and pressing to help find that balance as well. If you do find your weight shifting forward or backwards, that's where you're gonna see that shift in moving their hands around. You can basically see that technique in the center of screen. You're basically handstand walking around the square. Hey, Brandon Swan doing a great job there. And Brandon having a bit of trouble getting on top of the rings, probably forced Marty Sykes to be able to rest a little bit more and give it a little bit more in the tank to get onto the Echo. Time to beat is 12 minutes and 33 seconds established by the Rhino Dogs out of Camp Rhino in Las Vegas. That is a minute away. Can you get 100 calories as a team in one minute? Training think tank hammering the bike. We talked about smart placing, and in the very beginning, you can do that under control of your the discretion of which order you'd like to go. But by the time you get to this final bike and handstand hold, it really is up to the order of how, how this workout has shaked out. Big Royce now. It's up to him to finish things off for Torian. That time to beat looming 12.33.78. Rhino needs everybody to not beat that. Because Rhino is on the outside <laughs> looking in. They need as many teams to finish behind them as humanly possible. And this is why it's so important. It doesn't matter what heat you are in, you need to give your best effort because you never know what heat, what teams are gonna do in the heats before or after. Rhino is 13 points out of moving on to Saturday. Below the cut line and the time has passed. They are still in first place heading into heat three. And this is great, too, because no one's finishing. So the gap is growing between them and second place. 
and that's immediately 10 more spots you know that you're ahead of all these teams here. There's your girl, Joel. Here goes Stone. <laughs> Get a camera on her. <laughs> well, you think about moving with the handles as opposed to keeping your body nice and centered. Loz choosing the former rather than the latter, and that seems to be working for her. But Jimmy, she's using her arms. This is a full body movement, no? Correct. So some athletes will sit there and try and stay nice and composed and keep those elbows in tight. Loz using the opposite. A very lightweight athlete as well, so she needs to use everything at her disposal. But don't be fooled. Loz Stolwood played rugby and broke almost every bone in her body doing so. She is tough as they come. No she's wonder why she can hammer up these. She, she's won me with rugby. <laughs> <laughs> and there goes Torian. They win the heat in 1347. Rhino, Coda, Nice, and Cape all beat that time in Heat 1. And those are four teams that are on the cut line. Two more minutes left. Omnia has finished. And Joel, I've just noticed from 6-4, CrossFit actually having to change the seat height on the Echo Bike every single time. Crucial. Talked about training Think Tank off the top. Awesome even being able to compete after Hannah Hardy had to be helped off of the 5K course. And we'll get another finisher with Einhorn. Jeremy, would you just leave the seat height and just kind of eat it, or is it important enough to make that small change? It's going to take too much time, and you're under pressure as it is. I'd get to a position where all four team members are relatively comfortable, as opposed to having to change it up and down. You slip, there's sweat going on. Your brain's going 100 miles an hour as well. Would you rather it be too high for somebody or too low for somebody? Too low, I would go. Too high, you struggle to get that power out for, put from your legs. Legs, obviously, a lot stronger than your arms. Oh, well, for most people, except for me. Training think tank done. Tata Habani. If you want strong arms and you live in South America, I would call Tata. The leader of that Q21 bunch. Excuse me, of that Templo bunch. With now 30 seconds left to go on our G-Shot timer. The Rhino Dogs still the time to beat in the test. 12.33. Almost, not almost, by more than a minute. PSC finishes. And all but one team has completed the work so far. As we hit the buzzer, it is Templo. So Templo is capped. And Templo was in 28th place. So they're going to have to cross their fingers and scoreboard watch. The loss of Stolwood. Clinic of how to go as hard as you can, and one of the recipes to success of Jamie Aguirre is to send it and make sure getting out to a good start was the sea of green from Invictus. But Torian bouncing back when they needed to. An important day two for Torian Royce Dunn finishing things off. The team from Brisbane, Australia, and the team getting things together. And progress their way back up the leaderboard where we expected them to be earlier on. That time to beat, though, still 12 33. And we'll see how close teams come to that with our final 20 teams still to go here inside the Coliseum with the cut line looming. That's your top five in the heat. That's an awesome comeback for training Think Tank. Cuts are looming here at the CrossFit Games. Test five, heat three for the teams inside the Coliseum here at the Alliant Energy Center alongside our 
former CrossFit Games team athlete Jamie Hagia, Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith, their eyes and ears down on the floor. My name is Joel Godet. These teams have been tested monostructurally. They have been tested in a weightlifting capacity, and CrossFit Invictus has taken 367 out of a possible 400 points. The third place team from a year ago, this year seeing gold. But what lies ahead is a little bit of a mixture today. We've got some gymnastics, we've got some monostructural, we've got people, Jeremy, pushing the pedal. Absolutely pushing the pedal, 150 calories on the Echo bike. Well, a team member completes a handstand hold, moving on to the 125 calorie road to a seated muscle up and ring support position. Finally into a 100 calorie bike in the handstand hold. Lesser calories on the bike, but a bucket load of fatigue. 16 minutes to get through this, 12.32 the time to beat. Jamie, has your strategy changed at all having watched two heats? Absolutely not. It is all about smart placing. So you need to make sure with this force rotation that your best power output athlete is with whoever can hold the longest. And there is no pacing. You'll see in this first heat, they're going to hammer it on the bike. Smart placing, no pacing is going to wind up on a gym t-shirt somewhere in America. I can tell you that much. As we take a look at our lane assignments with CrossFit Milford in lane five, Ben Smith Looks like he hurt his knee in the weightlifting total this morning. He is in lane four with CrossFit Krypton, CrossFit Genas, the French team that finished third at the games back in 2021. They took last year off, had some people go the individual route. Carol Castellani had a child, and she is back this year competing at the games. CrossFit Francos, the Misfits, they all have full-time jobs. Alexis Johnson joked, she said, we probably have the most degrees of anybody competing in the team division. They take CrossFit seriously, but it is very much a full-time, serious hobby. The time to beat is 12.33.78, established by the Rhino Dogs. Stand by. Well, WWE superstar Seth Rollins is a huge CrossFit fan. He would say, burn it down. And here we go, burn down the bikes to start this thing off. Let's go down to Lauren Smith. So I spoke to Ben Smith backstage literally moments ago. He's told me that that missed lift has torn his patella tendon. It's only a small tear in his knee. He's had it looked at, he's strapped it up. He was initially worried about the run, and very understandably, but now he's through that, he's got a lot more confidence in it. He says that this workout is going to be good for them. I tend to agree. They've got three very strong gymnastics on their team. He says you don't get to experience this very often, so he's not willing to give up just yet. Lauren, thank you. Uh, Jeremy, it's only small too. Yeah, so. so carry on. <laughs> uh, unreal. Well, you've got to think, this guy's got so much experience, CrossFit Games winner. He knows his body inside and out, and having done 10 plus years now at the CrossFit Games, he knows which boundaries he can push, and obviously this is one he thinks he can definitely push through. Ben Smith, the champion at the Games as an individual in 2015. Cool chance for him to compete on a team with his brother, Alec, who represented CrossFit Krypton in 2019, when the affiliate took second place overall. Shortest timing for handstand holds so far in the three heats here. Probably a good thing for Ben Smith as well, because he's staying off his knee while he's upside down. So the more he can do that, and the more he can use his arms on the echo bike, the better off. I think that Ben Smith is going to be and how he can recover. He doesn't look like he's struggling at all, but he's got both knees taped up. <laughs> hey, just in case. So you got to throw off the competition. They can't know which one. <laughs> which one? <laughs> Power your performance with Momentus. You can enter to win the ultimate prize pack from Momentus. LiveMomentous.com slash CrossFit or scan the QR code on your screen. I'm particularly impressed with this handstand hold. I think all of us thought in the beginning that, you know, that was going to be the struggle here. You were going to have to rotate off the bike when their your athlete, your team member fell down, but it's actually turning out to be there. They're holding for quite a while. Probably a little longer than the people on the bike would like. I mean, the bike is dictating the switch. It's when you can't bike anymore, or I'd kick down out of the handstand. And that's probably the other two team members at the back realizing the speed of the echo and when you're probably not doing enough work and the time it's taking to get each calorie done hey kick down let's move the funny thing is that with a handstand hold neither athlete can see what the other one is doing 
because the biking athlete is looking forward and the handstand holding athlete is looking backward. So both are quite literally in a blind spot of if the other one is hurting, if the other one is fine, you're just thinking about you and hopefully that's enough. And really, Jamie, that comes down to what CrossFit is as a competition. Run your own race, and in this case, hopefully that works between the four of you. And there's nothing technical about the bike. It is all will, it is all guts, it is who wants to hurt the most, so there is nothing to do but to make it hurt. Goodness gracious. Look at Logan Collins. He is frozen in that handstand hold behind Shailen Laurie. Well, that was a duck underwater there. From the waist up, he was completely still, <laughs> but the legs were going to town. But for this handstand hold, you see they have to stay in this blue box. As soon as one of their hands or fingers or any part of their hand touches that blue tape, they are forced to come down and rotate. I like the thinking Adrian Bosman has behind this. You're in sequence. It's either going to be something, a movement, or a fatigue level that stops you going. But if you do step outside that little realm there, you're forced to move at the same time. So very clever programming and ensuring that all four team members get equal time on all of the three components down the floor. This is a brilliant test. It is going to test your gymnastic skill level at a high skill level, but also that teamwork element you were talking about. You are depending on your teammate to move as many colors on that bike and get them done so you can move forward. Second year programming the games for competition director Adrian Bosman. This is the new time to beat for getting off of the first round of bike. 422 by the uh, Misfit Francos. It was 424 in the first heat for the Rhino Dogs, and they right now are your overall leaders with a 12:33 time. Alexis Johnson on the rower. Shaylin Laurie is on the ring support. I was able to speak with Alexis Johnson coming into this week of the games, and she said that this team particularly will excel in anything gymnastics, and they have been working a lot on their synchro work under fatigue. So here with this high skill gymnastics, no wonder they're out in front. You've got Porti on the left, the Misfits from CrossFit Franco's on the right. The other thing, Jamie, that Alexis Johnson said was interesting, she's the one who constructed this team. She reached out to everybody to put it together. And the Misfits are assembled as a team of like athletes. It's not this person has one strength that goes well with this person's strength. They're kind of the same across the board. It was a different approach. We'll see how it works out right now in 14th place. And that's an interesting thing to think about when you're constructing teams. You want to think about you need strength, you need endurance, you need high skill gymnastics. So getting a well-rounded team of everybody who can do a little bit of everything is going to be so crucial here. I stay corrected, 14th after the last test, 11th coming into this test. You think well-rounded team, you also think well-rounded programming from earlier this morning with the weightlifting into now the monostructural and the gymnastic skill element under fatigue, which is pretty difficult to do when that heart rate's really hitting that red zone and you're trying to control that at the same time. We also see a difference in the monostructural. The 5K, you are going at a harder pace, but this is a longer 18 to 20 minute test. Where here, when you're on a monostructural, a rower, a bike, you are going as fast as you can for 10, 20, 30 seconds at a time. Rowing while your teammates hold the ring support. A static gymnastics movement. Jeremy, where does this hurt the most? Are you using your shoulders? Are you using your upper back? Is it the bracing of the core? Honestly, is it some of the wrist strength? You're going to find the first thing to buckle is going to be the elbow position, and that's the thing that wants to bend at every opportunity. So for you to try and hyperextend that and keep that as straight as possible and support wrist on elbow, on shoulder, rings, tight to the body, that elbow bending, you don't want to get into that position because you are coming one way. Gravity is going to do its job. But something really difficult after you've just been upside down on a handstand hold and going through an echo bike, getting onto the rings, unless you're Alex Smith, of course, it's going to be really difficult. That ring support is proving to be difficult to kick up into as we look at CLT, the grid house. Josh Harden, Kevin Steinhaus, Carolyn Klutz, who qualified as a master's athlete to be here this week, but went team. And Stevie Dellinger. 
This is an affiliate that was founded during the pandemic and has thrived down in the Queen City. Well, I don't know if that's a shoulder pain for Steinhaus. Shaking out that right arm. He's a football player. Played collegiately for the 12-0 Ball State Cardinals back in 2008. And I think, are they asking for attention for him? And Denise Thomas, our head judge, has come over. Yeah, and they're going to seek some medical attention for Steinhaus. Here's another look on the right. Just not able to pull himself into position, so obviously feeling that on the previous rep. Right, it wasn't on the transition, it was on the actual pull. These teams are rowing to 125 calories. Your leaders right now are in the 100 range. Once we're done there, we'll go back to another handstand hold, coupled with a bike, moving to 100 cals on that apparatus. Time to beat, 12 minutes, 33 seconds. That is only three and a half minutes from them. We've got, you think about your gymnastic specialists within this field, and you get to that ring support. That's where you want a Julie Vernet or you want an Alex Smith into that position on the rings as quick as possible, so those calories on the rower can be chewed along. The Misfits out of CrossFit Franco's is Brandon Luckett's home gym. He said Alexis Johnson put this team together, but Brandon Luckett said, if you can do the work, come to my gym. We'll get this done. He is out there selling his soul here for these 100 counts. And Alexis Johnson had mentioned that she, they, this team loves anything gymnastics, and here she is holding a perfectly held supported handstand support, pressing tall through those shoulders, Staying nice and stacked, using her fingertips to help with her balance. When you think about bent elbows on the ring support, bent elbows on your handstand position under fatigue, just as important, and trying to stabilize your entire body on your wrist, elbow, and shoulder. Dogs back into heat one, 12.33. Second place is a minute behind them. Jamie, you think about that last portion of the Echo Bike and you mentioned that you've got to sell your soul a little bit and you've got to go quick. You've just got to empty your tank because this could be the last opportunity you get to get the calories on the Echo Bike. And you know, even uh, thinking about these bikes, you're holding a ring support, which is taxing your, your triceps. You're holding a handstand support, which is taxing your triceps. On this bike, you are using those same muscles. So you're going to have to trust your legs. Go, it's going to burn. And you all, we all know what that feels like, but you're getting to that red line because you're going to rotate out of that. Luck it just passed 40 cows, so the time to beat for the Rhino Dogs is going to hold. We're a minute and three seconds away from that. They're not going to get 60 cows on this bike here for the Misfits from CrossFit Franco's. We may see that in the next heat, however. Tim Paulson, we know you're listening. <laughs> Standing around the TV in the corral. Laws Stallwood and Tim Paulson will have a, a bike off. Carolyn Connors, individual games athlete working for CrossFit Krypton, and you can see did her work there, then adjusted the seat before Ben Smith came back over to bite. Oh, Ben Smith! Ride a bike! I'm assuming they're switching every 20 cows, and that was silly. <laughs> the fact that he was on there for five seconds, yeah, it's very silly. I thought you meant the strategy was silly. That's a great strategy. Get on and get off. Oof. 
Hand is in the air for CrossFit Franco's. Brandon Luck and crew diving across the finish line. That is not a new time to beat, but it is second place. No, it's third. CrossFit Coda. 12.42 is also better. And that's huge because Coda is on that cut line. So their number holding up. Oh, that's a big deal. Coda right now, eight points out at the start of the test. We will have a shakeup, more than likely, heading into the weekend. You know, as we talk about this, this test being a sense of urgency with cuts on the line, that adds an extra layer, an extra pressure on these athletes to know that they have to give it their best power output when they're on their bikes and knowing that this is coming to an end. Looks like Invictus Unconquerable, by the way, has also run into some injury issues. You do not see them on the screen right now biking. So we may have seen two teams succumb to some issues here in this third heat. CrossFit CLT and maybe Invictus Unconquerable as well. Not able to continue, they withdraw, that cut line moves again. Things get a little bit more interesting for those worried about getting cut after the competition for today. You can see the women and men of CrossFit CLT. There is Steinhaus and Invictus Unconquerable, I think, knows they're done as well because just behind here, they're taking some photos with the crowds. And we did see Carmody struggle on the Olympic lifting total this morning as well. He is as veteran as they come in CrossFit. The man went to the games in 2013. We are coming up on a minute and 10 seconds until the time cap. You think about all the hard work these athletes have put in. It has been a long season of the Open, quarterfinals, semifinals, and then making it here to the CrossFit Games. This is a lot for them to really soak in, to enjoy every moment if this ends up being their last test here. CrossFit Milford switching out between two new ladies on that team this year. Nicolette Torgiani and Sierra Cameron, who is Tony Ficini's partner. Working with Jay Adams this year, who moves over from CrossFit Union Square Black. 30 seconds left, hand is in the air. Can the job get done for Milford? Yes! He's still hand holding his handstand hold. We're done? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show off, though. And that is the horn. All but two teams finish because of injury. Well, I'll tell you this much. It does make the cut situation easier. That's an unfortunate side effect, but you do have some teams breathing an unfortunate sigh of relief. Tall athletes versus short athletes. Changes in the bike. Crucial seconds lost in those changes. Franco's the first to move forward. And a great battle between Janas and Franco's Misfits. And the last couple of Echo Bike calories are just so painful. Franco's. Hit, pop, and roll. Franco's, 12.45. That is good for third place overall behind Coda CrossFit and the Rhino Dogs out of Camp Rhino in Las Vegas. One more heat to go here on Cut Day. Final 16 minutes heading into the weekend and heading into the first round of cuts for the teams at the 2023 Noble CrossFit Games. This is test number five, heat four inside the Coliseum. Jeremy Austin 
Jamie Hagia has competed at the CrossFit Games on a team. Lauren Smith down on the floor. My name is Joel Godet. CrossFit Invictus, finally time to shine. Your overall leaders heading into this fourth heat. 367 out of a possible 400 points. CrossFit East Nashville proven in third place overall. Their two women were on the championship team last year from Mayhem Freedom, actually the last two years. So trying to make some moves, and we'll touch on that a little bit in just a second heading into this test, which is a bike, row, and hold. A tough 16 minutes ahead of these teams, 150 on the Echo bike wall. One team member holds a handstand position within a little box with a blue tape around it, 125 calorie row, and then one athlete in a seated muscle up to ring support. And finally, 100 calorie Echo bike and a handstand hold to finish off when they're completely fatigued. This recipe of success is going to be smart placing. With a forced rotation, you need to make sure that your best power output athlete is with whoever can hold the longest. And the second one, no pacing. This is an all-out sell-your-soul sprint. CrossFit Walleye is in lane two. They won the Olympic total this morning. CrossFit OBA had a very good day on the Olympic total. Kelsey Keel with a 260-pound clean and jerk. They are in lane nine feeling real good heading into this final test on Friday. But let's go down to Lauren Smith. We talked about the two ladies from East Nashville proven. Lauren, they got some help though when it comes to the bike on this year's team. Oh, Joel, they really do. Please tell me you remember Echo Press, the individual test from last year. Tim Paulson is a machine on a machine. He got 30 calories in 29 seconds. I spoke to him backstage. He said that they are going to load that second bike so he gets the maximum time on the Rogue Echo bike as physically possible. You see the leaders' jerseys on Invictus, Oslo Navy Blue, coming in with all the hype this year. No shortcuts, is in fourth place, making moves today. Here's Tim Paulson on the bike, and that is a conservative casual stuff. <laughs> G-Shock is giving you a chance to win a new G-Shock watch, a CrossFit Level 1 seminar and over $400 in CrossFit swag. Scan that QR code or visit gshock.com slash CrossFit. Honestly, I'm disappointed, Tim. <laughs> This is where experience comes into play. We all know starting out way too hot does not end well for most of us. Tim is going to come out and make sure that he, this is a 16 minute workout so he can serve some in the tank for the end. We think about what he did last year. He didn't start that way, he finished that way. So he's going to just build something all the way along. Maybe he needs to warm up a little bit before he gets it. Yeah, in fairness, this, this event, this test does end on a bike. So we'll wait and see. He will be judged on the last Echo bike though. The best bike handstand hold combination to start was four minutes and 22 seconds. That was the Franco's Misfits in the last heat. Notable that they do not have the overall best time to beat. Brittany Weiss in the Invictus leader's jersey. No one else has worn the leader's jersey since test two. And what we're looking at here is going to be a high skill gymnastics piece. On those handstand holds in the back, you want to make sure that you are nice and stacked. Elbows locked out, pressing tall through those shoulders. Your hands are going to, your fingertips are actually going to help you with that balance and using your legs to help find that counterbalance as well. You said have your shoulders stacked, Jamie. What does that mean for people trying handstand holds back at home? What's that shoulder strength like? When you're handstand walking, you need your weight to move forward. Think about it as walking, right? You're going to lean forward. That's going to cause you to take a step. When we, this is a static hold, you need your weight stacked on top of your body. Your midline squeeze nice and tight. This is when coaches say squeeze your butt to make sure everything is in a tight line. It's going to help you out the best. How about the wide spread of that stance for Invictus and Josh Alshama? And you know what? That might be a great way for him to, to find that balance for him. You see people, athletes with their feet in a split stance both ways and also bent knees as well. It's kind of whatever works best for these athletes. The ten gen general together. physical skills of CrossFit. Balance is one of those and athletes who aren't elite gymnasts like we see in nice strict position have got to use whatever they've got. But you think about scaling this movement, which is a very difficult movement to do. And we like to scale everything within CrossFit. 
you can actually get into a position where you're actually facing a wall and put your toes on the wall and still support your body weight. You just saw Jorge Fernandez kick down for Invictus. He also had a tremendously wide stance, so strategy, at least for the guys, for your overall leaders right now, because as Brittany Weiss kicks up, she is in a split stance. You see Jorge out here on the bike. We have seen from him that pain face as well. So I think along with Tim Paulson, we might get some great facial expressions from Jorge Fernandez as well. Just Notice the right seat there, height, yeah. the seat height. When you have teammates of different heights, it's really important that you, if it, adjusting the seat is gonna take time. But if you're going to think about getting up into that handstand hold and hammering out that bike, you want the Mac to maximize those calories on there. As a shorter athlete, I well, prefer it a little well, bit lower. Yeah, but every, when every second counts in a test like this, you're at the CrossFit Games, you've got to try everything to get to that finish point as quick as you can. Those seconds are just so crucial. And changing that seat every single time, that's going to just cause two, three seconds that you don't really need, but it could be that two or three seconds that you need to recover. Four twenty-two is the best split, and that's gone. Here comes Invictus in four oh seven onto the second piece of this test. Best time so far, and not only that, best time by a lot. So and Jorge saying, Fernandez up into that ring support. We just saw the Marnie Sykes issue grabbing one ring from one lane <laughs> and one from the other. So there's crucial seconds as well. Let's go down to Lauren. Josh Ochama of CrossFit Invictus actually used to be my affiliate coach a couple of years ago. And I remember during lockdown, he ran a program called Machine Strength, which was all based about having machines in your garage. And that's how he trained throughout that COVID period. This is very much within his wheelhouse. Also, he's gonna be the first male to wear that white leader's jersey that's come out of the United Kingdom. And he's worn it for three tests so far. I know he's gonna be super proud of that accomplishment. Lauren, thank you. And Josh has dedicated himself big time coming into this year. Says he's treated this very much like a professional sport more than he ever has. He's in his 30s. He relocated his pregnant wife to San Diego. He said, if I'm going to go all in, I am all in. I'm doing my accessory lifting. I'm doing my recovery. I am coming here to win with my team. I do not like the color bronze. And he has that medal from last year. And I was able to speak with Josh Alchama before heading into this week of competition as well. And he said this team brings so much to the table. Britt has an endurance and gymnastics specialty. Deb is her absolute strength. We saw earlier in that weight weightlifting test. Jorge has that athletic mindset coming from baseball. And Josh himself is very well-rounded and very good on machines. So this makes for a, gr a very great team and no wonder they're, they're in the white. Josh Alchama is without an Invictus V tattoo on his chest though which he said he would get at one point. He told her, hey, Fernandez, and then, and then Josh's wife vetoed that. So <laughs> hey, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> but you're in a 100-meter final, and Usain Bolt is not in the field. You sort of pick up a little bit. Mayhem not in the field this year. I think Invictus are looking a lot more steady, a lot more comfortable, and they're leading all the way, and they look comfortable in the lead. And speaking with them, you know, they came into last year. They, they knew they could do well, but I think when they got into that third place finish, it changed their mindset. And this year, they came in knowing their goal is to win the CrossFit Games. This test brought to us by Momentus Power, your performance with Momentus, and entered to win an ultimate prize back at livemomentus.com slash CrossFit. Joel, just a quick one. I'm getting excited now because we're getting closer to the Echo Bike and Tim Paulson at the end. 125 calories first on the rower. One thing that is nice is that you can actually see where they are on the calories for their rowers. They're moving it up. You see it go from 50 to 75. So even though you're rowing and going to the back of that rotation, when it's your turn, you have some kind of idea of how far you are and how many more calories you need. And you can see the Invictus marker, as you alluded to, Jamie, go from 50 to 75. However, the East Nashville Proven marker was already at 75. So 
Our team from Nashville has taken the lead after Invictus was the first team to the roll. Is anyone going to challenge Tim Paulson for a Tim Paulson? Various approaches on this row. You're seeing some long pulls. You're seeing some quick short pulls. Power in, power out is typically the approach on this apparatus. But Jamie, how would you attack this? What you're seeing is these athletes are getting a big dry back with their legs. They're going to open up their back and finish with a pull to their chest. That is going to maximize your amount of pulls and calories on that machine. So as, uh, even though the tempo might be a little bit quicker than they would normally go, that is the recipe for success. success. There is no pacing in this. See Jorge Fernandez just fighting to hold that ring support hold. His arms are bent, but he knows that Josh is so close to getting to that bike. Here's our force. Oh, and they're moving forward. They're moving forward, but they have company. Prestenda also making their way forward. So too is no shortcuts. So too is East Nashville proven. Almost in unison. No shortcuts, bottom of screen. Your champions out of the European semifinal, Prestenda, top of screen, at a top five finish in Europe. Time to beat 12.33. That will very much become a factor. Holding up at this point from Heat 1 with the Rhino Dogs. Jeremy, I don't think it's going to make it through Heat 4. I think they're too far ahead right now. And if I was East Nashville proven, I'd be giving Tim Paulson about 35 to 40 calories to try and hit. And the pressure now on Tola Morakinho to be able to hold that handstand and give Tim Paulson enough time. I think Morakinho is the best gymnast for East Nashville proven. Tim Paulson comes down from his handstand and he approaches the bike. 10 minute mark. Here we go! <laughs> hey, 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 hey. This is what we wanted to see. <laughs> Send it to me! <laughs> that is what no pacing looks like. Oh, we love to see it. That hair whip. That time's got no chance of standing with Tim Paulson on there. Oh. He taps out, but the bike favors big athletes, and there aren't much bigger than Tola Maracanio, and that bike's not going much slower with him on it. And you saw that was a forced rotation by Tim himself. It wasn't because Tola couldn't hold that handstand support any longer. It was because he sent it as full as he could and had to come down and make the switch. Hand is in the air. <laughs> so is Tola's. <laughs> East Nashville proven. That's a test win by two minutes almost, about a buck 40. Oh, Nelly. And that's why there's no pacing. Tim and Tola knew they had to bike one time as hard and as fast as they could. Well, that was the benefit was that that rotation for a proven was only one rotation for the whole lot. We don't know this for certain as Preston Ba comes across. How many cows do we think Tim Paulson got there? I've got to think it's got to be roughly 35-ish. Oh. He was on there for a long time. That is amazing and disgusting at the same time. 11.34 for, uh, for Preston Da. That is second place overall. The time to beat 12.33 from the Rhino Dogs still has not come into play. We're going to have more finishers. Oslo Navy Blue, they're done in third. Yeah, Ingrid Hodenmere. Invictus is still out there, your overall leaders. And now here comes Invictus, so they are done. They too edging out the time to beat. No shortcuts got in. Fifth place finish for Invictus. They should still be wearing the leader's jersey when competition starts tomorrow. 
came in with an 18 point lead over Oslo Navy Blue. All these teams have mentioned what a tight race this is going to be. They know that the competition is wide open. There are so many talented teams that they are going to, every place matters, every test matters. Christian Harris in the blue from Move Fast, Lift Heavy. Look at Chloe Gavon David. Just the beautiful, almost swan like <laughs> nature of that handstand hold. This is Trondheim, who won the 5K earlier today. And Chloe competed here in the last couple of years with Pro One Montreal right onto the bike. There you see that adjustment of that, the height of that bike it does take a little bit of time. But when it comes down to the wire, every second counts, you've got to get on that bike and go. Move fast, but heavy is finished. I think everybody is going to finish in this heat. We still have two minutes and 10 seconds till the cap. Tim Paulson already did it. <laughs> you gotta be the first man there. Good push of the bike though for Tron time. And everyone is done in 14-10. The first heat to see all 10 teams complete the test. And we'll see if Tim Paulson has enough gas in the tank still to talk afterward. Well, Tim actually came out as a relatively decent, casual, calm approach to the first Echo Bike. Girls from Invictus, wife Kevin Kim. Steady out in front. Oshama just so composed on that row, but tight race all the way through to the 100 calories on the Echo Bike. And the thing everybody wanted to see, and we got it. But we got a double. We didn't just get Tim Paulson. Tola goes here. Hold my beer. I've got some more in me. And finished off with their first test win. An outstanding performance. Well under the time to beat. I think Andrea Nistler and Taylor Williamson just huddled up and said, all right, you guys got the bike? All right, good. <laughs> Carry on. 10.56 over Prestanda in 11.34. Navy Blue. No shortcuts, Invictus, OBA, Mayhem, all besting the time to beat heading in to that fourth and final heat. Lauren Smith is gonna find out how to bike really fast. She has Tim Paulson and company. There are some very sore legs by the look of it, but Tim Paulson, we said we were gonna backload both you and Tola in that final bike. It clearly paid off. How many calories did you get? Uh, I think it was like 42 or 44, so it was a, uh... It was a nice chunk, for sure. I think the girls got like 36 or 38 when they got off the bike, they said. So I just wanted to try and leave a, enough, a small enough amount left for Toll that he could hop on, drop the hammer, and we could, we could get the win. So paid off. Really did. Andrea, you've come into this tournament largely dubbed as favorites. East National proven. There's a lot been made of the fact you guys have come from Mayhem. You've got Tim. You've got Tola. How are you managing all of that pressure? Because it's not like you haven't had it before. Yeah, no, I think we just come in knowing it all starts at zero, and now we're excited to see some more CrossFit. So, the run. Yeah. Probably not the best event you've had. Did you have to damage control that, or was that somewhat unexpected? Uh, no, that was a bit of a damage call, and we knew that. Like, coming into the weekend, we knew that the Team 5K would be a bit tough one for us. Um, so, you know, we did the best we could. We executed as best as possible. Just a lot of really fit teams who are really good at running. And sadly, it ended up being like a middle of the pack finish, so we're gonna have to battle back from it the rest of the weekend, but we're here for a fight, no big deal. We're not even halfway done. Really glad to hear it. Guys, congratulations. That's two test wins on day number two. East Nashville proven comes out and drops the hammer a couple of times, but we still have much more competition to go, as Tim said, and let's find out a little bit of what that's going to look like.
So many blues on that deadlift bar. <laughs> Axel bar deadlifts for the four of you. What do you guys think? Well, I think there's going to be a lot more teamwork involved in the test to come. Some more ring support stuff, which is going to be interesting. But you bring in the worm. You bring in Bob, and you bring in a little bit of grunt work. But also, you've got to add that little bit of finesse. I think bringing in Bob and the worm are going to really push these teams to their limits tomorrow. We're going to see definitely more of those legs like Tim Paulson's that were under major fatigue. <laughs> 42 calories, is he kidding? Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> we still have individual competition to go tonight. We look forward on to the rest of the weekend, though, and that is how things look as we move into Saturday. Team coverage will start us all off, and that is at 10 a.m. Eastern time with the run lift relay lift run relay similar to what we saw at the semifinal level where we'll do one test and then turn it around on its head and try to achieve a little bit of an op uh, opposite stimulus so much more still to come though we have two full days of competition as tim paulson said we're not even halfway through we do make cuts though so we do have to check on what the standings and the leaderboard looks like and in order to do that we head online, games.crossfit.com, or check out the CrossFit Games app in the App Store today. Again, games.crossfit.com, or keep it locked right here because the individuals still have some work to do before there are cuts there tonight as well. For Jamie Hagia and Jeremy Austin, Lauren Smith, and the rest of our crew, for the teams, so long for us tonight. My name's Joel Gaudet. Talk to you tomorrow in Madison.